Hello friends. How are you all? This is Fanfic Universe. So we are back with an amazing movie on what if Naruto awakens the white tiger bloodline and transformation. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this then be sure to sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Sasuke. Falling to her knees she watches as the mist dissipates and a raven-haired boy's form falls, inside a group of floating mirrors. No. 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 No, starting slow the sobs come full force as she watches the boy die. Looking over she sees her sensei fighting the demon of the mist. Her third teammate, a simple red-haired boy was unconscious long ago. She watched as time seemed to slow before, the mirrors started to shatter and fall to the concrete. TCH arrogant for such a weakling, praising of the Uchiha clan like they ruled the world. Failure, you have nothing precious to you, you never had a chance. A boy emerged from a lone mirror taking in the scene of the outside world after being enclosed within the dome. As if just regaining his hearing a slow but steady sound came to his ears, bird chirping. He couldn't pinpoint the sound, until he looked over at a glowing light. From the hand of the copy ninja, Kakashi Hataki, a glowing, sparking orb encased his right hand. Leaning to the left slightly Kakashi takes off, intent on plunging his hand through the demon of the mist once and for all. Just arriving to the scene before them, a raven-haired beauty, a dog nin, a hyuga, and a bug nin, all stood witness to the sight. Two comrades down, one useless, and one on the verge of victory, looking down the beauty nodded to the bug user and he nodded back running to the falling mirrors. The rest of them stood by the useless nin and took up guard around an old-looking man. Watching from the sides was an unusual beast, in the land of waves at the very least. It took the color of white with black streaks, zebra stripes, through its fur. Eyes a deep amethyst, slitted and mixed with red and blue hues. Large enough to give even the demon of the mist a scare, and as agile as the Hyuga. The feline watched, noticing the band worn on the eight nin protecting the old man. Never wanted to see that again but I guess it's now or never, had to sometime, nay. Growling the feline noticed the boy that came out of the mirrors start to move, just as the nin with the ball of lightning took off. No can't have that now can we dear child. Watching from the sides in case she needed to help, the raven beauty was on guard, thinking over every possibility she could that could take place. What happened next froze everyone except the copy nin in motion, too intent on his kill. The corner of her eye just caught the sight, and out of reflex she got into a defensive stance, all for nothing as she was shocked beyond belief. The feline pounces, landing on its target, flinging the ice user to the concrete, breaking his porcelain mask. In one quick motion, as the boy was stunned and couldn't believe his eyes, the feline tore through his throat, blood seems to spray everywhere, but oddly the feline's fur never got stained by the crimson liquid. Making the end come quick the feline decided to pull back its paw and slam its claw into and through the boy's chest cavity, effectively killing him before he could feel any pain, still too stunned to feel the pain in his neck. Growling maliciously the feline watches as a hook catches on the side of the bridge they were on. Uncaring about the crowd watching, the feline charges and cuts the rope attached to the hook, hearing a number of screams jostled from below. Looking over the edge and seeing a sight that would, at least the feline thought, terrify the nin on the bridge, it chose an action that shell shocked the nin watching it. Goodbye, Zabuza, demon of the mist, you were a worthy opponent, but this is your end. Slowly Kakashi took his bloody hand out of Zabuza's chest, watching in amazement as he fell coughing up blood but still had life in him. Why? Dot yes. I. I'm glad for, coughing a rough bout, blood spatters all over his face, seeping through his mask. For an honorable. Defeat by someone. Such as yourself. Looking to the side, he sees his apprentice dead on the concrete. Go. Goodbye. Haku. I want. See you where, I'll be going. After another blood gurgling cough he finally lets death take him, one thought going through his head, Haku, you were more than I could ask for, a great genuine soul. I'm sorry I corrupted you. Saying a quick prayer, Kakashi finally noticed the scene before him, a beautiful white tiger had taken point on the bridge, where it came from he couldn't tell. Kuranai Sensei. Seeing she got the raven beauty's attention she continued. That animal, it's rare in the wilderness, and, it's not from around here is it? It seems like, it's human somehow, it even has chakra, as if it was trained. 
Nodding Kuranai tried to reply while turning back to the tiger. No, I've never seen a live one before, it's a majestic and beautiful sight isn't it? I'm now sure where it came from, but I'm glad, it helped us, we can repay it somehow, we should. Nodding the Hyuga just watched the beast as it cut a rope that came up from below the bridge. Watching the waters below the tiger did something no one could believe. It jumped, the hundreds and hundreds of feet down, to whatever may lay below, it took the dive, and somehow made it look majestic even for a suicide jump. Seeing the looks on the bandit's faces below was all but priceless to the feline, fear, unbridled fear, and all from a simple animal, terrifying as it may be. Landing with all the grave of a feline jumping hundreds of feet, landing with chakra, it looked up at the bandits, and just seemed to grin, everyone knows animals can't grin. Kuranai blinked, she looked around, and so did everyone else. No one seemed to move, just stare, blink, stare and, blank. Nothing no one could grasp what just happened. Out of nowhere came a melody, which became a fast beat after only a few seconds, it was amazingly loud to come out of nowhere. I know you'll be there to see the tables turning wake up tomorrow and watch the bridges burning. I can see, I can see it in your eyes I can feel, I can feel it in my mind. I don't care, I don't care if you realize what you see, what you see in my eyes. A resounding explosion roared through the area, everyone wincing at the sound. I'm over me being under you. I'm breaking free and I'm breaking though. I've overcome all I'm underneath. I can finally stand. I can finally breathe. Another explosion came this time, along with a shout that slightly resembled, that was my new coat you fucking shitstain. Remember when we, first had the thought of living. A perfect picture. But I did all the giving. Gave up my passions. To try to make you happy. The joke is over. And I'll do all the laughing. I can see I can see it in your eyes. I can feel I can feel it in my mind. I don't care I don't care if you realize. What you see what you see in my eyes. I'm over me being under you. I'm breaking free I'm breaking through. I've overcome all I'm underneath. I can finally stand. I can finally breathe. More screaming ensued, something about a pair of pants this time. I can see I can see it in your eyes. I can feel I can feel it in my mind. I don't care I don't care if you realize. What you see what you see in my eyes. Suddenly the music stopped. Everything went silent. Everything was calm. That instant was shattered as quickly as it came. From nowhere came a pressure. Her and I, along with Kakashi, could only gape at the amount of compressed chakra down there. After a bright flash and once again another large explosion, this time big enough to shake the ground they were one, everything was once again silent. The Nin were all apprehensive to look over the edge, not wanting to see what happened. After a quick reminder, everyone was curious. Anyo, where's the tiger? Kuranai sensei. Is, is it okay? The Hyuga asked slowly to her teacher. Not knowing what to say the Raven Beauty just looks at her for a second before slowly starting the trek to meet with Kakashi by Zabaza's still bleeding corpse. So, I take it he's dead. Trying to lighten the mood slightly as they arrived the dog Nin looked down at the demon of the mist. Well, we would hope so Kiba, if not, then he wouldn't be human, even if his title is demon of the mist. The bug user said as stoically as he looked. Shush you two, Hanada, go check the two boys over there. Kakashi and I will check below the bridge. Kuranai watched the Hyuga nod and trek over to the crying bubblegum haired Nin, who by now was over the raven haired boy's body. Taking point, Kuranai starts walking to the edge of the bridge hesitantly, Kakashi right behind her. Noticing movement right away on the other side of the chasm, Kakashi, out of reaction from his training, pulled out a kanai and was just about to throw it as Kuranai grabbed his hand, stopping him. On the other side of the chasm, the white tiger was walking up the cliff side, sensing a possible danger it stopped, settling its paw on a branch jutting out of the cliff face and looked over its shoulder to the bridge. Nodding in approval to what the raven beauty did the tiger steadied itself on the branch looking over the chasm to the bridge. It's not gonna jump again is it Kuranai sensei? Hanada asked upon seeing the tiger, she was only feet away checking the other unconscious boy. Before she could answer, that's exactly what the tiger did, it jumped, although its leap was large, it was only a fraction of the gap. Letting out a growl the tiger seemed to, change and morph, deforming itself into something non-nondescript. The flesh and fur seemed to meld. Suddenly the fur changed, into finer, 
stiffer strands, before it began to take form. Black bone-like substance began to come out of its head, out of its throat it seemed. Its ears flattened, face taking on a sleeker look. Its front paws melted into itself and seemed like the bone moved up to its back. The back claws lost all fur leaving cracked dry talons in each spot. Its tail began to split and straighten out directly behind it like a fan. Its fur turned slick black, and seemed to shine in the light. Opening its eyes seemed to awaken it, with a loud but beautiful shriek wings seemed to be ripped out from its back, the shriek signifying its completion. Taking a quick dive, the raven flapped once, gaining ground quickly. Kurinai and Kakashi couldn't comprehend what they just saw, a feline, just turned into a bird, a very large bird. Jumping back, they both gave it room, it seemed to be coming directly towards them, Kakashi got in a defensive stance, Kurinai was just awed by the beauty. Taking some time and letting the feeling of flight control it for a second, the raven just flew over their heads, and every one of those heads whipped to watch the giant bird. Relishing in the feeling, it quickly decided to land. Taking a dive down the chasm, the raven touched down on the water, skimming its surface and cutting the water. Flapping a few times the bird, just seemed to command the winds and it soared up. Grappling the edge of the bridge, it folded its wings into itself and seemed to just stare, its purple eyes glancing over every nin on the bridge, that was alive. Still deep amethyst, the eyes changed, pupil covering more of the iris, seeming to move on its own within the iris, twisting. Unlike move birds, it didn't hop when it walked, instead, it took strides, like a human. One step of this bird was equivalent of three steps that Kurinai took to the side, admiring its beauty. Kakashi, for his part just stood in a defensive stance as the bird seemed to overlook him and walk by, swaying its head to take in the scenery. A few feet past the two older nin the bird noticed, the boy, the one with all the needles, was starting to awake. Ah finally the Uchiha awakens from his slumber, nay. Ah, uh, I feel like a fucking pincushion. What, what happened? Opening his eyes, the Uchiha noted everything seemed clearer, the pink-haired girl was right besides him, crying. Looking down at him she smiled, a true smile of utter joy. Sasuke-kun. She carefully started taking out some more pins the Hanada did not, since they didn't stab into any major part of his body. Kurinai took a second to glance over to the downed Uchiha and then at Kakashi, nodding slightly to him. Kakashi nodded back and relaxed, taking strides over to the Uchiha and sliding his headband down, a look of relief on his face. Kakashi-sensei. What happened I feel? Unusual. I was toyed with wasn't I? Clenching his fist the Uchiha scowled. I'm not sure if that's what happened. You were immobilized. Apparently Haku didn't want to kill you. You'll be fine with rest Sasuke. Seeing him nod Kakashi moves his focus back on the bird who was watching them. Kurinai slowly took a step closer to the bird, after getting its attention. Reaching a hand out she shakily tried to touch the raven, as if not wanting to offend it. The raven took a stride towards her and everyone stiffened, Kurinai more than anyone else was stone still. The raven just slid its head into its wing and plucked a feather setting the tip between her fingers. Kurinai gasped, it was too soft, for a raven anyway, it was as if the raven was just born, its coat never stained or dirty. Slowly she stepped back and watched the raven with interest, it started to caw gently, as if grunting. The legs were the first to change this time, they seemed to expand as feathers dropped from it and clung together, the new appendages seemed to flow in the wind, like silk. Its tail feathers just receded, along with its beak. The wings seemed to shrink but didn't leave, the mass from the wings seemed to writhe and formed what appeared to be arms as the figured seemed to kneel on the concrete. The sleek feathers began to recede around its body, leaving toned taut skin underneath. The feathers on its chest and back moved seemingly to a cloth attached to its back, between its wings. The black faded out as color seeped in. The cloth attached to its back was almost a cape, crimson red in color on the inside, black on the outside. The legs, turned out to be fabric also, silver, black flames climbing the sides with red trim. Two belts seemed to fall from the figure's hips, crossing an X in the middle, scrolls adorning many clips. A bare but toned chest seemed to be shown off. Six whisker marks adorned the figure's face, little to no fat anywhere on his body, face was no exception. His hair was a light blonde, with crimson streaks, 
long enough to be held in a ponytail, ending just between his shoulder blades, bangs framing his face. His hair resembles Itachi's almost. Kuranai thought before the last feature was revealed. Slowly he opened his eyes, a deep amethyst, normal, with a red ring around his pupil, that was dilating down from the transformation. Coming up from his kneeling position, his wings seemed to recede into his back at this point, his cloak closed around his frame and they noticed it was hooded, along with the clasp on his neck holding it together. It was a red swirl, delving into itself like a whirlpool. Taking a single step and reaching Kuranai, he takes the feather, and brushes a few strands of hair behind her ear, settling the feather along with them right behind her ear. She's beautiful, and I just love her eyes. Smiling he takes back his hand and notices a light blush adorning her face. What? Just happened. Kuranai was still comprehending what happened before she noticed her blush, thankful she was facing away from everyone but this man that appeared before her. He's way too good to be true, nice, gorgeous. I may be the ice queen but. Excuse me, thank you for saving my student. Kakashi walked over and introduced himself. I am. Kakashi Hataki. Known for your Sharingan, and famous for having mastered over 1000 Jutsu with that eye, creating your own. Chidori, or Reikiri, the lightning blade, and S-rank assassination technique. His voice seemed to be as majestic and soft, like silk for the ears. The man nodded. I know of you. Turning to Kuranai he continues. Kuranai Yuhi, Genjutsu mistress of Konoha, known to kill without even moving, mastered your art to a letter, not even needing hand seals half the time. Impressive for a newly appointed Junin. He nodded again and bowed to them. Assuming by looks, you also have an Inazuka, along with his partner, a Hayuga, and Abarame, on your team Kuranai. Kakashi, you seem to have one of the last Uchiha, who seemingly just activated his Sharingan. Chuckles lightly. Hum, I don't recognize the Pinket, and if I remember correctly, the last one is from the Tarumi clan I believe. Not yet having his bloodline under control I see. Kakashi stiffened. How do you know so much about us? He took a defensive stance knowing he wouldn't last but could hopefully delay him to let the others get away in case they need to run. The man smiled, a small smile taking in the looks everyone gave. Kuranai was on guard but almost amazed, Sasuke was scowling, Hinata was stunned, Kiba was growling along with his dog, Shino the Abarame, stood there but buzzing could be heard easily. The Turumi and the Sakura were both sitting amazed at this person knowing so much. I just read up on my home as all. I hate Konoha. But if I need to fight I need to know my enemies, if I don't then it's a good conversation starter, nay. He grinned a playful grin and Kakashi faltered slightly. Why do you hate Konoha? Kiba screamed, being brash. It's a great place, the biggest shinobi village and. Kiba. Be quiet, it's not time for you to talk. Kuranai chastised him as she watched the man, while being slightly more on guard. Sighing he looks to Kiba and both Kuranai and Kakashi fall into a full defensive stance when he takes a step towards him, but ends up using that step to fall and sit down where he once stood. Well now, that would be a long story to tell wouldn't it? Let's just keep it simple shall we? Konoha, was once a very good village yes, was? Went through all their heads. I say was because they may be top dog now, but they have laxed on their training and on their defenses, anyone can attack right now any village, and deal immense damage, maybe not win, but the damage will be great enough for a second wave to come and take out the village. He watched as realization dawned on the two Jun and Nin. Now a few years ago, I lived there, a few, as in. Maybe thirteen years? Fourteen. I was the pariah, the hated one, unwanted, so one day, I left. They got their wish, I was gone from their lives, and they have peace, as they see it anyway. Little did they know if trained right, I would be one of the best nin alive, better than your yandaimi. Kakashi was gawking now, being his student he just knew how strong Minato was. I left, with a reminder in place, to come back, at some time, and see Oiji San before he passed. He was the only one who treated me as I should have been treated, along with a restaurant owner. Ichiraku I believe. Kakashi started to think on who this man could be. He's about 16, maybe 17. Could. Could he be? Kakashi was taken aback, staring at the man. Maybe he figured it out already. If not too bad. My name. Is Naruto. Kuranai and Kakashi gasped, 
Kakashi because he was Naruto's guard when he was in Anbu. Kuranai because, she's heard about him from the Hokage, and has met him a few times before. Dobi. What's your full name? Sasuke said, standing with some help from Sakura. Venom seemed to lace his voice. Uchiha, arrogant as any other. At least I've met one good-natured one. Letting the venom slide away he looked back at Kakashi. You know who I am don't you? Slowly Kakashi started to nod just barely. You should. I'm the son of your sensei. Kuranai gasped again, he was implying. To be. Looking over at Kuranai he smiled. Yes, Kuranai-san. I am in fact Naruto Namikaze. Son of Minato Namikaze, Yandaimi of Konohagakure. The genin were the ones to gasp this time, the Yandaimi being the most famous person to come from the village, also the strongest. Naruto, I'm sorry I couldn't keep you in Konoha, Kakashi said as his defensive stance left him almost as fast as he went into it. Smiling slightly, you know, Scarecrow, if I remember correctly, you tried to shove a Chidori through my chest. Kakashi, having the decency to look ashamed and averted his gaze from the blonde. Yay about that, it really doesn't matter anymore, I'm over it. Just like all the scars Konoha has been kind enough to treat me with. It all just adds up to more of a reason why I hate that village, but for the old man I'm coming back, and if you don't mind, Kuranai-san, I'd like to come with you and your teens. Uh, yay sure I suppose, I mean it wouldn't hurt for you to come with us, better than being alone. Kuranai nodded and watched as Kakashi started to rouse his one unconscious student back into the living world. Shino, inspect the area around us please. Just check it, see if there's anyone else around. Tazuna, please get to work on the bridge, we will take care of the bodies, and clean up while you do. Kuranai instructed to the two, nodding Tazuna started to struggle out of his stupor. Tazuna-san, if you would like I can help you out. Everyone looked at Naruto wondering how he could help. Well it would make it quite a bit easier for you, might even get the bridge done sooner than expected. Naruto grinned at Tazuna. Uh, yay, sure, if you want to help that's fine with me, I'll just, cage bunchin, a small cut of smoke covered the bridge. Before the smoke cleared Kakashi had one thought through his mind. How many did he make? He must have a huge chakra capacity to make so many. As the smoke cleared it revealed to have an endless amount of Naruto. There's about 300, give or take 10 either way. Tell them what to do and they will know worries. Helpful. Nay. He grinned as he noticed everyone's eyes widen and jaws drop. What? It's not that hard for me, I mean this isn't even the amount I use for my training, though I do regularly send them out on civilian jobs. The teacher's eyes widened even more at this. What kind of training does he do that can use more than this? Coughing and regaining her composure, Kuranai turns to her students. You three will help with this also. We need to get this over with before Gato can realize his mercenaries are all dead. Watching her team nod she smiles, turning to Kakashi and notes as he told his team the same. Kuranai, I'll be helping Tazuna with what I can. Nodding to him she opens her mouth to speak but was cut off by Naruto. I'm going to take a walk, Kuranai, would you like to come with? I hope to run into Gato's hideaway and I would enjoy some light company, a few years without it and I would like to have someone to chat with, only logical nay. Giving Kuranai a smile that made her heart skip a beat he turned and started to help Kakashi clean up the bodies of Haku and Zabuza. Think it over for a few minutes. I'm going to help Scarecrow over here clean up. Getting a nod from her to signify she'd think it over. Walking over to Haku's body Naruto picks him up, and takes him to a soft spot on the grass, Setting him down with respect, Naruto gets up and walks back to the bridge. Scarecrow, I'll take Zabaza's body, you rinse off the bridge. It'll be faster than trying to do it one at a time. Nodding to him, Kakashi watches as Naruto picks up Zabuza with ease as if he was a child. Watching him go to the grass along with Haku, he takes up his job, going through some hand signs. Water bullet, spitting out four large balls of water. Two hit each blood stain on the bridge. Each with enough force to spray the blood off the bridge after diluting the color making a light pink, barely noticeable as the crimson liquid. After his job was done he decided to watch over the genin and Naruto, until he left that is. Sending his chakra through the ground beneath him in a swift motion, Naruto thrusts his palm toward the ground. 
A crater appears, as his focus chakra pushes the soft ground below it. Repeating this once more he makes a slightly bigger hole in the ground. Using simple chakra strings, merely the basics, he lifts both bodies and set them into the craters intended as graves. Letting the strings release after the bodies gently hit the dirt, he runs through a few hand signs. Flowing mud river, shooting a condensed stream of mud from his mouth Naruto fills up the two graves. Running through more hand seals intending to dry up the mud a little bit, grand fireball, slowly the mud began to harden until he stopped, right around where it seemed the other ground was. Stone spikes, two large spikes jutted out from the top of the graves. Wind blades, many invisible blades chopped up and carved the spikes into gravestones. Lean rectangles with their names carved in them respectively, name of rank he thought appropriate, and how they died honorably. Finally the finishing touch nay. Undergrowth vines, slowly grass started to grow over the dried mud, vines started to cover the gravestones, enough to make it look aged but not to obscure the text etched into the stone. Everyone seemed to gape at his actions, stone, wind, fire, and wood elemental jutsu used for just graves. How strong could he be to control all of those already? Kakashi watching in fascination along with Kurenai, Sakura, Hanada, Kiba, and the Turumi heir. Sasuke was seething inside, he couldn't stand how this, Dobi, could just walk in and be so much better than him, he needed that power not this loser. Shino just seemed to be impassive to this all, but Naruto noticed a small twinkle of amazement in his eye, just barely seen behind his glasses. Well now, that's why they have those glasses. Interesting enough, well they don't need to be criticized more than they already are nay. Hey, loser, show me how to do those jutsu. I need that power to become stronger, and carry out my ambition. Sasuke yelled from the bridge at Naruto. Kurenai was watching Naruto most of the time he was back, telling herself it was to keep an eye on him, but she knew better. She noticed as she watched that his eyes seemed to lose some of their shine, and darken as Sasuke spoke. Uchiha, don't tell me what to do. Looking Sasuke right in the eyes, he must admit, he respects the Uchiha, slightly, at best. He didn't flinch away like most would. What on earth makes you think he'll even consider doing something nice for an Uchiha? The only good Uchiha that came from that clan is Itachi. Naruto bluntly states. What? Fuck you Namikaze. Sasuke lunged at him, whipping out a kunai, intent described in his eyes, death. Naruto smirked, taunting an Uchiha was quite fun. Letting the Uchiha think he's so great, Naruto just let Sasuke nick his arm, standing still, just bending his body slightly. Horrible aim for an Uchiha, especially Taijutsu. Sasuke, knock this off at once. Kakashi tried reprimanding him first. Sasuke takes another charge at him this time intent on his chest, not his neck. Flashing in front of Naruto, his back to him, Sasuke tries to plunge the kunai into his heart. Silly boy, frontal attacks won't work on a real shinobi. Naruto grabbed his wrist, pulling his arm down and twisting it, effectively popping it out of its socket. Shoving Sasuke onto the ground, Naruto plants his foot directly onto his back, forcing all the air from his lungs. The genin watched, entranced. Everything happened in a matter of seconds, simple short seconds, seemingly worthless, and the last remaining Uchiha could have died in those few seconds. Kakashi-san, you need to train this one much better, and from the looks of the pink-haired one, her too. He's far too weak to take on Zabuza, if you had got knocked out and Kurenai-san's team wasn't there, he would have been dead long ago, along with your whole team. You're slacking Hataki, in Anbu you were never this loose on someone's training, fix it. Naruto could have sworn he heard Kakashi say, yes, sensei, though he told himself he was mistaken. He, he sounded so much like Minato. I even called him sensei. He's right though, I need to up their training. He sighed, opting to leave his books at home during training from now on, not to say he wouldn't take them on missions though. Naruto leant over and picked up Sasuke, staring him directly in the eyes, this time though he did flinch. Grabbing the arm that he just dislocated, Naruto grinned, he was gonna love this part. Roughly pulling the arm away from Sasuke's body he pushes the shoulder joint back into place with an audible crack, as well as an ear-piercing scream of Sasuke's throat. Sasuke. 
Sakura came running to him and grabbed his arm, while trying and failing to glare at Naruto. While in his mini stare down with the pink at Naruto voices his opinion. Kuranai-san. Yes, Naruto. Kuranai looked up from talking to Hinata. This was her first kill sight as it was, she's just the only one to get over the shock of the Yandaimi's son first. We should go on that walk now, try to find Gato's hideout, nay. Finally looking away from Sakura, he looks up and smiles at Kuranai, getting that warm feeling to bubble up again. Yes, well, looking down at Hinata she continues, I don't think I should leave Hinata alone without me here. Kuranai lies a hand on her shoulder. That's fine Kuranai-san, I'll leave a few cage bunchen with her to help her out, I know how hard a first kill sighting is. They will inform me if anything happens, that an Kakashi is still here, she'll be fine trust me. Naruto walks over and holds out his hand for her. Taking his hand as a friendly gesture, she lets him pull her up. Whoa, whoa, his hands are so warm, is this how he always is? It's so comforting. Kuranai definitely notices the lack of warmth as he lets her hand go, opting to kneel besides Hinata. Hey, the first is always the worst, making sure you still feel remorse just means you're human, and you don't enjoy killing. No Nin likes killing, unless they're missing Nin but that's a whole other story, nay. Smiling and softening his voice to a small whisper he watched as Hinata giggled at his joke. A blush adorning her face at the sound of his voice. Everyone eventually has to kill. Unless you're a medic nin, even so you will still see death, just let it out now alright. It will make it easier to cope with later. You'll be okay as long as you realize that when your first kill comes, it's not your fault, it was a mission and you're just carrying it out, or you're defending yourself, one or the other. Nodding to her, he can see her eyes brimmed with tears threatening to spill. Making a few cage bunchen, Naruto picks her up taking her over to a tree and lets the three bunchens take care of her. Treat her like a queen you guys, let her relax, make her relax, if she passes out don't move, just one expel. Turning back to Hinata he continues. I'll be taking your sensei for a while, is that okay, Hinata-chan? Hinata's blush deepens into a new shade as she nods and hugs him muttering a thank you and to keep Kuranai safe. Naruto smiles and nods letting the clones take care of her. Kuranai-san, let's go, we'll be back in a few hours or so. Walking back to her he decides to make this a faster route. Would you hold on please? Kuranai nods and, along with Kakashi usher the genin to get to work and stop watching, Sasuke walks off with a glare at Naruto. Naruto for his part, transforms into the white tiger again right in front of Hinata, before prowling up to her and nuzzling her before dashing off to Kuranai. The whole process might only take seconds to complete but it's an odd sensation to get used to the new body. Appearing in a white blur next to Kuranai, Sakura jumps at the speed it moved. Purple eyes watching her bemused by her behavior. Looking up at Kuranai, Naruto just bowed and nudged her leg, egging her to get on him. Kuranai for her part stared at him unsure what exactly he wanted. Getting as close to a sigh as a tiger can get Naruto slouched more and dove under her legs, sliding her onto his back. Kuranai, again for her part, let out something very, Hinata-like. Hya, a blush seemed to just appear on her face after that, and Naruto mentally grinned at this. Adorable to boot, oh yay she's definitely a nice catch for someone. Applying chakra to his back to make sure she stayed put he took off at a decent pace, letting her get used to the jostling. Kakashi along with the genin watched in minute amazement at the action that just took place. Having some different reactions for each person. Hiba exclaimed his opinion. Wahoo Akamaru. That's going to be like us when you get older no doubt. The dog just barked up at him and wagged its tail. Shino noticed his sensei's blush and tried to analyze it. She seems happy. I'm unsure. Asuma has been annoying her lately, and Naruto just jumped in. Maybe he would be good for her. I wonder if he could turn into a bug. Actually, do I even want to know that? Continuing to ponder his own thoughts and shake his head he gets back to work. Sasuke didn't even pay attention to focused on brooding about his loss to Naruto. Kakashi was taking the Turumi air through the events that just happened, and you see Sharon, that's what happened this whole time, caught up to speed now. Seeing him nod Kakashi smiles. 
Sharon took all of this in wondering how he could possibly transform and have wood element jutsu. Sakura was worried about Sasuke and keeping on task while thinking about him. Tazuna, while working, was jealous of the boy a bit. Damn Gaki. He can turn into animals. Hell he even got that hot nin girl to ride him. Literally. Jeez he must be lucky. Instructing every clone to their own job he takes up his also. Hanada. Didn't know what she was feeling, jealousy. Of her sensei even. The gorgeous guy wanted her, at least so Hanada thought, and he obviously wasn't being shot down like Asuma was. Though she was feeling happy for her, her sensei seemed to be calmer and a bit more, girlish than normal. This made the heiress giggle, Kurinai sensei. Girlish. No way. Just no way. Though she knew one simple fact that bothered her the most. She got to ride the damn white tiger. She wondered how soft Naruto's fur must on Kurinai's legs while whipping through the forest. Starting to blush she shook her head. Not the time for fantasizing, sadly. The clones watching Hinata were smiling, their boss seemed happy and even took over in a gentle trot, not a hunter-hungry prowl. Looking down the Naruto against the tree watched as Hinata just leaned back into him while the other two Narutos kept her some company. He smiled softly, remembering his first sight of death and tucked a lock of hair behind her ear, gaining a weird look from the other clones, and an intense blush from Hinata. Well, I guess it's not all bad. I got three of him to myself. Hanada mentally giggled, which oddly seemed perverted. Leaning back she relaxed into the clone she was laying on, and closed her eyes, letting the sight of death drain out of her mind. Cuz I don't wanna be like this, I've been running the streets for too long now. But the further I go I wanna go home. Naruto seemed to sigh, seeing truth in the lyrics he couldn't get out of his head. I miss Oji-san, and Ichiraku Ramen of course. He grinned a tiger-like grin. She's so light is she even still up there? Cocking his head to the side he looked back glancingly, the sight that adorned him made him almost fall from the branches he was flying through. Kurinai was laid flat against him, he fishnet the only thing holding her breasts in her dress. Eyes closed but obviously awake, if the snuggling into his fur was any indication. So soft. Naruto for his part almost tripped again, deciding to go down to the forest floor. What caused it this time? Why Kurinai feeling the need to get her hands into his soft fur, right behind his ear, while scratching gently? As he touched down he actually started to growl affectionately, a purr if you will. Luckily it was so soft, Kurinai didn't notice. As he slouched down, she got the idea and got off, watching in amazement as he once again, transformed into the real Naruto, his eyes being feral for a few minutes afterwards. Those eyes. Kurinai bit her lip lightly. They seem primal, and protective, and hot as hell. Kurinai san, this should be far enough, not close to town. Naruto turned back to her after looking around. Which way would you like to go? Or would you want to split up? His voice seemed to falter just slightly at the end. No no, we should stay together, how about, north? We came from the east correct? And he did have boats to probably down by the river somewhere. Kurinai concluded and Naruto agreed with a nod and a smile. After walking in silence for a few minutes Naruto decided to break it. So since we're going to be traveling together how about we get to know one another? Likes dislikes, normal introduction. Turning to Kurinai and gauging her reaction he made sure not to look like he was really watching her. Hmm. Well I'm Kurinai Yuhi. Crimson Rosé. Very nice name. I like Dango since my friend always takes me out to eat it. Reading a good book once in a while, tending to my rose garden, and watching my team grow to be great shinobi. Kurinai paused to think over her dislikes, while Naruto interrupted. Naruto Namikaze, I like ramen, training, a beautiful rose, and of course animals. Kurinai didn't quite catch what he meant by that. I would like to see Oji-san soon, I like to read in my spare time, and the spars that Jiraiya can give me. He spars with a sanin. Amazing. Okay I take it my turn again. Naruto nods and Kurinai laughs lightly. That's a melodically gorgeous. I dislike perverts. After a point, everyone has a side to them they just don't need to show it off all the time, or at all. How guys always hit on me, even after I obviously don't show any interest, sometimes they seem to try violently. Inwardly growling Naruto wonders what's become of Konoha. 
He scowled at that. That shows promise. Kuranai smirked. People misjudging one another on appearances, and how Konoha is slowly decaying. As you said, the council is to blame though. Yes I know, Danzo especially. Well I dislike people who try to take advantage of others, defenseless or not. People shoving me off as the pariah when all I've ever done is protect them. Kuranai frowns at this, knowing exactly what he meant. The Uchiha, for their arrogance and power hungriness, and over-controlling people. My dream is to teach my team to the best of my abilities and make them great, while watching them grow strong. To finally find someone and settle into a nice relationship that is passionate and romantic. And wild at points Kuranai giggled mentally. So, she's not taken. That's amazing. Naruto literally lets hit eyes betray his surprise, Kuranai never catches this. Finally is to watch the village prosper and come to its glory again. Okay those are very nice, my dreams are too. Suddenly he stopped and pulled Kuranai to him and behind a tree, literally pulling her off her feet, sliding a hand over her mouth to stop a squeak that may escape. Kuranai starts to struggle to get away thinking he was going to do go against what he hated, her views on him slowly starting to change. Shish. Naruto hushed her and she calmed down closing her eyes waiting for it to come, she couldn't fend him off. While her eyes were closed she took note of everything around her, he had her pressed against him, back to his chest. An arm around her midriff, strong and almost caring holding tight but gentle. That's not right. His hand, she could tell, was just over her mouth, not pressing down, relaxed. Seeing her calm down he takes his hand away from her mouth and sets it on her hip, keeping her from getting away. Very carefully, so soft it barely passes the threshold of hearing, he whispers. Kuranai, relax, guards coming. Feeling his hand on her hip and his breath on her neck she was about to scream. Stupid move, moving your hand. That is until she heard him speak, barely, but still heard him, she stiffened. Closing her eyes she took in more of her surrounding. She didn't notice much except that she felt calm, too calm, she thought in this situation. Deciding to just lean onto him she relaxed more into his chest saying this was to hide and not be seen by the guards. As the minutes passed Naruto had thoughts of his own. She's toned up, explains why she's so light. She feels nice against me like this. He notes that her hair smells like wild roses, as it's pressed up against his neck and face. Her lips are soft and have a bit of volume to them. And her hip just seems to have the perfect curve to it. Soon he finds himself blushing lightly, forgetting about the guards. I've, never had this feeling before, it's not unwelcome just, now's not the time. Stealing himself he focuses on the mission. Kuranai's getting edgy, comfortable but edgy. She was about to get up when she heard voices. Yay, both boats were seen floating down the river, we just got them, full of dead bodies. The first voice said, masculine. No way. Another voice stated, masculine but seemed younger. Yep. That's why we're taking the back way, catch them off guard. The first said again, a twinging sound echoing. He's playing with a kanai, or katana. Thought Naruto quickly. Stay. Naruto told Kuranai quietly, showing no room for compromise, she nodded taking out a kanai for defensive purposes. Nodding his approval, Naruto takes to the road, they're around the bend so he won't be noticed. Taking to a normal stroll type of walk, he continued down the path a few minutes, going around the turn and coming to see a man and a boy. Apprentice I bet. Seeing Naruto the older one stiffened, hoping Naruto wouldn't notice as he moved his hand to grab his katana just in case. Good evening, this is the road to the boating docks correct? Naruto asked, acting lost. Huh, well. Yay. Uh, you see. The old man fumbled over his words, lost at the chances of finding someone lost. Yay. The dock is just down the road and to the left, but you're going to have to wait, the only two boats are taken out right now. The younger one seemed to keep his cool better, glancing a glare at his master. Why thank you. Naruto cheered and waved, getting back to pace and continuing his walk. That guy was weird Seiko. The smaller one said. Yay well, hopefully they kill him. We just want the Konoha Nins Teramu. Seiko commented letting his release on the katana finally come. Now, Naruto jumped into the woods and followed from the side, catching up quickly, soon he saw Kuranai and knew to take action before she did. 
wondering what was taking him Purani sighed, now that he was gone she was colder, like he kept her warm the whole time. His aura is calming, and warming, how nice. She blushed, a real red bright blush. Was he feeling me up? Or admiring my body? Shit there they are. Naruto what are you waiting for? Taking a stance that hid her body from view she waited, hoping to not be seen. Suppressing her blush by focusing on them. Dashing from the forest, Naruto landed a roundhouse kick to Seiko, simultaneously grabbing his katan from the sheath and spinning 360, effectively chopping Seiko's head off, and getting the katana blocked by the boy. Well now, good thing I kept on guard, I'm not so senile, unlike him. Grinning Teramu charged Naruto, pulling his kanai out and slicing at Naruto's neck. Naruto ducked, sliding into a leg sweep, knocking the boy off his feet into a backhand spring. After taking of his hands he threw the kanai at Naruto, who did Anto a roundhouse kick, adding chakra to it. Catching the blade and spinning around twice, he cut the flow of chakra sending the kanai whistling through the air, and directly through the boy's hand. Fuck. Gah. Grabbing his hand he notices he's missing three fingers. What the fuck did you do? Chakra is great isn't it? Wind chakra is nice, sharpening any object to a point beyond metal means. Watching as the boy hunches over his hand Naruto dashes, slicing down with the katana, separating the boy's head from his neck. TCH, not even worth this blade, too slow. Naruto went from serious to laid back quick and dropped the katana, walking back to Kuranai. Hey Kuranai, let's go to the docks and pay a visit to them nay. Grinning at the chance of destruction he watches her come out of the forest. Yay sure, let's go. Kuranai follows Naruto as he leaps from tree to tree. Taking in the sight of the docks, it was, huge, at least the size of the Hokage monument. Naruto grinned more, the thought of taking on the mercenaries in there making his adrenaline pump. Kuranai noticed his grin, it seemed to her, of bloodlust, an animal after its kill, hunting its prey. She shuddered, she liked it and it scared her at the same time. Come Kuranai we need to do some exterminating. She could sense the smile in his voice as he walked away from her. So much for not liking to kill huh? Seems he's thrilled about it. What happened to Kuranai-san? Hum Naruto. Grinning she watches him stumble slightly. Ma, would you rather me say Kuranai-san? Now Naruto grinned as he turned to watch her reaction. Grin still in place she walks up and past him. Nah, I think I rather like it without the honorific. Oh yeah definitely like it. Naruto stops for a second. Is, is she messing with me? Or flirting with me? Gah, who knows? Catching up he tells her to split up and flare her chakra if she needs him. Taking off in different directions they have one goal set in mind. Take out Gato, and give this land peace. Walking through the halls he keeps on guard, pulsing a light chakra pulse to detect anyone. So far so good, no one's here. Sliding into the next room he spotted three guards. Must be getting close now. Wind blades, silently thinking the jutsu, he watches as they fall to the ground without a noise, other than a thud. They make, all at once. Slipping into the last room he hears talking. No you stupid nin, I want them dead I don't care what you want to do. Kill them or else I kill you. A pudgy man seemed to try and take charge of a missing nin, Kiri by the looks of it. What's with all the Kiri nins? Taking out the two guards at the next door Naruto motions at the nin to stay quiet. Seeing a very slight nod he talks back to the fat man. Well too bad, you're not giving me enough cash for this mission. If Zabuza died then it's a suicide mission and I'm not taking it unless I get more money. End of discussion. The nin crossed her arms and seemed to smirk at the fat man. Watching a blonde boy sneak through the office to the desk. Fine. Then you're going to die. Guards. He waited a few seconds and turned to see a chest, silver pants, and a kanai, directly in front of him. They're dead Gato. The man backed away almost tripping over a plank of wood uprooted from the floor. Who are you? Trying to get a good distance. Naruto never moved, distance wouldn't matter. Who me? He grins. Oh no one. Just your worst nightmare Gato. Naruto jumps and takes a gash into Gato's arm. Gah. Gato went to grab his arm only for the same kanai to be lodged into his shoulder, leaving it immobilized. Spittle flew from his mouth but Gato made no sound at all. 
Naruto took another step seeing as the fat man isn't going to move anywhere. Page. Please. I'll give you whatever you want leave me alone. Gato cried out at Naruto. Oh. Really. Anything I want. Toying with the idea of getting something Naruto plays along. Yes. Anything. Yes. Anything. Kurenai just walked through a door, only having to take out a few mercenaries. She came to the sight of Naruto playing with the idea of getting anything he wanted from Gato. Well, you see, there is this one thing I want. Naruto seemed to grin when he said this, sensing Kurenai entered the room. But I'm sure I can get it on my own. I mean, a rose always comes along, you just have to pick it at the right time, when it's at its peak in beauty. Naruto's grin grew bigger. Kurenai seemed to understand this one and blushed deep, Hanada deep. Kiri Nin just watched and was laughing in her head, holding it all back and enjoying the show. That woman, is very beautiful, is he talking about her? She smirks watching Kurenai turn red. Yep. N. No. I can help you get it. I'm Gato. I can help. Gato screamed edging away from Naruto, who just took a stride to balance out the distance. Oh, I don't think so. Besides, I don't need help, and. Naruto stopped just letting the suspense sink in. I can just take whatever I want from you after I kill you anyway. Then give Wave what they need to prosper again. Gato reeled in horror at this. Naruto had enough of the fat man. In one swift motion he tossed his kunai, lodging it into the mon's skull, right between the eyes. Instant death. I suggest you go Kiri Nin. Gato is gone you need to help your Mizukage correct. The Nin nodded and shunshined out, leaving with a grimace on her face. Reminder. Never get on his bad side. I didn't even see him throw it. Naruto. You just saved the whole village you know that right? Kurenai asked, still blushing slightly. Yep. He stated, with a single smile, and went behind the desk grabbing a few documents. Hum. Here Kurenai, take these please. Handing the documents over she takes a look and gasps, bank statements. These. Yay. He has more in here though, he didn't trust banks much, I can tell. Naruto walked to a wall and knocked, sliding down the wall and over, repeating this over and over, finishing one wall with no results. Naruto you're not going to find. A-H-A. Punching the wall he breaks the plaster and grabs at the safe, taking it and smacking the lock a few times, then the top, rotating the lock to zero feet and it popped open. Sweet. Taking out a scroll he pulled all the contents except one and stored them away, putting the one item in his pocket for later. Taking initiative, Kurenai helps, they find four more chests, safes. Each into their own scrolls. Grabbing the documents back Naruto puts them in another scroll, and helps Kurenai up. One last thing. Naruto walks to the desk and smashes it, seeing it served as its own bank also. After sealing up all the contents of the desk he turned to Kurenai. Hey. Got you a present. Naruto grins big and holds out his hand. Kurenai walks over hesitantly and puts her hand under his. Hum. Na turn around. He watches as she does so and presses himself up against her back again draping a metal over her chest. Cold. Was the first thought to go through her head as she jumped and he chuckled at her. Yay sorry. Didn't have time to warm it up for ya. Naruto finally finishes the clasp and pulls her hair up, letting the chain fall under it and her scent waft up from her hair. Looking down Kurenai was shocked. It's. It's beautiful. She looked and saw a white gold chain, three jewels on one charm, a rose, with a ruby carved as the main opened rose. And emerald made up the stem and leaves, all coated in a diamond pendant, set in the middle. Covered by the elements. Diamond. Keeping the ruby and emerald safe. Dot and it's not in the way either. Naruto it's. Beautiful. Thank you. She hugged him roughly and he smiled back. Of course Kurenai. Something to almost match your beauty. Naruto couldn't help laugh at her blush. Yep definitely adorable. We need to get going come on. I can carry you if you want. She nods lightly and he picks her up bridal style. What no animal this time. Tiger. Raven. Being daring and carrying me without hiding yourself huh. Naruto let out a laugh and Kurenai soon joined him as he jumped out the window and sped through the forest, set on coming to the bridge before too late. Wow it's already so late, it's dark. How can you see so well? Well. 
Along with turning into animals, I can partially turn, to a point. He looked down at her and his eyes were the eyes of a white tiger again. Her breath caught, not being this close before, she reached her hand up and stroked his cheek. They're beautiful. Hey not as much as yours Kur and I. Seeing her blush was just getting way too fun. Looking up at the moon, Kur and I smiled. Somehow this just feels right for me right now. The moon is beautiful, and I have this romantic, sensitive, gorgeous, primal man. Has he marked me as his? She though quizzically knowing animals, once they want one mate, they, mark, them and keep track of them, keeping them safe even if they aren't the other's chosen mate. Suddenly her blush came back full force. I'm blushing like Hanada. There's got to be something wrong with me. Naruto stuck in his own thoughts took on autopilot with his feet and they made it back in 20 minutes. Deciding it was best not to let the genin or Kakashi see anything he dropped her off of before the forest edge. She mentally pouted but nodded, thinking it was best for now also. Walking to the bridge they noticed all the clones were there, but no one else. Naruto walked up to a clone and asked what happened. Well they all tired themselves out and left to rest, we decided to keep working and finish this bridge up while they rest tonight. Once said after laying down some concrete. Yea the three that were with Hinata took her there and are keeping her company. Another said as he saw her and I get a look in her eyes. All right guys, keep up the good work then, disperse when you're done working. We're heading back to then. A few clones smiled seeing the necklace on Kurinai and they left. While walking with Kurinai he noticed just how cold it was out, for her anyway, she shivered a bit. Smiling he decided to offer her his cloak. Kurinai, here, this is warmer than you'd think. He walked up behind her and strapped his cloak to her neck loosely. True to his word, the cloak seemed to melt away her cold. She noticed why it was so cold now, they were almost there, by the lake out back. Naruto. Let's stay out here a bit all right. Naruto smiled at her and nodded walked down the dock and taking a seat. Kurinai decided to take a seat on the corner, taking off her sandals and dipping her feet in the cool water. On top of the Tazuna household a lone figure stands, on watch for the two to return. She is happier. He noted as she seemed to laugh at something he said and playfully hit him. A bug came up and buzzed a bit. Shino smiled, seen over the collar of his coat. Yes, this is a good thing for her, she needs to get rid of the stress. Watching no longer, he dare not impede on their moment and retreats to the house, getting into his bedroom shared with the other males. What was that for? Naruto asked after she hit him. Oh nothing. Just the fact that you gave me a beautiful necklace. She smiled at him and leaned on his shoulder. Well you needed some kind of jewelry. He said, a smile in his voice. Shoving him again she just laughs. Yay sure. Wrapping an arm around her, Naruto feels her relax into his chest a bit. This does not mean you've made me yours you know. Kurinai stated as a fact to him. Laughing he smiles down into her hair. Of course, if it was there wouldn't be a challenge in trying to impress you. Kurinai, do you want to go on a date when we get to Konoha? My treat of course. Kurinai blushed and nodded to him closing her eyes and relaxing a bit more taking in his scent. Kurinai started to wake up and decided, she was really comfortable, and didn't want to get up. Taking a deep breath and snuggling into her pillow, she noticed a few things. First, she smelled a familiar scent, along with the smell of fresh dew and foliage. Second, was the fact her pillow was really warm, and was moving a bit. Lastly, she took notice that something or someone was playing with her hair. Noticing her stiffened Naruto pauses for a moment, before going back to running his fingers through her hair. You know Kur and I, staying asleep so long, your team might get worried for you. Hearing this voice Kur and I bolted upright, taking in the scenery. They were in the forest, on the edge by the water, but it seemed much warmer than it should be. She noticed the sun just started to raise, and the sky looked beautiful. The last thing that she noticed, was the fact her, pillow, was in fact, Naruto. Trying to take advantage of a sleeping woman Naruto. Grinning she lets him pull her back to his chest letting her rest some more. Course not Kurinai, you just seemed peaceful, and your hair is very soft you know, for a kunoichi that is. Smiling down at her, Naruto takes in the fact that she's eyeing her necklace with a small gleam in her eye. Yay, 
I'm not taking that back, it's all yours Kurenai. Feeling the warm feeling in her chest again, Kurenai did the only thing her mind told her to do right now, which was hug Naruto close, and relax into his chest. Taken aback slightly by her sudden movement, Naruto rests a hand on her side, above her hip, and holds her. You know, you don't seem like the kind up for cuddling like this. Kurenai takes the time to glare up at him ruining her moment. Yay well this is an exception, I'm not usually a cuddly person. Hearing this, Naruto grins, I'm special then. When is everyone going to wake up? Looking at the sky, Naruto takes in the time by the sight of the sun. I'd say, maybe an hour, you can stay and rest or you can go do what you need. Kurenai nods and relaxes, setting her head into the crook of his neck, taking in his scent. I think I'm still tired. Smiling into his neck she takes a deep breath. Laughing lightly Naruto nods. Sure just lay and rest then, by the way, I took us away from the docks so you won't be seen with me like this. Your shoes are on the side of the tree behind me. Seeing her nod, he relaxes taking in the scent of her hair, and running his hand up and down her side slowly. So warm, her and I couldn't keep her eyes open much longer. It's so comforting, I want to just stay here and not wake up. She couldn't believe how she was thinking, but wasn't about to deny how she felt about the situation either. I can wake you up before they get up if you nod off, so don't worry too much about it. Feeling her nod just barely, he could tell she was already starting to get sleepy again. Taking the much needed break, Kurenai relaxes and closes her eyes, letting sleep overcome her again. Naruto couldn't help but stare at her beauty while she slept, wondering just how lucky he was for this moment, even if it wouldn't last, he was happy with this. He could tell she liked the necklace, at least a bit, and he was glad, the rose was why he saved it and gave it to her. For his part he couldn't understand how she was so beautiful and still so dangerous. Ninja's number one advantage is deception I guess. Chuckling lightly to himself he smiles feeling her breath on his neck. Even if this is only this one time thing, she seems happy and relaxed, and I don't mind. Feeling his ears perk up, he hears the occupants in the house start to stir and takes it as his cue to wake up the rose on his chest. Being gentle, he shakes her a little. Her and I, get up, your team is starting to awake. Waiting, with no reply he shakes her again. Hey come on, get up Her and I. Um, Naruto-kun, you're so relaxing. Naruto-kun, where did that come from? Naruto thought to himself. Um, Her and I you have to get up unless you want your team to wonder about you being out here and not inside. At this Kurenai started to sit up a bit. Have a good sleep there Kurenai. Nodding she wipes sleep from her eyes and runs her fingers through her hair, letting out a yawn. Seeing her support herself up, Naruto reaches around and grabs her shoes, handing them to her and standing up. Kurenai yawned again and slid her shoes on answer his question, albeit a bit late. Yay, best sleep I've had in a while even before I left my bed at home. At this Naruto chuckled and stretched, feeling his spine, arms and neck pop and crack. Ah, I feel really refreshed also, then again, I haven't slept on a bed for a long time. Feeling a weight on her shoulders, she notices she still has his cloak on, and just how warm it kept her. Even right by the water she can't feel a bit of the air coming from the lake. Uh, hey you should take your cloak back, you've got to be cold. Grinning Naruto shakes his head. Nah, I don't get cold very often, if at all, I should be fine no worries, but I probably should anyway. Walking over to her Naruto reaches up and unclasps the cloak, letting one side slip off her shoulder and swinging it around to clip onto his neck, putting the hood up to block out the sun. Shivering, her and I noticed just how much cold the cloak was blocking out. Smiling she takes a step forward and embraces Naruto. Thanks for letting me rest with you, it was nice. And I think I'm going to stay right here and keep warm with you. Grinning she looks up at him, to see he was shocked. What? It's chilly. Smiling he wraps an arm around her letting the cloak cover them both. Yay well come on, we need to get to the house, I'll let you go in the door and I'll sneak in a window on the second floor. Naruto, you can come in the door with me there's no problem with that. Smiling softly at him. She knew what he thought, she doesn't want to be seen with someone so young by her team. 
Besides we can say we went out for walk before they awoke so we didn't disturb them. Chuckling at her excuse he smiled and walked through the forest with her. Sure if that's what you want Kuranai, by the way, I have a question. Grinning Naruto thought about many things that could happen at this, but only one kept repeating over and over, her blushing a deep red. Raising an eyebrow Kuranai turns to look at him. Oh, and what would this question be about? Hmm, I don't know maybe about something while I was waking you up. Something about you calling me Naruto-kun. Grinning he watched her reaction change over time. First she looked confused, then it seemed to dawn on her. Her face started to turn a light pink until she remembered her dream, and she turned beet red and turned to him fully. Yes, and what about that? The blush seemed to cover her whole face now as she looked at him, stopping them in their tracks, thankfully still on the edge of the forest. Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Just wondering where it came from is all Kuranai. Smiling he watches her inner struggle and likes it, seeing as her face turned crimson from the conflict. Well, you're just going to have to figure that out for yourself now want you. Hiding her blush a bit Kuranai slid her arm under his cloak and across his waist, raising an eyebrow from him, and started walking back to the house. Tsunami was the first to awaken, taking initiative and getting ready for the day. She did her daily routines and got dressed. Peeking through the rooms she could tell everyone was still asleep and she trotted downstairs to start getting breakfast ready for everyone in the house, sighing as she went thinking of how much money this will cost them. Grabbing out a variety of foods along with plates, bowls, and cups, she set the table and heated the stove up. Seeing as she had a few dirty dishes she let the stove heat up while she cleaned them looking out the window fantasizing about the country prospering again once the bring finally gets finished. Sighing contently she nods, this is just a small sacrifice for the better, referring to the food. Hearing the stove ding she starts to prepare the food and sets some water to boil for the rice. Finishing up the dishes she looks out the window, to see a peculiar sight that makes her smile happily. Spotting the female Jonan, Kuranai with a man, she sees Kuranai smiling and laughing with him as he holds her. Wondering how cold it must be out, she notices he's not wearing a shirt and blushes getting a look at his stomach and chest. Well someone's lucky that's for sure. Thinking of the Jonan and the newcomer, Tsunami starts a special batch of food for them, seeing as they're both up bright and early, unlike the rest of them. Kuranai, I don't think anyone from the two teams are up yet. There's only one person up and they seem to be a civilian. Nodding Kuranai pulls him a bit closer and smiles, seeing as she got to have just a little more time with him then. Naruto grins and wraps his arm tighter around her as well. Well isn't this just great? He thought happily with a smile. With a smile on her face Tsunami made sure everyone was still asleep and set a table in the living room for the two, with their food already done and cooling down. Yay this will be nice for them. She thought as she walked back to the kitchen to check the food. Turning to the window she saw how close they were and walked to the door, waiting a few seconds and opened it, to the surprise of Kuranai and Naruto. And just where have you been Kuranai? She tried to scold the Jonin but failed as the smile came back full force on her face. Uh, well you see. Kuranai fumbled as Naruto slid away from her and she noticed the difference in temperature and mentally sighed. Oh come now don't be like that I'm just teasing, I won't tell your team or anyone. Come now. I've made breakfast. Tsunami giggled seeing a Jonan trip over words like that, and ushered them inside. Tsunami, this is Naruto, he helped us on the mission to protect your father, and is the one helping with the bridge also. He will be going back to Konoha with us and be staying here for the rest of the time we're here if that's okay. Tsunami smiled and just nodded giving a small greeting to Naruto. Kuranai just started to take a seat as Tsunami pulled her away. No no dear. You and him are eating in the living room, there's no room at the table. Pausing to give a little effect she leant into Kuranai. And, to give you some more time with him. I'm a woman I know that when you want to be with someone and you can't, just how frustrating it is, so go on. She smiled at Kuranai. T thank you Tsunami, that was very kind of you. Come on Naruto let's go eat. Kuranai smiled and turned to him. Hold on Kuranai, I'll meet you in there alright. Smiling down he saw her nod and walk off. Tsunami-san was it. Receiving a nod he continued and started taking a scroll out of his cloak. 
I would like to thank you and seeing as you're letting everyone stay here I deem it fit to give you this before I present this to everyone else. Naruto opened the scroll and let a bunch of cash flow out of the seal. It was all taken from Gato after he passed away, I'm returning almost all of it to the village. Tsunami couldn't help but be stunned. This man, killed Gato, and is giving them all the money. This was unreal, he just saved the village and he could keep all of it if he wanted, but he was giving it all back to the occupants of this village. The only thing that came to mind was to hug him, which she did, tightly, to the point he could barely breathe. Thank you Naruto. Her and I, in the other room, couldn't help but smile, knowing the reason he stayed behind was to give her some of the money taken by Gato. Of course, it was nothing, if there's not enough money I can donate some also, as a helping hand. Tsunami couldn't help but stare in wonder. Geez he's so sweet, no wonder Kurenai stakes claims. Grinning she nodded. It won't be needed but thanks for the offer Naruto. Now go eat breakfast with Kurenai, you must be hungry. Nodding Naruto said his thanks and went to sit with Kurenai who was patiently waiting for him to return. Sitting down next to her on the couch, she takes this chance to lean against him and he wraps an arm around her. You know, this is nice, and it looks delicious. Naruto exclaimed as he took in the dishes tsunami set for them. Breakfast included the following. Spiced rice, mixed with some fish which, by the looks of waves seem to be a delicacy here. A plate of teriyaki chicken, seasoned with spices from another country, rare in wave. A plate of sweet dumplings, to which Kurenai grinned at. And to top it off was a couple of small potato cakes. Kurenai smiled seeing as tsunami went all out for them with little money to boot, it was very appreciated. Leaning up Naruto grabbed the plate of dumplings and set it on his lap grabbing a wooden sanban covered with them and held it up for Kurenai. Smiling she took a bite of it, seeing how it tastes, and was amazed at Tsunami's cooking. Seeing her face Naruto took a whole one off the other end and munched it, savoring it. Watching Tsunami smiled coyly, ah such sweet moments, are rare for Shinobi if I remember. I hope they can finish and savor the time together before the teams wake up. Hearing the oven beeping she goes and finishes making breakfast for everyone. These are delicious, he commented and Kurenai nods her agreement taking the rest off the end she already bit. Setting the sanban down to save as a treat for after breakfast, Naruto grabbed the bowls of rice and handed one to her. I don't think I could very well feed you that and not make a mess. Grinning at her as she giggled he took his own bowl in his hands. Seeing him take a bite and start eating with gusto, albeit his manners are good for eating so fast, she takes a few bites. Wow this woman knows her cooking skills, maybe I can get her to make me some dishes before we leave. Noticing he finished his rice already she looks down seeing how much she has left. Half a bowl, he can wait. Grinning she finishes off at her own pace as he starts to much on his potato cake. Seeing Kurenai finishing off her rice he grabs the chicken and sets it down in front of them, taking her bowl when she's down and setting it in his. While grabbing their chopsticks from their bowls and handing hers back. Taking a smaller piece of chicken Kurenai nibbles at it while thinking over the last day, and looking at the blonde in front of her. In only one day, he seems to be able to do what all the men back in Konoha couldn't which was get my attention, keep it, and get me interested. He's an interesting one. That's for sure, maybe he will be the one. Sighs and continues a little more down. Nah, he won't wanna stay around, a one-time thing and then he'll leave, or even just use me to get back into Konoha. Oh well, keep it while it lasts right. Taking in the sight of him trying to eat a good-sized piece of chicken in one bite she smiles. You won't be able to eat that in one bit Naruto. Wanna bet, he asks as he raises an eyebrow and takes her challenge. Yay. What's the wager? Grinning she leans forward watching him think it over for a minute. How about if you win, I have to do one thing you ask, and if I win, you have to do one thing I ask. Grinning back at her he waves the chicken back and forth slowly. Thinking it over for a minute Kurenai finally decided to take it. Yay, you're on. Now what to make him do? Mentally taking a thinking pose she ponders the idea. Good, then let's see. Watching her lean back with a smirk on her face he inwardly grins, dislocating his jaw ever so slightly, and took the whole piece in his mouth, swallowing it whole. Now what to make her do? Wiping a little bit of the chicken seasoning from his lip with his thumb, he ponders. 
Quote dot dot dot. How is that even possible? Kuranai, for her part, was astounded, it was almost the size of his hand for Kami's sake. Damn, now I have to do what he wants. Sighing and sulking slightly she continues to watch him. Single quote comma dot. I could do that but, it wouldn't be too fair. Hum, well that's nice and simple. Smiling he's decided what he wants her to do. Well, what do you want? Kuranai said playfully as she looked up the relaxed pose she took after sighing. Impatient are we, let's finish eating first. Grabbing some more dango he leaves the last few pieces of chicken for her, having his fill with that one piece. Ow. Don't know how snakes do that shit. Raising an eyebrow, Kuranai finishes off the chicken and Naruto hands her a full stick of dango, both relaxed into the couch, Kuranai leaning on his shoulder while nibbling her dango. Tsunami, while finishing up her dishes and setting the table stopped for a second. I feel, like a bet was just place in my house, and someone won, only two people are up. Ooh, Kuranai, gotta watch this. Setting the last plate down hastily she peeked around the corner watching the two shinobi. Finishing their dango, Kuranai relaxes more into the couch, too full to want to sit uncomfortably. Um, close your eyes. Naruto smiled at her. Sighing Kuranai did so. Wonder what he's going to do. Mentally rolling her eyes she couldn't deny she was excited a bit. Taking this chance to look at her, he notices her slender legs and couldn't help but blush just barely at that. Just like the rest of her, gorgeous, fits perfectly. Leaning over her, Naruto rests a hand on the couch, on the other side of Kuranai. What's he doing anyway? I mean if he's going to do something he might as well do it. Naruto, after leaning down bit his lip thinking this over again, but being decided already, he went through with it. Slowly he inched towards her, before sighing. Fuck this. Naruto stopped hesitating and just kissed her leaning his other hand down by her head. Snapping her eyes open Kuranai sees Naruto, and feels Naruto. Fa, not knowing what else to do, and frankly, enjoying herself, Kuranai wrapped her arms around him and deepened the kiss a little. Feeling her arms around his neck, Naruto slides one of his arms under her torso lifting her slightly to him. Closing his eyes he enjoys the kiss and relaxes. What was I thinking? Nothing to be hesitant about. Mentally grinning he seems to melt into their kiss. Her lips, are so soft. Her and I, having similar thoughts closes her eyes. This is what he wanted. It's not so bad. Letting herself enjoy the kiss she notes. His lips are soft, I've kissed Asuma a few times, and this is way different, this feeling. Letting her mind shut off for a bit she melts into the kiss. Seeing Naruto lean in Tsunami got curious, wondering what exactly was going on. That is until he kisses Kuranai, which she could tell surprised the woman to no end. Blushing at watching the two Tsunami stared as the two embraced each other, and both seemed to melt together in that kiss. Seeing as she intruded long enough, according to her blush, Tsunami decided to leave the two alone, and turn off the stove before going to wake her son and father for breakfast. Kuranai felt, simply, like she was in total bliss for a moment. Feeling Naruto pull away gently, she pulled him back for a few more seconds, before she needed to breathe, and promptly, though hesitantly, let go. Sliding back down to the couch, she noticed Naruto was still leaning over her, eyes glazed slightly. Well I probably look the same. She noted. Whoa. Kuranai said finally able to speak. Nodding with her Naruto agreed and stayed above her for a few seconds until he heard movement upstairs. To which he grinned and kisses Kuranai on the cheek before taking his seat and watching her reaction. Kuranai couldn't stop smiling, she felt happy, and stress-free, and she wasn't even blushing from the contact just then. Sitting up she watched as Naruto picked up the dishes and cleaned up, taking them into the kitchen and washing them quickly. Following after him she sees him finishing up the dishes, and decides to wrap her arms around his midriff, and snuggle into his back, after unfastening the clip for the cloak letting it fall. Taking in his scent for a few minutes, she sighs, hearing footsteps coming down the stairs, deciding she was too comfy she just snuggled into his back more. Smiling to himself, Naruto slows down and rewashes the dishes he rushed through, making sure they're actually clean. Liking the feel of Kuranai cuddled up to him and resting her head on his shoulder, he tries to take as long as possible to keep her there. Huoa, wa, wa. 
What do we have here? Tazuna states walking into the room and sees the two together. Inari, hearing how Naruto gave them a lot of money and killed Gato, came running up and hugged his leg tight. Thank you. You must be the closest thing to a hero. Tsunami walked in behind her son and watches the confrontation as her father eats and Inari joins him. Drying his hands Naruto turns around in Kurenai's grasp and wraps an arm around her. Tsunami-san, you should eat too you know. Tsunami turned to him. I didn't make anything for me, trying to save what we do have for later in case we need it. Naruto smiled at her and made a clone to prepare her some food, and himself ushering her to sit down next to Tazuna, all the while holding on to Kurenai. After some time, some fussing, and two clones later, Tsunami finally has a dish to eat for herself, composed of a few different foods. Dango, some beef spiced, and covered in rice, which was cooked in a thin layer of grease from the chicken. A small plate of sushi, along with a sauce Naruto homemade. Mouth starting to water, Tsunami turns to Naruto. This looks amazing. Kurenai couldn't help but mentally nod seeing the food sitting there, before turning back to Naruto and snuggling into him. Lifting a pair of chopsticks she picks up a piece of beef to taste it, leaving the room silent as they all watched. Chewing a few times her eyes turned to starts and she took a few more pieces, glutton for the food he made, enviously of Kurenai. Saving the beef for later, she tries a piece of sushi, gaining close to the same reaction after dipping it in the sauce. Grinning while he watched, Naruto barely controlled his laughter at her expressions. Oh yay, I've lived alone for a while, I know how to cook. Finishing off the sushi tsunami returns to the beef and rice with gusto, finishing before even her father finished his food. Lastly taking the dango between the sticks, she nibbles the edge, eyes turning into hearts this time and munching happily on the dango, eyes closed with a content sigh after swallowing the first piece. With a few pieces left she enjoys them slowly and sighs contently when done. I take it you liked it tsunami. Exactly how would you rate the food he prepared? Kurenai asked curiously after seeing her expressions. Looking up from her food Tsunami gives a mock glare at Kurenai, before continuing to munch on her dango. Well, Tsunami how is it? Kurenai now on edge slightly pulled towards Tsunami off of Naruto's chest. Munching slowly she grins as she finishes the last piece. Damn boy, you know how to cook. Everyone looks at her odd. What? That was the best breakfast I've had since. Hell I don't even remember. Grinning to Kurenai as her mouth drops open. Tsunami nods proving she wasn't lying. Naruto. Yes Rose. Blushing at the name he called her she notices Tsunami's grin get bigger. You're making dinner. Kurenai left no room for dispute and he just slowly nodded. The teams are waking up Kurenai. Naruto offhandedly commented and watched as her face relayed a few thoughts. From being worried, to uncaring, back to worry. Finally she sighed and opted for standing next to him, letting their shoulders touch. Smiling at this Naruto turned to see Sasuke, along with Shino, Kiba and Kakashi were the first to awaken. Looking over at Tsunami, she seemed too content to move, as crowded as the kitchen was he opted to taking the pots of food to the table himself. Seeing everyone get seated and eating, Tazuna spoke up. I, Naruto, is the bridge finished yet? Getting looks from everyone at the table, aimed at him, Naruto decided to check, dispelling a clone. Hum, not yet. Close though, it'll be done today though so no worries. Suddenly he froze, Kurenai felt him go stock still next to her. While no one was really paying much attention to him anymore Kurenai watched. Slowly a faint giggling could be heard, which got Kakashi and Kiba to look at him. Then it went on for him to slightly bend over holding himself, which now got the attention of Shino, Tazuna, Hanada and Tsunami. Finally he just burst out laughing which got everyone else to look like he was crazy and look down at their food to see if something was wrong with it. Um, Naruto, what's wrong? Hanada asked simply, putting everyone's thoughts into words. N. Ha ha nothing. Ha ha ha. Sighing heavily Naruto regained himself slightly, and began looking around. What? Can't have a hysterical fit without people staring at you. Well if you saw it you would be laughing too. This got everyone to raise their eyebrow even the Uchiha. Naruto. Just tell us what happened please. We're all tired. Kakashi spoke pulling out his orange book. Yay come on Naruto tell us. Kiba said enthusiastically, 
with Akamaru barking along. So what was it Naruto? Shino asked stoically as normal. Grinning Naruto shifted to get comfy. Sure sure. Well you see. Dot dot. My clones were out working nay. And I just dispelled one that was apparently holding some tools, when he dispelled the tools fell bouncing down and almost hitting another clone. Who in turn got pissed and started yelling, taking out and throwing a hammer at a clone that was behind the first one. The clone ducked only for another clone to take it, which had a bag of cement. Suffice to say the cement dropped onto the clone who moved just enough for the bag to fall off from him before he dispelled, down the ladder he was one, and onto another clone's foot. Naruto stopped for a minute seeing a few people giggling. The clone seemed to toss his pickaxe in the air, which another clone saw and was running to dodge it, but ran off the bridge, into the rapids dispelling. The axe, fell onto another clone, splitting its head open and making him fall off his ladder onto some uncemented rods. A clone that was watching didn't realize he was walking and fell off the bridge, trying to grab onto the edge and grabbed another clone flinging him down below the other. Even Sasuke started laughing at this, along with Sakura and Kakashi who set down his corn. One clone seemed to be daydreaming and missed all of this as the clone that was flung down through his shovel slamming into the clone's head, which dropped a kanai he was using, the kanai cut a rope that flew across the bridge, dropped a weight onto a clone, slid through some areas it was supporting causing a bunch of supports to fall, and finally dropped down a large sharp piece of metal. All the while three clones watched the rope and didn't move, until the fact they saw the metal coming down, which cut them in half. They looked at each other and started to slide apart dispelling from the cut. Now everyone was laughing, albeit not as hard as Naruto, well Kiba was. Naruto. Hee hee you need to keep your clones under control don't you think? Kurenai giggled out. Yay maybe. So old man when do we go and finish that bridge? Turning to Tazuna he let the laughter fade and waited for his answer. Ha ha ha. Well kid, I think we should start soon enough, the sooner the better right? Nodding Naruto stretched hearing his neck and arms crack, along with his back. Ready whenever, I'm going to warm up, anyone wanna join me? Asking he watched as Shino stood up along with Hinata, Sharon, and Kurenai straightened up. Grinning Naruto took stride ahead of them. Well then, let's go. Naruto started walking out with Kurenai behind him and the other three coming out talking with one another. Let's go down by the lake, I can get some training in and you all can train a bit. Getting nods from everyone present Naruto sets off at a normal pace just jogging through the backyard to the lake. Keeping up with him Kurenai thinks on what he might be training on, while thinking up a few exercises for the genin. Sharon talked quietly to Hinata and Shino seemed to just watch over everyone. Naruto could feel Shino watching him, squashing the need to look back and see what he wants Naruto leaps over to the edge of land. Well then Kurenai, take the genin if you're going to train them. Seeing her nod she calls them all over to her walking a bit deeper in the forest. I'll be right there Kurenai sensei. Shino commented to his team leader who nodded and walked off. You want something I'm assuming Shino-san. Smiling politely Naruto takes a seat by the lake and motions for him to join. Yes I would like to talk to you, about last night. Shino notices him stiffen slightly but watches as Naruto just grins. Yes I saw, not too much to intrude, but Naruto-san. If you're going to try and win her heart then you need to take care of her. She's my sensei, and we're all like family on our team. Shino said seriously, watching Naruto, who took on a serious expression. Shino, please don't imply that I would hurt Kurenai, she's a good person, and if by chance I get with her then I'm not one to mess things up. I'll take care of her, you can count on that. Watching Shino nod, he lets out a small smile. I haven't had anyone close to me like Kurenai is, not even relatively close, and I'm going to treasure it if by chance we have a relationship. If we don't then it's fine, there's no loss and there's nothing to fuss over. Naruto swore he could see a smile on Shino's face. That's good Naruto, I just wanted to make sure. Now what are you training with anyway? Grinning at him Naruto stands up. You know how to water walk yet Shino. Seeing the boy shake his head Naruto smiles and lectures him about it. Give it a try Shino. I suggest shallow water though, I'll be doing some training over in the middle of the lake if you need me just send a kaikachu bug over. 
Shino smiled seeing he didn't mind the bugs, and nodded to him while walking off to a shallower part of the lake. Naruto, after watching Shino a bit and chuckling at his misfortune, made a few hundred clones. You 200, start the new chakra exercise, the other hundred start up on mastering more jutsu, you 100, go find some animals that I haven't met yet. You 400, well then, that's all that's left. Sighing softly Naruto smiles. Come at me with all you got. Jumping onto the water Naruto gets into a stance that most wouldn't know. Ten clones came at a time, one cleaving a right hook over his head, and another sweep kicking his leg out. Letting the kick hit first Naruto rolled with it, letting the roll grant him absence from the hook above his head. Landing in a crouch he stabs forward, killing the clone that tried to kick him. Throwing his other arm out he grabbed the clone's leg and threw it into the oncoming horde, taking out three more in the scuffle. Taking on the next group three clones attacked, one with a clawed hand, one with a kanai, and the last went for a simple roundhouse. Spinning quickly Naruto hit the kanai with one of his own, pushing the clone's kanai into the clawed clone, stabbing it through the wrist. Defying some laws of physics Naruto spins the other way without slowing down, and grabs the roundhouse, following through and slamming it into the clone with the kanai. Five down, 395 to go. Grinning Naruto jumps towards the horde beginning to dispel clones left and right. Kurenai, after setting her genin to work, minus Shino, went to see just what he was up to. Instead she found a literal ocean of Naruto, seeming to puff up every few seconds in smoke. Watching carefully she could see a single swift moving Naruto, assuming him to be the real one, she continued to watch, almost mesmerized by the fluid motions he was going through. Shaking her head slightly she looks over to see Shino fumbling with the water walking, surprised he's learning it without the team she can't help but smile at the fact that obviously Naruto and him got along. Walking up Kurenai gave him some pointers. Shino nodded and they both turned to hear a splash of slight profanity, if that's slight. Motherfucker. Got a lucky shot huh? Grinning Naruto grabbed at a branch that was broken from his fall through it into the water and charged chakra through it, making pieces fall off until it looked like a simple boken. Shooting forward, with a wooden blade, Naruto seemed to whiz by the clones and they just blinked, six straight in a line that were charging. Seeming to turn around all the clones looked down and started to slide apart, before dispelling. Bitch, that's what you get. God I'm insulting myself what have I come to? Striking a thinking pose for a second, he grabs onto a fist aimed for his head, stabbing his boken through the clone's heart. 325 left. Smiling to himself Naruto took off again, sword in hand. Kakashi, where did Sharon go? Sakura asked quietly, not wanting to disturb her sensei too much. Pulling his porn down ever so slightly he looks at the spot said teammate was, and shrugs. Hell if I know, probably went with Kurenai. No big he's safe with her also. Akamaru barked as he ran through the room eliciting a squeak from Sakura, a grunt from Sasuke, and a giggle from Kakashi. He seems playful today Kiba, tired of being held inside. Tsunami asks as she relaxes on the couch after that meal, deciding even she needed breaks sometimes. Yay, he loves the outdoors, I'm with him on that. I'm gonna take him for a walk, be back later. Kiba yelled as he walked out the door. Whatever you say Kiba, Tsunami nonchalantly commented as her eyes closed and she sighed deeply. Oh come on Tsunami the food could not have been that good. Earning a glare to her father, Tsunami smiled and grabbed a small piece she saved. Try me. Was all she said and handed him the piece of dango. Everyone seemed to come to alert at this and watched with high interest. Rolling his eyes Tazuna bit into it, not expecting what had happened. For minutes nothing happened. Suddenly Tazuna yelled, not loud but enough to make the genin jump and Kakashi to look up from his book more than he was already. Dear lord, this is amazing. Scarfing down the remaining dango Tazuna soon joins his daughter's state of mind and relaxes into the chair. Damn right dad, that boy knows how to cook. Watch your mouth sunshine, Tazuna reprimanded, with no force behind it making Tsunami want to laugh. After the genin finished their exercises they joined Shino and Kurenai in watching Naruto, who had by now removed his cloak, to which Kurenai grabbed up quickly, to the surprise of Shino as the others didn't arrive at the time. Folding it on her lap she can slightly smell his scent wafting up. Nature-like, 
just like everything around them, but a sweet smell to it, that she could only explain as simply, Naruto. Everyone watched in fascination as he moved silently and fluidly between moves, dispelling clone after clone thinning the crowd as time passed. Her and I watched while just thinking about the past day and morning, how someone like him, a complete stranger can just come into her life like this. She liked it, she won't lie, but it seemed a little off to her. Shrugging it off for later she watches as he dispels the last clone and cuts Chakra off to his feet, letting him drop down into the water, making a large splash. Hanada was odd, as was Sharon, to a higher degree. Shino actually looked impressed, which was impressive in itself. Her and I seemed to just smile, and enjoy the show he put on, slightly amazed at his skill level. Standing them all up Kurinai leads them closer to the river bank. No one saw him come up and just sat, waiting. After a few minutes Kurinai decides she's worried enough and walks out onto the water herself to look for him, mistake one. Once she got to the center of the lake Naruto jumped up tackling her into the water and letting their bodies fall together deep under the surface. Grinning as she opened her eyes Naruto took this moment to add wind chakra around them, letting the water be pushed away and a bubble of air forced down around them. Naruto that wasn't funny. Her and I turned to see Naruto giggling and glared at him. Stopping the giggles, Naruto went up and embraced her, noticing she's soaking wet, but grabs her anyway. Sighing, letting him grab onto her Her and I giggles slightly and leans into him, mistake too. Naruto let the water around them fall as he kissed her gently on the lips as the water pushed them up. Her and I for her part latched onto him to stop from being pushed away and relaxed in his kiss, last mistake. Naruto let them float up as the water broke and let air rush to them, telling them they hit the surface. Her and I shivered and pulled him in closer as he broke the kiss. Taking in the scene before him, Shino couldn't be more surprised. Looking over, he takes notice that Hinata and Sharon also noticed. Glancing back, he could see Kiba, across the lake, walking Akamaru and taking note of the scene also. Looking back at the lake he sees Naruto, holding on to his sensei while she clings to him, both soaking wet. They just ended the kiss and he could see his sensei close her eyes in content. Naruto smiles slightly while closing his eyes. Shino can see that they're both happy with each other. Taking a moment, Shino pulls out a camera and takes a picture, seeing as how the sun is reflecting off the water, just enough to make the scene look serene and peaceful. Hanada just sat down by Shino when the water exploded outwards, raining drops along her and the other genin. Looking up she saw her sensei and Naruto, kissing. Taking the decency to blush, she couldn't look away, the water glistening on them and the sunlight reflecting from the drops made it look gorgeous. Her eyes wouldn't move away from her sensei, watching her kiss the man that helped them defeat an A-ranked missing nin and his apprentice. She's so lucky, Hanada thought to herself and sighed, wanting someone like that for herself. Sharon stared taking in the sight, more than a little confused. Seeing the other team's sensei kissing the man that saved their lives, he seemed nice enough, and she held him tight and didn't let go. Staring, Kiba couldn't take his eyes away from the scene, his sensei, is kissing that guy that helped them. What does he think he's doing? Taking advantage of my sensei like that? Growling in anger, Kiba launched across the water, being one of few not seeing Naruto's sparring arrangement. Touching the water, Kiba initiated Gatsuga, spinning like a whirlwind right towards the one defiling his sensei. Opening his eyes to the splashing of water, and violent waves of air, Naruto notices the tornado coming at him, changing his eyes to a raven's, he can clearly see Kiba inside. Sighing, he performs one-handed seals, creating a hardened wall of water between the two of them. Kiba, unable to turn fast enough slammed into the wall, in which encased him and stopped his movement. By this time Kurinai opened her eyes to the sight of Kiba's head sticking out of a wall of water, which jiggled above the water like jello. Abruptly sighing she shakes her head. Kiba, what are you doing? Almost cutting her off he starts to yell. Sensei he was kissing you. I couldn't let him violate you like that. This causes Naruto to raise an eyebrow, taking this as an alpha wolf looking over his pack. Yes Kiba, he was kissing me, I let him. Kiba looked down slightly shamed. I mean I'm sure it didn't look like he was forcing me, did it? He shook his head at her inquiry. Okay. Well Kiba, if something like this happens again, 
wait, and ask later if it doesn't look forced. He nods again, and Kurnai looks over at the shore seeing the other three genin sitting there, Sharon with a puzzled look, Hinata with her mouth slightly open and blushing, and Shino, looked oddly approving. Well hell, they all know now. No use hiding it I guess. Oh well, would have happened anyway might as well sooner than later. Naruto calmly released Kiba into the cold water, the splash hit Kurenai, reminder her it's cold, and she clutched onto Naruto, who laughed along with everyone on the bank of the lake. Oh funny huh, I'll show you funny Naruto. Grinning Kurenai pushed him under and swam down to him pushing him down as they both spin around, mouths open, if they had air they'd be laughing. Pushing her up, Naruto watches her resurface and try to see him below the rippling plane. Coming up with a plan, Naruto pumps chakra into his feet, as he touches the bottom of the lake. Breaking the face of the water, Kiba takes in air and swims over to the other genin, which Akamaru already ran to and was sitting on Hinata's lap. Grabbing the ledge and hefting himself up, he shakes, showering the others with the water from his clothes and hair. Shino holds up his arm blocking his face, along with Sharon. Hanada was holding Akamaru, who for his part, shook off the water that Kiba put on him, causing her to squeal and jump as the water pelted her. Kurenai watched and smiled at the team as they all laughed it off. She started to swim to the bank, eager to dry off, or snuggle into Naruto's nice, dry, and relaxing cloak. Grinning at the thought she tries pulling herself up to stand on the water. Watching from below as Kurenai gets up onto the plane of water, Naruto pulls down another bubble of air. Noticing she finally got on top of the water, he launches, flying through the water fast enough to leave a trail of emptiness before the water caved in on the tunnel. Grabbing Kurenai on the way up he uses wind chakra to cut air resistance and fly up higher with her in his arms and the speed drying them a bit. The genin watched slightly amazed that he jumped that high, even through the water, and with another person along with him. They watch as he somehow slows his descent and they land in front of the genin, still wet but not as soaked. Grinning Naruto pushes Chakra through his body and the water repels him, pushing off and falling to the ground with a small splash. Doing the same to Kurenai, she notices a very weird sensation. As his Chakra moves through her she feels like the air around her is pushing down on her from every direction, not much but noticeable. Water falls off her as she sighs, the coldness leaving her, goosebumps forming on her exposed skin. Kiba-san, stand please. Kiba looks up and scowls but obeys and waits, as Naruto dispels the water from around his body also. They're better. Naruto smiled at him and Kiba couldn't help but lose his scowl and nod. Kurenai, who was still cold, claimed the cloak as her own and wrapped it around her, oblivious to the chuckling of Shino. Looking up and noticing the time Naruto decides to head up to the house and get the bridge builder to check out the bridge. Alright everyone let's head back to the house and see how the bridge is going, we might be able to leave tomorrow morning. Everyone stood up and stretched, Kurenai keeping the cloak and pulling it away from Naruto when he went to grab it, causing him to smile and turn away, letting her have it much to her delight. Naruto takes point on the walk, with Kurenai to his side. Shino next to Sharon and the last two together, each with their own conversation between each other. Kurenai decides to grab Naruto's hand and entwines her fingers with his. He looks down, then turns his attention to her eyes, and smiles at her before tightening his fingers a little. Smiling Kurenai falls into step with him, and they make their way back to the house with everyone in tow behind them. Shino looks up seeing his sensei grab for Naruto's hand, smiling seeing them both happy especially Kurenai, she was like family, and she's been stressed out lately, with the team and missions, along with Asuma bothering her. Turning he continues the conversation on the Kaikachu bugs with Sharon, who seemed a bit interested in them. Hanada looks up and smiles with a little bit of jealousy but lets it go as she sees her sensei smile, one that was serene. Kiba noticed her grab his hand and just sighed. Turning back to Hanada, he looked around noticing she disappeared. Looking up, he noticed she went up to their sensei. Taking a few extra steps, he weaves himself into the conversation with Shino and Sharon. Kurenai sensei, you seem cheerier than normal. Naruto heard this and grinned, while Kurani blushed and looked over at Hinata. Do I? Getting a nod from Hinata, Kurenai thinks it over. Yay I guess I seem better than normal. And sensei, gaining her attention Hinata continues. 
What about Asuma Sensei? Kurinai flinches ever so slightly, while Naruto mentally sighs, and loosens his grip on her hand a bit. Not going unnoticed by the red-eyed beauty next to him, who also sighs and turns back to her student. Well we were never together, only dated. Even so, he bugged me too much, it got annoying after a while. A date once in a while wasn't so bad, but we never hooked up. Hanada nodded but Kurinai continued, for Naruto's sake. And he'll just have to deal with it somehow I guess, there wasn't much between us, and that wasn't about to grow anytime soon. Raising her hand with Naruto's interweaved in it. Besides, as you can see I think I found someone else, Asuma can do the same. Kurinai didn't once look at Naruto, besides his hand of course. Hanada smiled. She made her sensei explain that specifically so Naruto wouldn't be too caught off guard when they go to the village. Moving back, she enters the confrontation with the other genin. Kurinai looked up at Naruto and saw his face start to soften slightly, as it had hardened when he heard about Asuma. Did he think I was using him? Tightening her fingers around his hand, she felt him do that same, albeit not as much as she did. Looking forward Naruto notices the house come into view. Gently he pulls his hand away from hers, but she tightens her grip on his. When he looks she shakes her head while opening the door and letting the genin in first. Following the genin she pulls the boy attached to her hand along with her and he shuts the door behind him. Entering he kitchen no one was inside, the team moves into the living room where everyone is seated. Tsunami and Tazuna are in the same places as before, relaxing and watching the rest of them. Kakashi is sitting in a chair reading his porn as normal. Sakura is next to Sasuke on the floor, Sasuke looking at a scroll, and Sakura reading a book she brought along with her. All is quiet until Kurinai and the genin walk in chatting along with one another. Tsunami looks up and sees the two holding hands and smiles. Hey old man, let's go check the bridge, see if you want anything else done with it, or if it's finished. Naruto announces and watches as all eyes turn to him. Tazuna stands up and stretches as Kakashi, Sasuke, and Sakura keep staring. Eyes travel down his arm, to his hand. Connected to Kurinai, Kakashi blinked and along with his students followed the arm up to Kurinai. Who looked a bit uncomfortable but otherwise fine. They noticed the cloak she wore and how she seemed more relaxed. Kakashi dropped his porn, Sasuke dropped his jaw, and Sakura just stared. The Ice Queen, is with him. I mean he is Minato's son, but, oh whatever. Kakashi picked his book up and continues his read. He, he got someone like her. Gritting his teeth Sasuke scowls. How, how is he so powerful, how can he get what he wants? Damn it I'm an Uchiha I deserve to get what I want. He's with Kurinai sensei now. Does that mean he's better than Sasuke? She thinks on this for a bit and shrugs going back to reading. Yay let's go check the bridge brat. Tazuna smiles and follows Naruto out of the house, along with Kurinai and Kakashi, who told the genin to stay behind as they'd be back in a few. On the way Kakashi read his porn and Tazuna was talking with Naruto about visiting once in a while if he could. Kurinai was watching ahead as the clones seemed to be finishing up. Hanada lays down on the chair Tazuna had and notices it was still warm, grabs a blanket and snuggles up. Kiba and Akamaru take to the floor on a blanket and the puppy curls up next to the boy. Shino sits down by Tsunami's feet and converses with his bugs in low buzzing noises. Sharon takes a seat by his teammates and pulls out a scroll he got when he was younger, reading up on his bloodline and sighing at how he doesn't have it yet. Sasuke drops his scroll and looks up. What happened out there when you guys were out? Shino was the first to respond. Not that it matters, we trained a bit and had a nice walk, along with a relaxing rest. Sasuke looks over at him and scowls. Yay, well you must have seen him train, what did he do? Sharon takes his chance to speak up. From what we could see, created a few hundred clones and had an all-out brawl, them versus him. On top of water no less, he then took a dip in the lake. Continuing his reading, he could feel Sasuke's gaze on his skull. What? Sasuke could do that no problem, he's nothing special. Sakura offers her two cents, and almost everyone glared at her. Well then he also grabbed Kurinai sensei and they both seemed to have a good time underwater, evidence from their laughing. Hanada commented and Sasuke swiveled to her. He's one hell of a guy, 
Stop me dead in my Gatsuga, one-handed seals no less. Long as he takes care of her I don't mind him with our sensei. Hiba smiles at this and Sasuke turns to him, growling. He can't be that strong, he's not that much older than us. Sasuke fumes and picks up his scroll, intent on figuring out this jutsu before they left. Tsunami picks up a book that Naruto seemed to have dropped before they left to train earlier. She opens it to the inside cover and notices it's a bingo book for Iwa, Kumo, Aim, Kusa and Kiri. Everyone in this book is in all of the others, and have a huge bounty on their heads. Turning to a bookmarked page she looks at it, and almost drops the book, catching herself at the last moment. There in the picture stood a cold and stoic looking boy, with a cloak and pants, silver with black flames and red trim. Along with two belts, forming an X in front of his pants. Taking the time she started to read the entry. Name. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Alias. Nature's Wrath. Status. Capture or kill on sight, if alone, flee. Description. Blonde, shoulder-length hair. Silver pants with black flames and red trim. Definite whisker marks on face, three on each cheek. Belts crossing over pants, makes X. Black cloak, whirlpool crest holding it closed. Abilities. Seems to be able to use every element, but cannot combine them. Can turn into animals that he has met and studied, or killed. Ninjutsu. High jonin in all categories. Taijutsu. Low jonin. Genjutsu. Mid chunin. Kenjutsu. High Chunin. Fuenjutsu. Mid Jonin. Bounty. 20 million Ryo. Reason. Destroyed three villages with Inkumo. Took out a hunter team in all villages. Took out half of Iwa, no casualties. Son of Yandaimi Hokage of Kanahagakur. Killing the Yandaimi Mizukage. Tsunami couldn't believe it, Naruto. A criminal. Or, was it the other way around? Were the villages the criminals, and Naruto taking care of it? Either way, he helped them, she doesn't care. Closing the book she hides it away from everyone else, and sighs getting another piece of dango. Reaching the bridge, Tazuna looked on in awe, it took him a day to do what his hired help could do in a week. This looks great, I'd say there's only a few things that need to be added, but other than that it's done. Tazuna smiled as he looked over at Naruto, who beamed at the praise. Well tell me what to add and I'll do it while we sleep. Tazuna shakes his head. No sorry Naruto, but this is something I want to do with a few helpers from the village. Grinning Naruto nodded and released all the clones. Kurinai took the chance to go to the bridge and look over the edge, down it into the face of the water. So Naruto, you're heading back with us to Konoha correct? Kakashi put his porn back and conversed. Sighing Naruto nods. I suppose it's about time I head back there. If things don't end well I can just leave again. Sparing a glance at Kurinai. Or I'll stay, for one reason or another. Kakashi noticing his glance keeps quiet. That should relieve the Hokage, I'll send a messenger ahead to alert him. Naruto interjects. Actually, keep it a secret I want to surprise the old man myself, if you don't mind Kakashi-san. Shaking his head Kakashi smiles under his mask and looks over the water, seeing the sun starting to set in the reflection. Well the bridge looks great. Coming back from checking the other side. Let's go back home, you probably want some rest and I don't want to be out here long. Tazuna started walking back to the house, and everyone followed in tow. Pulling the door open, everyone dropped off their shoes and went to the living room, which seemed a little crowded, until Tazuna brought in a few more chairs. Kakashi, Kurinai and Naruto taking the chairs, with Sharon taking the last one, leaving Kiba, Sasuke and Sakura on the floor none caring about losing the chairs. Kakashi set his head on his hand and looked over everyone. How about introductions, for the new addition to our group? It will pass some time, maybe we can chat about some, thing. Slowly he stopped noticing everyone staring blankly at him, excluding Naruto who pulled out a scroll and started writing in it, taking a thinking pose every few minutes. Well we could do something more fun, telling stories for example. Like scary stories, or, Kakashi shut up again noticing everyone's eyes now looked dull. Naruto seemed to jump slightly and scribble furiously, gaining a few people's attention. Looking up he sees a few people looking at him. What? Did I disturb your storytelling? 
Grinning he watched as a few scowled and Sakura went far enough to throw her book at him. Mistake. Reflex seemed to be quicker than a book hurled across the room, which was now pinned to the ceiling by a few sanban, two shuriken, and a kanai. With a shuriken holding the book into the wall, and the kanai stabbing into it, and a sanban going through the loophole on that, the rest just made the book a pincushion. Whoops. Keep your things to yourself pinky. Naruto coldly states and goes back finishing up his scroll and setting it away with a smile. Sakura slides up to Sasuke and watches him read, to which amazingly the Uchiha didn't move away, too engrossed in the scroll. Sighing Naruto relaxed more into the chair, slumping and setting his head onto his hand staring out the window across the room. Kakashi pulled out his book and kept reading, a faint blush on his face. Kurinai snuggled into the cloak that she still had on, and seemed to curl into herself on the chair. Tazuna fell asleep on the chair, along with Hinata in hers, and Kiba with Akamaru. Tsunami fell asleep also, curled up with Shino, who was either asleep or very still, and didn't look too uncomfortable. Sharon seemed to be trapped in his book and didn't want to be disturbed. After looking around Naruto looked at the time, and noticed, since they got back from the bridge, that time had flew by. It was almost 10 at night now, and they got back before 7. Time flies when you're staring at people nay. Naruto stood up and popped his neck, back and shoulders, eliciting a sigh from his lips and getting the attention of Kurinai. I think I'm going to bed, for anyone who's awake enough to listen. Turning and walking up the stairs quietly he takes to an empty room, setting up a bed, setting down a pillow and yawning before laying down on the blankets he set. Contrary to what he would normally do, he grabbed a blanket and pulled it over himself just liking the feel of a cloth around him as he slept. Creating a clone to turn the light off, he tried to get comfortable. Unfortunately he couldn't drift to sleep for a while and decided to lay awake staring at the ceiling. Thinking on the last few days, he smiles, he found Kurinai, albeit not really together, he has feeling for her, and hopes she does him. With that thought on his mind he slowly starts to drift to sleep. Naruto Kurinai opened her eyes and watched him go upstairs, seeming to mumble something her sleep-clogged head couldn't quite get. Yawning she sits up and rubs her eyes, unwrapping the cloak and standing up she notices the cold. Shivering she stretches and wraps the cloak back around herself. Slowly but quietly she makes her way upstairs and looks in a few rooms, finding them empty. After getting halfway down, she wonders if he even came upstairs at all. Finally reaching the last few doors, she sees one open a crack, and takes the chance of looking in there before giving up. Looking around on the beds she didn't see him, sighing she started to turn around, and spotted a blob on the ground. Taking a closer look she saw Naruto, and smiled, squatting down and nudging him slightly. Someone just had to wake me up. I was damn near asleep and someone comes up here. Looking at who woke him groggily, he sees Kurinai and lets out a small sigh being as it's her and not someone else. Smiling he sits up. Did you want something Kurinai? She seemed to shift a bit and nod before yawning. Tired. Grinning at her nod. Again. And you wanted to sleep with me here. Another nod. Naruto scoots over allowing her room, but she stands up before she got in. Taking the chance to move the cloak, folding it and setting it on a bed. Naruto could see her goosebumps that accumulated on her legs. Taking a quick walk she turns to the bathroom and changes out of her clothes. Leaving her in her fishnet shirt, with built-in bra, black panties and a pair of shorts over them. Of course she didn't take off the beautiful necklace around her neck. Picking up her clothes she walks back into the room and sets them on the cloak. A slight blush adorned her cheeks as Naruto watched her slide in next to him, her petite body fitting next to his with room to spar on the makeshift bed. Naruto slid down and rested his head on the pillow, allowing her to situate herself as she sees fit, before getting comfortable himself. Kurinai turned around a few times, not getting too comfy, before sliding up to Naruto, and feeling his warmth. Grabbing him around the waist she pulls herself onto him, letting his warmth fill her also. Looking up Naruto blushes slightly seeing her chest slightly push up from her shirt, being as it's pushed against him. Turning his attention to her face she raises an eyebrow at him and giggles when he blushes a bit harder. Laying her head on his chest, she rests an arm across his stomach, letting it rest on his hip, parallel to his waistband. 
her other hand wrapped around under his neck. His arms instinctively went around her, one on her upper back, and the other on her lower back, in the small arch she created by laying on him. Her shirt, he noticed, rose up slightly when she laid on him, so his hand was touching her lower bare back. Smiling Kuranai found a way to look up at him, moving her hand a bit and stroking his whisker marks gently with her thumb and forefinger. Slowly, with increasing volume, he began to purr, and ever so slightly rub against her hand. Giggling Kuranai watched for a few minutes, before yawning and resting her hand back on his waist. In turn, he moves a few strands of hair from her face, and tucked them behind her ear as she closed her crimson eyes with a smile. Good night, Naruto-kun, she mumbled, and Naruto smirked. Good night, Kuranai, she barely noticed how he didn't use a suffix, and was slightly disappointed, for the few seconds it took for her to fall asleep anyway. Naruto smiled and watched her sleep for a little bit before taking to sleep himself and letting it claim him. The only things to be seen were houses, all blue, with a symbol on every house. A fan, half red and half white. Walking through the complex was a small boy, no older than five, blonde-haired, tattered clothing. Leave now, a hushed voice said and the boy quickly spun around, but seeing nothing the boy just kept walking down the streets. Now, you must leave, before anyone sees you, go. The boy spun faster this time, on alert, but nothing was there, just darkness. I can't find a place to keep safe. I need to run. Run or die, and I will not die, not to these people, not the ones in this village, my supposed home. The boy ran deeper into the complex, seeing red dots throughout the area as he runs. The dots seemed to glow as he passed them, they followed him. Launching into a fallen over barn, or shack, the boy huddled into a corner and sat, pulling a dirty cloth over him and watched for a minute before his eyelids shut themselves and he was out. I told you it would be too easy. Fugaku. So you had. So you had. Good work Shubi. Get off to your mission now, leave the rest to me. The smaller one left and tore out of the complex to carry out his mission. Meanwhile the older one, Fugaku, took to bending over the boy. Soon boy, soon. Grabbing the boy he dragged him into a basement of the closest house. Later in the night, few that listened close could hear screams, screams of pure fear and pain. Mostly it was confined in the walls of the complex, but one red-eyes shinobi that wasn't part of the clan, could hear, as she was walking home from dropping her friend off. Wanting to see what it was, but not willing to go into the complex, the woman took to the street that was a faster route to her house. Kuranai woke up with a start, not knowing what she just saw. She was sweating, and breathing hard. Taking a minute she walks to the bathroom and washes her face, letting the cool water drain away the nightmare. Back in the room just feet away Naruto was tossing and turning in his sleep, mouth slightly agape, breathing heavy as pain contorted his face. No, no, what did I do? Struggling the blonde boy couldn't get out of the straps holding him down, no matter how hard he tried the man above him just watched from the window as others were huddled around him. He couldn't see much beside heads around him, he could feel. Oh, he could feel all right, the blades that pierced his chest, his stomach, one in each leg. The wires that cut at his wrists and ankles as he struggled even more ferociously, animal instincts kicking in. The liquid that seemed to slowly drip over and over on the middle of his stomach, the other liquids, that seemed to flow through tubes into his body. He could feel them, as fire in his blood, coursing through his veins. Just finish it, if we can change that ability he holds, maybe we can harness it. As of now, there's little he can do with it, hopefully we can change that, in many different ways. A commanding voice said sternly from above them. Nodding two of the figures in the room took out scalpels and started to cut, started to pour liquids into certain parts of the boy's body. One figure jabbed a rod in the boy's neck, eliciting a scream, and injecting him with a purple-colored fluid. Turning away from the scene, Fugaku looked at a woman in the shadows. I must thank you, for leading the boy here, if there's a way to repay you, I'd gladly help. There's no need, that demon is the blame for my family dying. He deserves it. The woman's eyes glow violet for a second before she disappears. Well, I really must thank you sometime. Kashina. Turning back to the only sounds in the house, he watches as they keep cutting and injecting the boy. They boy looked up. 
only seeing one thing, the deep red eyes that seemed to pierce his very soul, three black tomos spinning in each eye. Naruto shoots up from the spot he was laying, sweating profusely, more than his workouts gave him. Leaning his elbow on his knee, he rests his face in his hand. Why now? Why this? Why? Naruto looks up, amethyst eyes bloodshot, taking in the room. Sighing heavily he drops back and lands with a thud onto the pillows he set. The thud was enough for Kurenai to hurry back, she left the bathroom already. Speeding up she turns into the doorway, light hitting her face lightly as the moon shines. Naruto looks at the sound and stiffens quite a bit, seeing red eyes, not the fact they were almost pure red, but they were the same color. Quicker than she could blink, Naruto was up and in a defensive position, Kanai out and ready to strike. Raising her hands she kneels on the floor, telling him she surrenders. Wah! What's going on? Why is he acting like this all of a sudden? Kurenai thinks slowly as she stares at the man, eyes betraying anything she saw before, promising death. Nah, Naruto, please, put the kanai down, she spoke slowly trying to get him to listen. After a few seconds, his eyes widen, more and more until he shakily drops to the floor, tossing his kanai back into the wall. Walking on his knees, he slowly moves towards her. Grabbing her face tenderly with one hand he gasps, and pulls her into a hug she was completely not ready for, pulling her to him. Fast enough that they spun and Kurenai landed on her back his face on her stomach as he grips at her shirt. She could distinctly make out him saying, I'm sorry, slowly a few times, in a hushed voice. He seems so fragile right now. Slowly she grasped him and pulls him close, letting him know it's okay, he fell asleep that night faster than any other night in his life. Keeping herself up for a while longer she ponders what just happened, silently swearing to figure it out later she slides the blanket up, taking a glance at the kanai in the wall, and falls asleep with the blonde boy on top of her. Waking the next morning, Naruto found himself more comfortable than normal, his pillow slowly moving rhythmically up and down. Not wanting to open his eyes, he tries to remember the night before. After a few minutes he remembered, his fear, his hate, the fear in Kurenai's eyes. Looking up he finally opens his eyes, finding out just where his face was. Slowly, very slowly, Naruto tried to move away from the woman under him, who pulls him back, as her arms are around his back, fingers entwined cutting off his escape. Naruto sighs, his head rests on her shoulder, face pressed against her breast. Moving his hand up he grasps her face gently moving a few strands of hair out of her face and stroking her cheek softly. He could distinctly see her head move ever so slightly to his touch. Nuzzling. Very cute Kurenai, very cute. Naruto laid his other hand across her toned stomach, holding her hip. After moving his hand away from her face he gently nuzzles into her neck. The sweet smell of roses, along with her scent, is intoxicating. Hesitantly he kisses her neck once on her jaw, and another on her cheek. Feeling him move around and try to get up Kurenai quickly pulls him down, fighting down her blush she keeps up the act of sleeping. Unknowingly she began nuzzling into his hand as he stroked her. Holding back a shiver as his hand moves to her hip across her stomach, she wonders how her shirt rode up above her belly button. Shaking it off she feels him pull his hand back and fights back another shiver as he nuzzles her neck, his breath streaming across her skin. Goosebumps slither across her arms and neck as he kisses it, moving up to her jaw. After kissing her cheek he seems to disappear for a minute before she feels his breath on her ear. Good morning Kurenai, Chan, enjoying yourself. Quietly he whispered in her ear, causing her to stiffen and blush. Opening her eyes she down at him, head still resting on her upper and shoulder. Yes, I am actually, very much so. Smiling down she watched him try to sit up. Futile as she pulled him back down, causing him to blush feeling her touch more of his face. Looking down she noticed the built-in bra of her shirt was in its proper place, so she didn't say much, just blushed at the feel of his head pressed against it. You're cute when you blush Kurenai, Chan. Kurenai for her part sat up and pushed him down making him into her pillow. Tossing her leg over his, her waist at his knees, she rests her chin on his chest, staring into his eyes. What? Don't like calling someone something so affectionate. I'm just not used to it I guess. 
Never had someone to be affectionate with. Naruto smiled and stroked her hair as she laid her cheek against his chest. But for you, I think I can make an exception to that. Naruto could feel her smile against his chest. That's good. Pulling the blanket over them more, Kurenai rests a hand on Naruto's shoulder, pulling herself up a bit, head now resting in the crook of his neck. Wrapping an arm around her, he contemplated laying here all day, not wanting to get up. Kurenai sighed, letting herself relax as much as possible, feeling his heat flow throughout the blanket. Closing her eyes, she takes in his scent and breathes deeply, feeling his arms slide around her back tighter. Naruto smiled, seemingly taking to her idea, and closed his eyes also, while letting one hand slide through her hair, gently entangling it. Not many were up in the morning, Tsunami noted, wondering where the whirlpool and Rose are. She noticed that, along with everyone sleeping in the living room, there was two missing, and the doors stayed shut, the windows shut, it could mean only one thing, they took a room. Tsunami did one of the few things she could that morning, went out, grabbed some food, and came home to cook it. Deciding to try and pay him back for the meal, Tsunami made another breakfast, slightly different than the one she made the other morning, holding it all on a tray, she took to the stairs, trying to find the room they were in. A sigh could be heard, followed by, Kurenai-chan, I must be lucky to find someone like you. That was Naruto. She made her way down the hall and cracked open the door, seeing Naruto staring at the ceiling with the raven-haired rose on his chest. Knocking softly, Naruto looked up and pushed a finger to his lips, letting a small hushed hiss breathe out. Tsunami smiles and walks in setting the food down. Kneeling next to him she takes a look at Kurenai and couldn't help but be a bit jealous. I just wanted to thank you for the money you gave us, and that breakfast, it was delicious. She whispered to him. Nodding with a smile, he pulls a bit of hair from Kurenai's face and rests it over her shoulder, letting her neck show, along with the chain of her necklace. It's nothing really, I'm returning most of the money, in fact, grab my cloak, and I'll give it to you now. Tsunami would have, but she was entranced by Kurenai's necklace. Following her gaze, Naruto grinned when he saw the necklace. Not too big, he noted. Yay, sorry Tsunami, but that was the only thing I wanted to keep from the raid on Gato's hideout. Tsunami just nodded and absently grabbed the cloak handing it to him, who proceeded to take out the scrolls, and open them up. Money, jewelry, documents, bank statements, and more dropped out, falling into neat piles, sorted by the scrolls. Tsunami picks up a few things and dropped them thinking she was crazy for seeing it all. Turning to Naruto he nodded. Yes it's all yours to do with, give to the village and help prosper. Tsunami had a few tears in her eyes at this and said a very quiet, thank you. Naruto smiled and nodded again at her, grasping Kurenai lightly, running his fingers through her silk-like hair. Tsunami grabbed a bucket and put it all in there hesitantly, and put the bucket in the corner. Sliding around Karenia, she hugged Naruto. Pulling back she stood up with a renewed look on how the village was going to be. You should eat before it gets cold, come downstairs when you're done. Actually, I think me and Kurenai are going to stay up here, it's quiet, and we won't have to move. His grin grew as he talked about being lazy. You're welcome to come back up and chat though whenever you want to, just come knock. Smiling Tsunami nodded and walked back downstairs letting the door click behind her. Hey Rose. No reply. Come on Kurenai-chan wake up, food's here. Again no reaction. Smiling he let her slumber, gently grabbing the pendant and taking a better look at it. Just as he lifted it up from under her chest, her hand shot up and grabbed at his wrist, looking up her tired eyes find his and she releases his wrist blushing. What was that? I try to wake you and you're blocking me out, I grab at your necklace, and you attack me. Grinning Naruto lets her sit up, adjusting her shirt a bit, leaving the hem above her belly button, exposing her toned stomach. Yawning, Kurenai stretches one arm above her and uses her free hand to cover her mouth. Naruto grins at her. What? Oh nothing nothing. We should eat. Naruto gestures to the food, grabbing some and handing them to Kurenai and taking a mouthful himself. No, no nothing, what was it? Kurenai set her food down, noticing Naruto somehow finished half his meal already. Swallowing Naruto responded, nothing at all Rose, now eat. 
Smiling at her he watches her pout and grab some food. While he himself finishes up his meal, and grabs some tea. I wonder what it's going to be like, being back there again. Slowly he sips his tea, mind being occupied. Looking up he couldn't help but smile. She's great, gorgeous, nice, caring, and she knows about me, I'm sure. Her and I just ate mindlessly thinking about finally getting home and telling her friend about this, adventure, she had. I wonder how long it will take before she leaves though. Naruto sighs softly and sips his tea again. Her and I finishes up her meal and grabs her tea, also taking sips of it. Setting down her tea, she grabs his and sets it next to hers. Pulling his arms apart she slides in between his legs, back to chest, and pulls his arms around her petite form. Smiling he pulls her tighter and goes to grab his tea. Um, Kurenai-chan, which one is yours? Hum, I'm, not sure actually. Kurenai stared at the cups, identical designs, and close to the same amount of tea left in each. Shrugging Kurenai grabs one, which happened to be Naruto's. Oh well I'll take this one. Taking a sip she could taste a slight sweet but spicy taste on the glass. Naruto shrugs and grabs the cup, tasting sweetness on the rim. I think you took mine, Kurenai chan Yay. Oh well. Kurenai sticks her tongue out for a sec and takes another sip, taking in his taste. Naruto chuckles and takes another sip, looking out the window, and seeing the sun rays. Staring blankly along with him, they both watch as the sky sifts through colors, finally revealing the sun peeking out over the trees. Setting down his empty cup, Naruto wraps his other arm around her midriff, holding her hips, and her back against him. Anyone seen Kurenai and Naruto yet this morning? Kiba asked the table, which held everyone but Tsunami who was laying down in the living room reading a book. Everyone shook their head, and Shino decided to go look for them, excusing himself and walking up the stairs first. Taking a look in a few rooms, he couldn't find them, then strode to the back, started there and going to the stairs. The first and second doors were empty, the third door he opened, contained the two he was searching for. Naruto's face was slightly in her hair, cheek on her head, staring out the window across the room. Her and I, holding her cup of tea, looked over at Shino and smiled, motioning for him to join them. Nodding and sitting next to the two, Shino looked out the window, taking in the gorgeous scene that they were watching. Everyone was wondering where you were, we'll be leaving in an hour, if you were wondering. Her and I nodded and Naruto, he noticed, looked a bit dazed. Yay that's fine Shino, thank you. Would you like to stay up here for a while? Naruto politely commented. That would be nice thank you. Shino led a few kaikachu bugs out to stretch their wings. Destruction bugs. Very useful. I've seen another clan like yours Shino, but not with them. Gaining the other two occupants attention Naruto looked at the two sets of eyes. What? There's other clans with insects in them. Of course, you didn't think you were the only clan. No, I've seen bees, and spiders also. Shino nodded and watched his bugs take about the window before coming back and sliding into their shelter. I'm surprised you're not freaked out by this Naruto, everyone else usually is. Well it just doesn't bother me, you're just like Kiba and his dog, companions, and they're like tools, living tools that can think on their own and follow you. They would be a great asset if anyone were to take the time and think about it thoroughly. Kurenai smiled when she saw Shino's face light up a bit at Naruto's compliment. Just saying something so simple, and he made Shino perk up, that's incredible. Though Shino, I did find a flaw in your clan, you rely on your bugs too much, just like every clan on their bloodline. The Uchiha, and Hyuga with their eyes are great examples. The Inazuka are good, but without their companions not many jutsu can be used. The Akamaiki, they eat a lot making them too slow, even if they use that to their advantage. The Nara, in direct sun with no shadow, are useless, and they have no taijutsu for them. The lesser clans though, without actual bloodlines, concentrate more on their own work and power not that gained by blood, but by sweat. Shino nodded slowly, while Kurenai was stunned. He was right, they all did have flaws, and so easily identified too. Grabbing the trays, Shino got up. Thank you, Naruto, I'll consider trying to find an alternative for that problem in my clan, if you would help me sometime I would appreciate it. 
Naruto just smiled and nodded, seeing the Abarame nod and walk out with a warning of a half hour left. Kurinai sighed, not wanting to get up. Reluctantly she tore from his embrace and stretched her muscles, popping bones around her body, unknowingly making her shirt raise more. Giving Naruto a nice view of her back and firm butt as her legs stretched out, on her tiptoes. Kurinai yawned again and went to grab her clothes. Naruto intercepted her and gently pushed her against a wall, taking the time to kiss her sensually. Taking the chance she caressed his cheeks and wrapped a hand around his neck pulling him closer. Naruto pulled his hands from her shoulders, letting one rest on her neck and the other on her hip. Kurinai opened her mouth biting down on his like gently, giving him a sultry smirk before pushing him away with a last quick kiss and getting her clothes. Growling he chased her down the hall until she closed the bathroom door in his face, giggling the whole way. Naruto playfully growled again before going to grab his cloak. Kurinai came out, and strode to the room where they were laying, seeing Naruto looking over his belts and cloak. Hey we're about, hey we're about. Naruto and Kurinai appeared, in a swirl of wind and rose petals respectively. To leave, Sakura stared at them as they walked up to the front of the group, Naruto not even sparing her a glance. Well we should be going as soon as possible. We need to report the mission and get ready for anything else the Hokage may want us to do. Tazuna nodded at Kakashi and decided to take a stroll with them to the bridge, grabbing a book on the table. Tsunami and Inari wandered after them. As they walked down the streets, everyone got waves and cheers, Naruto got more so than the rest. This unnerved the Uchiha quite a bit, along with the Pinket. Arriving at the bridge, there was a cloaked item huge, about the size of a couple of fridges bunched together. This is our memento to you all for helping us. Tazuna grabbed the cloth and pulled, revealing a statue of Naruto holding Kurinai, along with Kakashi next to them. The genin were all seen slightly behind them all. Under the statue was an engraving, and it read, To those that helped save this village, and a memorial to the completion of this bridge, and the lifting of Gato's curse. Sharigan Kakashi, Genjutsu Mistress Kurinai, Hayuga Hanada, Inazuka Kiba, Abarame Shino, Uchisa Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, and Turumi Sharan. Lastly thanks to nature's wrath, Naruto Namikaze, for freeing us from Gato, and restoring this village to its prosperous past. Everyone gawked at the statue, how they made this in just one night they'll never know. Even so, they were all more curious about Naruto's alias, nature's wrath. Turning to Naruto Kurinai and Kakashi stared at him, silently questioning him. Tazuna came up and gave Naruto his bingo book back. You dropped this a while ago, that's how we got your alias, Tsunami wanted it to be added. Naruto nodded and handed the book to Kurinai and Kakashi, opening the book to the bookmark. I'll explain more later, in the village, if you wish. Both Jonan were awed by his status in the bingo book, blinked and nodded, handing it back to him who put it in his pouch. Deciding Kurinai might not want him around he thought up a plan. I'll go search ahead for anything suspicious, I'll meet you all before the forest of Kana. Before anyone could say anything he was gone, along with a gust of wind that messed up everyone's hair, even Kakashi's gravity-denying hair. Which was still gravity-defying, it was just slightly more, sideways than before. Nothing exciting happened along the way, the two teams saw a few odd arrangements, most likely by Naruto running by. Nothing to be concerned with, yet. A few dead animals, seemed to be vicious looking. Kakashi had the distinct feeling of being watched but couldn't place which direction to look, so he just left it, no confrontation, no retaliation. Kurinai had been thinking over the, nature's wrath, and who he is to her. How she had relaxed and let him in after such a short time. No one had been able to do that before, not that easily, or at all. Idly she wondered what would happen when they got back to the village, with Asuma and the Hokage, with her friend Anko, or the rest of the teams. Shino was simply contemplating how Naruto was reacting to him, seemingly a great friend. He soon just turned to his bugs and conversed with low buzzes, which got a few weird looks and one, freak, look. Sasuke stayed brooding about Naruto. The rest, just walked not really talking and taking in the scenery, it was a nice peaceful morning. While enjoying a comfortable walk, Shino allowed his bugs free roam, and Kiba allowed Akamaru the time to run around before getting into the walls of the village again. 
After what seemed like an hour with no sign of Naruto, Hurunai started to wonder where he could have gone off to, while he hadn't left his cloak, she could still smell his scent on her clothes, on her skin. The forest started to thin and on the edge they saw, what appeared to be, a pure black panther, which seemed to be waiting for them on its haunches. Nine foxes swarm around it, as if living fire. When the two teams came into view the panther didn't seem the least bit phased, the foxes on the other hand, acted lividly, causing the whole party to halt. The glowing eyes of the foxes take to each of them, caution evident within them, the will to fight noticeable. Kuranai was the only one to keep walking, the foxes began to growl softly, until the panther silenced them by picking up a paw and letting it fall, a dust cloud poofing up. Hesitant from the growls, Kuranai didn't stop, just slowed and knelt, slowing her pace and slid up to the panther, smelling an intoxicating aroma. Smiling she pet the panther, who in turn stayed still, but a small smile could be seen. The foxes seemed to dissipate into red smoke and disperse into the wind. Standing the panther kept up with Kuranai, who was joined by the others. Soon the teams, plus Wild Cat, all find themselves up at the gate entrance, Azumo and Katetsu guarding the gate as normal. Procedural, what's your business? Azumo asks without a care really, just eyeing the panther that Kuranai is petting, it's huge, up to her belly button while on all fours. Staring up with an amused animal smile, the panther notes Azumo looking at him. Just back from wave, mission successful C rank turned into an A rank with the turn of. Kakashi looked back to see Asuma's team walk up, after finishing a mission just outside the village. Ah, Kuranai, Kakashi, good to see you. The chain smoker just pulled out another cigarette and lit it taking a drag. Mission went well I see. Asuma drawled off, taking in the look of Kuranai, along with the panther that seemed to be staring back at him. Taking a surprised step back he clears his throat. Well, Team 10 back from a mission to find Tora. The two teams groaned and the panther seemed to sweat drop at this. Kuranai you're looking lovely, something seems different about you today. Asuma smiled a friendly smile. Too friendly, Kuranai could feel the panther start to get agitated. Yes well, thank you. Turning to the guards she made a show of standing up straight and moving her hair, showing the pendant, making sure Asuma saw it before continuing. Can we go in now? We must report to the Hokage. Yes of course, sorry. Katetsu smiled and opened the gate with Azumo, letting the three teams in. Shikimaru took the time to study the panther. Dot for all of three seconds. The cat in his hands was the main problem. Choji barely glanced at it leaving the fact that if he didn't disturb it, maybe he would be fine. Eno, couldn't take her eyes off of it, the sun glinting off its fur, and a foreign animal she hasn't seen much of, especially in person. She blinked and looked away when she felt the awkwardness of its purple feral eyes, staring back, as if into her soul. She shivered, not liking the idea and fell in step with the other teams and her sensei. So, her and I, how was the mission besides successful? Asuma attempted conversation with the Raven Rose. It was interesting to say the least. Noting she looked down at the panther as she was talking, he glanced at it to watch it look around the city. That's a, uh, nice cat you got there. When did you come by it? More like why the hell did it stay? Taking out a cigarette he lights it up, taking a drag and exhaling loudly. Just, on the road, it was following us and so I took it in. Smiling down at the panther she rested a hand on its head. No one objected to this, Sakura seemed about to but Sharon stopped her. Taking note of how she cringed at the smell of the tar-inducing smoke, the panther grinned, noting a rock in its path. A few seconds later it snapped its back paw, barely noticeable, and shot the rock up, hitting the cigarette and sending it into the air. First all was good, walking with the woman he was trying to date, smoking a cigarette, life's good. All of a sudden his cigarette is knocked into the air by an invisible force, sent spinning out of control and landed on the ground, where a civilian walked on it without notice. The hell, Kuranai noticed the exchange and had to try to help herself from laughing. After composing herself she turned back. What's wrong Asuma? Motioning to his mouth, index and middle fingers slightly open in a, b, shape, he slightly pouted, hoping it was a fluke, he grabbed another and lit it only to find the lighter didn't work, using a small bit of fire manipulation, he lit it and took another drag. 
The panther used a bit of wind manipulation and knocked it out from his mouth, shredding it with a flick of its tail. Now Asuma wasn't one to get angry fast, but his cigarettes are his outlet for stress, take them away and he's a ticking time bomb. Quickly he took another one out and lit it taking a drag and pulling it from his lips instead of keeping it there. Look mommy. That's a big kitty. Can I go pet it? Can I? Can I? Without waiting the child ran up and went to touch the panther, who used the dust with earth manipulation to cut out the oxygen for the cigarette. Growling softly the panther stared at the kid for a second. Uh, hold on, you need to show respect for the panther, they hold pride almost like the lions do, so ask him first and be respectful. Kurinai quickly interjected as the group stopped, taking in the scene, everyone in team 10 tense, and the others looking curiously. Oh, I'm sorry kitty, may I please pet you? The child held its hand out and let the panther sniff it, putting up the act. I'm so sorry, he got out of my sight, Kugi you know not to run off like that, and be careful. The mother scolded her son, worried for his safety with the panther. Looking up apathetically, the panther nudged the boy's hand softly, letting him know it's fine. With a small squeal the boy set out to petting the cat, scratching behind its ears, and giggling when it purred. Come on Kuro, we need to go. Kuranai's voice split the air, the giggling stopped but the smiling boy waved at them as they left to the Hokage's office. The panther looked up and gave the equivalent of an raised eyebrow, to which Kuranai used seals to answer. Just needed a name. Don't worry Kuro it won't stick. Maybe. Kuranai mentally smiled and laid a hand on the cat's head. The panther just snorted and kept in stride as they walked into and through the halls of the building. Team 7 and 8, mission to wave, the Hokage is expecting us. Kuranai spoke to the secretary who nodded and gave the big cat an odd look. Team 10. Mission to catch Tora, the Hokage is also expecting us. The secretary nodded again and let them through. Kakashi knocked and heard a low, enter, then opened the door. Walking into the top room of the tower, where the leader sat, they all stood at attention, even the panther sat slightly straighter on its haunches. The Hokage merely glanced at the panther and raised his eyebrow at the show of respect from the wild animal, that is before it jumped on his couch and laid down. Hanada looked at the panther and giggled, taking a seat by it and running her fingers through its fur. To which Kuranai glanced back at her, reminding her of where they were. Sitting up straighter, Hanada kept petting the panther, but looked more professional. Okay. Well first is first, report, in ascending order. The Sandame ordered and packed his pipe with tobacco. Team 7, led by Hitaki Kakashi, mission successful, we encountered an A-ranked missing nin. Zabuza Momochi, and his apprentice Haku. Turning the mission form C to a rank, and are told to be paid as soon as they regain control from Gato, who took over and dropped the country into poverty. Kakashi spoke fluid and calm. Team 8, led by Yuhi Kuranai, mission successful, accompanied Team 7, led by Hitaki Kakashi. Stated quickly but calm, knowing everything was said, except one, and that was a surprise for the old man. Team 10, Led by Serutobi Asuma, mission successful, Tora was caught on the edge of the forest of death. Grabbing the cat he hands it to the daimyo's wife, who was waiting the whole time, and crushed it into her chest. Legs could be seen flailing around, along with a tail, pinned straight. That's what you get kitty. The panther thought idly watching the poor cat suffocate. Very good, you're all dismissed, team 7 and 8, you may have a few days off after your first C rank mission. Team 10 I will see you sometime tomorrow I'm assuming. Getting a nod from his son, the Sandame took a good long drag from his pipe as Team 10 left, along with Kiba, Sasuke, Sakura, Shino, and Sharon. After the door clicked the Sandame addressed the rest in the room. I'm assuming you're all here for a reason right? What is it? Asking professionally he took a few more drags. What happened to the old man that used to run this village? This Serutobi seems to be more cold, withdrawn almost. Within the span it took for the man to turn and look out the window, Naruto seemed to appear and took the place of the panther, in which Kuranai took the seat next to him. Hanada scratching behind his ears, and his arm around Kuranai's waist. It was at this time that Aruka came in the room from the back room, unnoticed by everyone present, to drop off more paperwork. Hey, old man, long time no see. Don't I get a high at least? 
Accompanied in between his small sentences was a low purring sound as Kuranai was stroking his whisker marks gently. A few things happen in only a few seconds, first the Hokage dropped his pipe, and Aruka started to scream at the boy, before the Hokage's shattered pipe made its presence. All eyes turned to the Hokage, watching and waiting for his reaction. Slowly, ever so slowly the professor brought himself to turn around, and just as slowly, his body reacted, first taking a look out of the corner of his eye and gasping. After the first glimpse he spun half-circle as fast as any shinobi could, taking in the boy on the couch, not even noting Kuranai and Hinata. Minato. No, he died that could only mean, oh dear, can it be? N. Naruto. Not believing his eyes, the Sandame slowly crept forward. Yay, it's me, long time no see nay. A smile crept up onto his face as the old man took Kuranai's place with his hand, feeling to see if it's true. I thought that as long as I met up with Kona Hanin, I might as well come visit, or possibly stay. That so far is debatable. After taking a glance at Kuranai mid-sentence, Serutobi finally took notice of her, eyes widening as the Kunoichi blushed deep crimson. And of course, I've missed you old man, it's been a while, I had to come see you at the very least. Nodding the Sandame knew what he meant. If nothing happened between them he would have come anyway, if nothing more than to see an old man like me. Smiling the Sandame nodded again and sat back, more cheerful than anyone has seen him for a good nine years. Well then my boy, what do I owe this pleasure? Kuranai, Kakashi, and Aruka were stumped, the Hokage. Owing pleasure. Just what do these have in common? Just your time old man, nothing more. I may decide to stay, if that's fine with you. Hiruzen couldn't do anything but smile brightly at this. Of course, of course, I will give you your inheritance and you can move in there whenever you feel like it. Of course this means. The Hokage was cut off when his secretary came in, took one look at Naruto and blushed. Don't forget the council meeting you were called to, Hokage, it will be starting in about a half hour. She closed the door after taking another glance at the feral man on the couch. Naruto noticed the Hokage sigh. Old man, what happened to you? You were the Hokage, now you're like, the council's bitch. Everyone gasped at his analogy, but the Hokage knew he was right. I mean come on, they have more power than you now. And it's all cause of your laziness, you forget. This is a shinobi village, not some ransacked civilian place, you own this village, and you control it old man. Everyone was stunned, this, boy had just come in and basically talked down to the Hokage, to which he did nothing back. Aruka stared at the boy, slowly his anger rising. Listen you. Enough Aruka, the boy is right, I have been slacking, and this is my village. The Hokage stopped him swiftly. You are also the god of shinobi, if I remember. You lived through two wars, and you're letting these pansies push you around Serutobi. Naruto continued, calling him by his name. To which the Hokage knew he was serious, his demeanor changed, he sat up on the couch, Kuranai holding onto his arm with hers, Hinata staring at his hand, Kakashi and Aruka dumbfounded. Yes, you are right Naruto, I believe it's time for change, though I may need some help, they do have more power than me. So Naruto Namikaze will you help me with this? Also I would inquire as to how you know about the council and this village so thoroughly after so long. Smirking slightly he answered with, old man, you really think I'd leave and not have at least one spy in the village, if there ever was a chance I'd want to return. They have my specific orders to just get information, nothing more nothing less. Well, turning into Jiraiya already aren't you Naruto? Smiling Serutobi reached over the desk, offering his hand to the boy. Naruto grinned, his old man back, nodding and getting up to shake his hand, Kuranai and Hinata in tow, he bows lightly. I'll be seeing you old man, I presume I will be placed on a genin team. Just tell me which one soon enough. Call me if you need me, I'll arrive. Naruto grinned and grabbed Hinata's hand, leaving in a shunshun of snow, that sparkled before melting into nothing. Kakashi, Aruka, you may leave. I have a meeting to get to. The Hokage grinned and walked out the door, a prideful aura around him. Appearing just outside the building, Naruto let go of both of them and stood facing them. It's been a while since I've been back, how about some nice food? Ichiraku's is great for ramen, I say we go there, anyone else in for it? 
Both women looked at one another and nodded to Naruto. All righty good. Well it's this way so. He grabbed their hands and pulled them towards the restaurant at a normal pace. Kurinai looked over at Hinata, who looked a bit red and had a zoned out look in her eyes. Seems she has a crush on Naruto. This can't end well. Naruto moved the curtains away and sat down with Kurinai next to him, and Hinata on her other side. Oi, old man, three beef ramen. Naruto yelled into the shop. Hey, you can not come in here talking like that. Tiuchi came around the corner and dropped the bowl he was cleaning, which crashed to the floor, shattering into hundreds of pieces. Naruto, he said in a low whisper. Ayame get out here and serve our guest. After some murmuring and shuffling a brunette teen walked out in with a pad and pencil. What can I get for you today? Hum, three miso, two beef, two chicken and some of your cinnamon tea please. A beef for me and some herbal tea. Miso please, with some honey tea. Quickly writing without looking up, Ayame walked to the back and prepared the food. Tiuchi looked after his daughter and knew her depression, though wondered why she didn't look up at the customer. So old man, how's business been around here? Naruto asked, quietly taking Kurinai's hand. Kurinai looked over and saw Hinata grabbing chopsticks for them all. Well, it's been. Tiuchi smiled at him. Not even close to as good as when you were here but it's alright. Taking a quick look he continued. She's been really down since you left, every year she gets like this. He motioned to Ayame who was just finishing the noodles. Here you are. Ayame somberly set down the bowls and took a seat to relax. Itadakimasu. The three said in unison and dug into their food. So Ayame, how have you been? He could see her ears perk up slightly and she just shook her head. I've been alright I guess, I miss my little buddy. Finally she looked up to see who was talking to her. Naruto. Jumping over the counter she hugs him, missing the ramen bowls, they both fell to the floor. Where have you been? Around Ayame. Around. Smiling softly he patted her back as she got up and blushed. Good to see you're back Naruto, you'll have to explain your trip sometime. She got back to work in a much more perkier mood than before, humming a tune. Taking his seat, Naruto glanced at Kurinai and saw her delicately eating her noodles and reading a poster on the far wall. Grabbing his chopsticks he makes his way to finish his ramen, done with a couple bowls in only a few minutes. Sipping at his tea he sighs contently. Seeing Hinata next to him and how she was eating almost identically as her sensei, he couldn't help but glance back at Kurinai, and back to Hinata, shrug, and continue with his delicious noodles. Setting his finally bowl down with a content sigh, he stretches, popping his shoulders and back. Well, taking a quick sip of his tea he notices it's almost gone. It's getting late, I guess I should find a hotel and get Hinata home. Quickly he finishes his tea and pays for the whole meal. Yes, that would be nice thank you Naruto. Hinata couldn't seem to keep her blush down at him being nice. Well then let's get going, Kurinai. Yay, I'll walk her with you, Hiyashi might be waiting at the entrance. Getting up she stretches and finishes her tea. You know Naruto, you never did say where you've been. Hanada takes up initiative to start the conversation. Well, I've kinda just been wandering around, not really set on one place in particular. Though I can foresee the hell that will be raised by staying here. I'm almost positive I'll be called for a council meeting soon enough. Sliding his hands into his pockets he take a comfortable casual pace. Naruto. You get jealous easily don't you? Glancing at Kurinai he grinned. Animalistic possession. I'm not sure just seeing as were. Dating, and you don't seem to like that Asuma guy. I just feel, air protective I guess is the word. Slowly the blush on Kurinai's face rose, and he didn't miss it. He's sweet. I wish I could find someone like that. Hanada thought to herself as she smiled for her sensei. Well I enjoy your protectiveness, just don't go overboard. Kurinai Mok scolded him as they reached the Hyuga estate gates. Hanada Hyuga, where have you been? A cold voice from behind the gates sounded out before they started to open up. I was just at dinner with Kurinai Sensei. Sorry father, I forgot to come tell you first. Hanada was looking a bit paler than normal and Naruto was wondering why. This is her family why does it sound more like he couldn't give a shit about her? You would remember that if you came home after your mission like you said you would. 
I heard from Neji that you were back when he saw you in that filthy ramen stand down the street. Glaring as the gates finally opened, Hiyashi took notice of the new arrival to their group. And who might this be? Hiyashi stared, right into purple steel eyes, bearing a glare right back at the Hayuga head. Hiyashi Hayuga, twin to Hizashi Hayuga, branch member, sent to Kumo as retribution for killing an ambassador. Head of the main branch family, wielder of the Keke Genke, the Bayakugan. Genin team consisted of the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze, and Sum Inazuka. Naruto called off almost in a trance. His cold eyes darted back up to Hiyashi's as they slowly turned into that of a hawk. Hiyashi took a step back and activated his Bayakugan instinctively, taking a look at the boy's eyes as they morphed, chakra seeped into them, then just stopped, as if the transformation was a part of his body that once changed, could sustain itself. Boy, who are you? The head Hayuga states taking a slightly defensive stance, barely noticeable to untrained eyes, not Naruto's hawk eyes, the precise movements he took showed he was ready to strike, or defend at a moment's notice. Smirking Naruto scoffs, why don't you add two and two, you were on his team, he looks like me, I'll give you a hint, he was the Yandaimi. Seeing that Hiyashi took a deliberate step back he continued, still don't know, my mother left me for dead, in the hands of one of the clans. Hiyashi's eyes widened, the shock so great he actually deactivated his Bayakugan. You, I should have noticed by your eyes, you're her child. Minato's son, he could barely wrap his mind around the concept. If you were left with a clan and lived, you must have gotten away, meaning it had to be a clan that was either too nice, or... Yes, or wiped out, Fugaku wanted me as his test subject, his plaything, so I could become his weapon. Naruto slowly let his eyes change back to his normal red-lined pupil. Hanada couldn't help but gape, her father was just talked down to, and he's not retaliating, on the contrary, he's being civil. She gasped when she heard about the Uchihas and glad for their demise at the hands of the clan prodigy. Kurenai on the other hand, was thinking deeper into the situation. Naruto was held in with Fugaku, used as an experiment, and suddenly out of nowhere Itachi kills them all. It makes no sense, unless of course, Itachi wasn't on his father's side, and on the village's side instead. Which could mean only one of a few things, either he took it into his own hands, or he was ordered to kill them all. Thinking back to the dream she had, she gasped, she was by the Uchiha complex when she heard the screams. Glancing at Naruto, she grabbed his hand gently and moved towards him. Hiyashi did not miss this, he was acutely taking in the situation. His daughter seemed to be infatuated with the boy, who appeared to be with her sensei, this could not end well for his daughter. Yes, well I'm sorry I couldn't do anything back then, I wish I could have but the council stopped everyone's actions to help you. I know, I may have been young but I noticed that much. Naruto growled out, at the council members but Hiyashi couldn't help but flinch. Well I'm assuming you have things to do Namikaze, you've been gone for a long time now. Come Hanada, there's training to be done, and Neji has been waiting in the dojo for a little while now for that match I wanted you to partake in. Taking a sidestep to allow her in he nods to Naruto. Yes father, goodbye Kurenai sensei, Naruto. Smiling back at the two she walks into the gate, dreading what was to come. Watching the gates close Kurenai turns her attention to the teen attached to her arm. Naruto. The past is the past. I'll walk you home and I need to find a hotel for a while. Staring blankly forward, he lets her guide him to her house. Stealing glances at him she worries for him, past or not it still happened to him and could affect him. Naruto feels her eyes glance at him and just sighs inwardly, hoping she doesn't act on her thoughts if they're too far out there. Walking through the park, some kids stared at Naruto, Kurenai giggled when they did. Some had wide eyes, as did their parents, thinking the Yandaimi was back from the dead. Lacing his fingers with hers he feels the nightly wind flutter through his cloak. Seeing a woman with purple hair walking towards them his senses instantly flare up with the smell of snake, stiffening his eyes transform on instinct into tiger's eyes. Kurenai smiles seeing her old friend, but it falters when she feels Naruto stiffen a bit. Hoping he isn't like everyone else, he was through almost the same thing right. Anko was happily eating her dango at her favorite shop. Pulled out the money for her dining and took her last piece to go. 
Walking down the street she decided to walk through the park. It was nice and it always had a good sunset if you sat on the right bench. Munching on her dango she looked past the park to see her friend, Kuranai, walking with some guy, who just put his hood up and laced his fingers in Kuranai's. Slowly she stops as the wind blows past her and she sees Kuranai smile at her. An odd feeling of happiness for her friend but blankness for herself flooded her. Looking to the teen she noticed his eyes shining purple, almost glowing. They seemed to be primal, cat-like slits as they stared at her. Shrugging it off she started walking again, intent on talking with Kuranai for a bit, maybe spending the night at her house like usual. The teen really perplexed her. Kuranai wasn't dating was she? If so where did she meet this one at? Kuranai was on edge. She didn't know what Naruto was thinking, or if instincts alone made him stiffen, but she was worried. Slowly she and Naruto made their way and met up with Anko, though she couldn't shake this paranoid feeling she was getting. Her chan Anko screamed as they got closer together, she came up and hugged the rose right out of Naruto's grasp, surprisingly he didn't growl. How was your mission? She pulled away and let the raven-haired woman answer. Glancing at the unknown boy she answered. It was eventful to say the least, but it was a success. Gato was controlling Wave and we had to get through Zabuza and his apprentice before killing Gato and taking it back. Well that's good then. Anko glanced at Naruto quickly, who caught the glance as he was staring at her. Was wondering about staying at your place tonight, like old times. Yay that's fine, I'm just going to take a shower and relax a bit tonight and for the next few days. Smiling Kuranai took the chance to start walking and noticed they both followed her. She could tell Naruto was still staring at Anko, this discerned her a bit. I believe I should be leaving for my hotel soon enough. Naruto chided as they walked. To which Anko thought his voice was heavenly, and Kuranai was reminded of how he sounded on the bridge. I'd invite you to stay at my house, that is if you don't mind sleeping on a couch. Staring back at him she awaits his answer. Contemplatively he rolls it over in his head a few times. I suppose, I assume I'll also be making breakfast then. Kuranai grinned and turned around. Of course, why wouldn't you make breakfast for two lovely ladies? She noted how he glances at Anko when she said that but grinned wider nonetheless. Just kill the snake bitch. Take her her out, ten seconds, tops. Shut the fuck up, I'm not going to listen to you. Feeling his body start to burn he continued the walk with the two. If you don't I'll make you, human. Growling deeply he feels a major headache coming on. Brat, her master did this to me, to us, get revenge for us. It won't take long, she won't even notice until too late, just drive your blade through her heart. Feeling the burning intensify, his growling starts to raise in volume, still too soft for his companions. If you don't shut up I'm going to going to what? Huh, human, what will you do? Sighing Naruto takes a breath and relaxes his body, pushing the heat back to his stomach. Hearing a loud scream in his head he grins. Serves you right bitch. Grinning to himself as he turned the burning chakra right back. D, damn you, I will get you for this human. Giving no thought to the femininity of the voice, he continues walking with the two. Glancing at the purple-haired Kunoichi he scowls. Still, she smells too much like him, too much snake, setting my instincts off. Shaking his head he rests his hands behind his head and walks on. Glancing worriedly at the boy, Kuranai couldn't help but feel paranoid. He's scowling and grunting, as if somehow internally in pain, and fighting with himself. She notices how he keeps glancing at Anko, and can tell she notices too, if the fidgeting is any indication. Wondering if this was a good idea, she unlocks her door and lets them both in. A small house, with a single bedroom, bath and kitchen. It had a homey feeling every time she opened the door and came in. Well come on in you two, I'll make some tea you two sit in the living room. Motioning to the puffed up pieces of furniture showing how comfy they are. Taking to the two person loveseat, Naruto takes his cloak off and sets it over the armrest. After taking his shoes off he sits and stares out the window his eyes still that of a tiger, red seemed to have seeped into the iris from the edges. Going to the one-person chair across from the loveseat, Anko took her shoes off and coiled her feet under her on the chair. Seeing Naruto glance at her she takes a look, seeing the red start to slowly recede. 
In that instant she was filled with fear, before the red was completely gone, and he looked away back out the window. Wah! What was that? I couldn't move, the killing intent so accurate at me, I'm sure no one else even felt it. Taking the time to examine him she notices how toned her is. Little to no fat at all, all muscle. Oval-like face with six horizontal marks, three on each cheek. His eyes were a deep amethyst, as they changed back to normal a red ring formed around the pupil. Well-built body, toned but not so much to impede movement, the air around him held confidence, pride, and instinct. She shivered, feeling her body react to how he acted and looked. Damn, primal look, instinctive aura, that's damn hot I'm not going to lie to myself, she's fucking lucky. Grinning to herself Anko took to watching her and I hoping she'd hurry. Fidgeting a bit she waits, and waits. Glancing at the door seconds before Kurinai came through, Naruto smiled and took his tea. Kurinai handed Anko her tea and sat next to Naruto for a few reasons, mainly she was straight across from Anko. So tell me how have you been this last month or so Anko? Grinning she sipped her tea. Oh just some assassinations and a few spy missions really, nothing big, the normal, you know how it is. Nodding Kurinai smiled. The only thing out of normal is you coming back with this guy. She motions to Naruto. Other than that nothing's really been going on for me. Taking notice that he didn't even acknowledge her. No glare or even glance, she scowled. Yay. Well it's a long story and, and I'm willing to listen to it. Anko grinned as Kurinai seemed to fluster for a second before discreetly motioning to her neck. That's when Anko saw it for the first time. The necklace, and one thing that wasn't returned to wave. Getting the hint of, later, Anko grinned and nodded. You know Gaki, I seem to recognize you for some reason. Naruto finally looked up at the snake mistress. Is it cause I'm the Yondaimi's son? Naruto said slowly like she was stupid. No no, not that from somewhere else, I can't remember though. Thinking, Anko didn't notice he pulled out a bingo book and threw it at her. Glaring she opened it to the bookmark, and read. Yay. That's where I remember seeing you once before. Damn kid you got a nice bounty on your head. Naruto scoffed. It wasn't that great. Not yet at least. Maybe after letting it come up a bit he can do some things and get the bounty himself. Grinning at his own thoughts he tries to figure out how. Zoning everything else out and sipping his tea. Feeling a something slither its way through his arm he looks down seeing Kurinai's hand grasp his arm. Looking up at her. He sees her smile. This is good tea, thank you. He smiled, knowing it's a bit late to say that. Laughing it off Kurinai grins. Thanks, it's a new one I haven't had yet, though I've heard it's good. Glancing at the clock Naruto sees how late it is, once again time flying when doing nothing. Also noting the time Kurinai gets up and stretches, saying how she'd be right back and takes the cups to the kitchen. Anko feeling awkward once again gets up to stretch, eliciting a sigh from her bones. Glanning up Naruto couldn't help but notice just how little she was wearing, that being, just a fishnet under the trench coat. Needless to say he got a good eye full of her breasts, and raised an eyebrow at her while she grins at him. Like what you see Gaki. More like wondering how the hell you can fight or run without those causing some sort of discomfort or getting in the way. Naruto grins as she scowls at him. Wait a minute, was that a compliment? Or are you just fucking with me? Anko glares. Does it matter? Statement which ended the quarrel as Kurinai came back. Well it's getting late and I'm heading to bed. Naruto noticed she was just in her fishnet and shorts again. Remember Naruto, you're making breakfast. Yay yay, whatever. Smiling Naruto stood up and went over to the couch. Might as well try to sleep then nay. Kurinai quickly grabbed him a blanket and pillow. If you need these, I'll set them at the foot of the couch. Seeing him nod she leans down. Make a big breakfast K Naruto. Smiling she kisses him quickly and sets off to the bedroom, Anko hot on her heels. Going to girl chat probably, she knows I don't need these right. No sense letting them just sit there. Grabbing the bed dressings he set up a moderate comfy bed and laid down, hands behind his head and let his mind wander. Before the door could even shut Anko was off. Okay Ker Chan I want details, out with it girl. Smiling at her friend. Now whatever do you mean Anko? Grinning she jumps onto her bed, feeling Anko jump after her and tackle her. 
Come on Ker Chan you know what I mean, what's with the Gaki? What's going on between you two? How did it happen? The details. With every question she was bouncing while straddling Ker and I's legs. Okay okay. Calm down Anko, sit down and listen. Anko grinned she loved gossip, whether she could tell someone or not she loved it all the same. Well Anko it isn't much, but we met on the mission, he saved Kakashi and his student Sasuke. Seemingly begrudgingly though, he doesn't like the Uchiha. He got me this necklace when we took down Gato. well he did I took out some guards in the place, we took all the money, documents and jewelry, he gave everything but this back. Showing the necklace off a bit she smiled. That's gorgeous Ker Chan, what's it made of though? Diamond, emerald and ruby he said. Giggling at Anko's reaction. That must be priceless. She grabbed at it and took a closer look. Yay well after that, we stayed out by the lake and I fell asleep leaning on him I guess. He took us into the forest and let me sleep while it, whoa you mean you just fell asleep on him? You won't even talk to most of the men in this village, but you just meet him and sleep on him. Yes I know odd, especially for me. We woke up before the teams and our caretaker made us a special breakfast, soon after that we went to train, well he did I trained the team, how does he train? Is it brutal, or is it casual? Well brutal to you or I but casual for him, I mean unless you go up again 400 clones of yourself as training. Smiling she saw her friend's eyes go wide as she fell and plopped on the bed. Holy shit, Anko bounced back up. He has to have the chakra of a cage or more, and stamina, don't get me started, Uker and I. Blushing deeply at the implications she shook her head. No, Anko we didn't do anything like that. Anko pounced on her again. Oh come on Ker Chan, you can tell me you fucked him didn't you? So long you couldn't stand it. Or was it that he couldn't stand it huh? Anko, we didn't have sex. Huffing Anko got off her. Fine. Can I continue now? She nodded. Good, after that we found out he was nature's wrath, mind you this whole time his clones were fixing and building the bridge. Anko nodded again intrigued. Well the second night he was with us he went upstairs into a room while we all slept downstairs, that is until I woke up and followed him, still sleepy and all. Oh of course, blamed sleep, grinning Anko motioned for her to continue. Rolling her eyes at her friend. Well I slipped into these clothes, motioning to the ones she wore now and slipped into bed with him, I just couldn't seem to get comfy until I laid on him again. Nothing happened I just slid onto him and fell asleep, he's so warm and his scent is intoxicating, mixed together it's just like a natural sleep aid, welcomed or not. She laughs at how she fell asleep a few times unwillingly. You realize how uneventful this is for me right? Anko stared blankly at her. You're the one wanting details on what happened. And nothing good happened. Anko whined. Well, there was that kiss when our caretaker made us breakfast. But you wouldn't like to hear about that. Grinning Kuranai could see her friend brighten up. Come on Kuranai tell me what it was like. Grinning at her friend getting something good for once. Well we made a bet and I lost. I had to do something for him. Anything he wanted. So he told me to close my eyes and he kissed me. At first it was nothing but after a few seconds it was the most intoxicating, best kiss I've ever had. I was breathless by the end and I'm sure I looked higher drunk. Her and I giggled remembering that and the look on Anko's face. Oh come on Anko it can't be that good. You heard his voice right. She nodded. That's only a sample. It was just as good on my lips as his voice to our ears. Anko's eyes widened. If that's anything to go by then it must have been good. Smiling a genuine smile she looked at her friend. Ker Chan I'm happy for you. Closing her eyes with the smile she felt for her friend, she plopped onto the bed again. If that's all then I guess you really didn't have sex, damn and I was thinking you might be holding out on me now. Laughing with Anko she couldn't help but see the time. Come on let's sleep it's getting late and I want to get up and eat some of his breakfast tomorrow as soon as possible. Turning the lights off Kuranai slips under the covers, Anko right behind her. Kuranai laid on her back, being the comfiest position right now. Soon Anko slid up on top of her, cheek resting on her breast, fast asleep in seconds. Smiling Kuranai rested her hand on her friend's hair. Good night Anko. Letting her other hand fall on the snake mistress arm she fell asleep. Hokage-sama. A bear masked Anbu appeared in the room as called. Yes bear. I need you to inform a Naruto Namikaze, 
that he is wanted in the council chambers tomorrow at one o'clock if you will. Pick him up then, you have the rest of the night off. Serutobi smiled. Thank you Hokage-sama, I will inform Namikaze tomorrow, good night sir. Boeing the Anbu left in a swirl of leaves and the Serutobi took a drag from his pipe. Yes, I think tomorrow will go well my friend. Serutobi stares at the picture of the Yandaimi. Sighing Naruto found he couldn't sleep, being back here all he could think about while on the brink of sleep was the Uchiha. The first few times he fell asleep for a few minutes, all he saw were the purple eyes of Ankashina. Glaring, throwing daggers with her eyes, ridding herself of this boy. Why is she always glaring at me? Naruto sighed again and threw of the other, dream, he had while trying to sleep. Somehow he got away, maybe they let him to toy with him, it didn't matter he was hungry, he wanted to get out. More than anything he was scared, he was so scared he couldn't even cry, all his tears wasted in that. Dot lab, as they called it. Move, move, come one legs move faster. Glancing back he saw no one was chasing him and settled down a little bit. Hiding in a bush, he pulled out the only thing he had on him, a rusted kanai. Making his way through the forest on the edge of the complex, he spotted a dog, he thought it was a dog. He didn't care, he wanted food and he was going to eat. Running at the oversized dog, he managed to get the upper hand and plunge his kanai into its back, before it growled and bit his arm. Not even screaming he sliced the animal's stomach open, letting its organs fall out as it bled to death. Sighing he sat down and stabbed the heart ending its life and stated to cut out the organs and skin the animal. Hearing a rustling he looked back, two more managed to come by, that's when he realized these weren't dogs, they were wolves. Always in a pack of only a few. Picking up his kanai he doubted he would make it out, but he'd be damned not to fight back. The two wolves charged in and one bit his leg, pulling him to the ground and it led the way for the kanai to land perfectly into the wolf's heart. Feeling the jaw lax, he tried to stand, shifting his weight on the good leg. The final wolf lunged and Naruto ducked, but caught the wolf's paw on his head, flinging him back and dropping his kanai. Seeing its opportunity, the wolf lunged again and landed on him, arms pinned by its paws. It quickly went for the kill but stopped when the boy's body began releasing pheromones that was related to wolves, and his muscles started to change and contort. Jumping away the wolf watched in morbid fascination as the boy transformed into a wolf himself. Naruto had passed out a bit ago, his body taking a mind of its own thanks to his bloodline. With all the grace of a wolf, Naruto's body lunged and sunk its teeth into the other wolf. Shaking it off the wild wolf snapped at Naruto's front paw, nipping its already bloody wound. Growling Naruto went for the kill, straight to the throat and latched on, shaking his head and throwing the wolf to the ground. Not taking the chance, he sinks his teeth into the wolf, tearing flesh and fur. His bloodline, along with hunger, led with instincts, he tore at the flesh and swallowed greedily, feeding off all three corpses. Shuddering Naruto was glad he passed out, he didn't think he would have been able to do that otherwise, it took a while but he finally got himself cleaned up. I can't believe they still found me though, even while I was inside the tree I dug out. Ugh, can't sleep. Sitting up Naruto went to the bathroom and splashed water on his face. Why do I have this foreboding feeling that something bad will happen soon? Taking his time he went to the kitchen and got a small cup of water, taking it with him to the living room and sat down sipping at it. Looking at the clock he found it to read 3.15. Hours and I still haven't slept, doesn't look like I will, let's see what she has for food, see if I need anything in the morning. Looking in the cupboards and fridge he found he only needed a few things for the dango, and his secret spice to cook with. Good I won't have to get much then. Sitting back at the chair Anko was in before he grabbed a book on her shelf and started to read it. Nagato the gutsy ninja. He couldn't help but feel like he should know what this was about, he felt connected just reading the name of the character. Naruto noticed after flipping to the back, that half the pages were blank, he thumbed the first blank one and read a few more pages, going back and forth between it wondering why it was blank, before words seemed to appear on the pages. What's going on? Is the book made so the ending can't be seen unless you've read it? Reading the newly printed page he noticed how different the character's attitude was from the beginning, 
as if a different author wrote it, or as if the character drastically changed from then to the start. Weird book. Naruto noted and started from the front again, reading on. After a while he was able to reach halfway through the book, and the book seemed to grow as he read, pages just never seemed to end. Taking a break and noting his page Naruto looked at the time, seeing the clock now read 6.30, he decided to go out and buy a few things for breakfast, cracking the window open he jumped out and went to the shopping district. Okay well I need something sweet, a bit of this, and that. Ooh that would taste good. Mentally checking everything off he gets small cart filled up and grabs a flavored water for himself. Getting up to the checkout he pulls out a rounded amount for the supplies as the cashier rings it up. Grinning he finds out he was over by only a few rio and told the cashier to keep the change, after bagging it he quickly left and took out his water, sipping at it and walking back to Kuranai's home. On the road he saw a few people that stared at him awkwardly, he waved and they seemed dazed and waved back. Smiling he capped his water and enjoyed the early morning air. Sasuke Kuen, let's go on a date. He was enjoying it anyway. Looking back he saw the two from Kakashi's team, Sasuke and Sakura. Not wanting to be seen Naruto quickly jumps to the rooftops and speeds up. God, I'd rather play roulette than have to talk to him. Spoiled brat. Jumping down in front of Kuranai's he didn't notice how Hinata seemed to watch him enter the window, as she saw him get out also, her walk to Anne from a store down from her complex. Wonder what he's going to do, maybe I'll visit Kuranai sensei for lunch. Idly thinking as she walked through the gate and nodded to the branch guard. Father had been less strict since seeing Naruto, what's going on with him? Setting down a few supplies she got to work on making breakfast for her and her cousin Neji. Sliding the window shut and setting the groceries on the table he started to put them away, telling himself he'll wake the others with food around 10. Looking at the clock it was only 7.15, taking only 45 minutes to finish his trip. Thanks to that blasted Uchiha. Taking his time he pulls his water back out and heads to the couch, taking a drink and laying down after taking his shoes back off. Sighing for his refreshment he closes his eyes contently, satisfied at how comfy the couch is and how the water slides down his throat. The corner of his eye caught movement in the hallway and instinctively changed to hawk eyes, spying a body in the hallway. Come on out, I can see you. Naruto called uncaring taking another drink. Slowly from the dark Anko emerged from the hallway and sat down in front of Naruto on the floor. Is there something you want? Or are you going to sit there all morning, shouldn't you be asleep? Naruto asks quickly. Maybe I should be but I heard a window open and close up. I was checking on it and saw you awake, shouldn't you be asleep also? Anko remarked. Sighing Naruto takes another drink. Would if I could, but I can't, what do you really have to say snake? Turning his head he stares at her. Flinching she turns away slightly before turning back to him. I wanted to thank you for cheering Kuranai up, she seems less stressed out than normal, and if you're the culprit then thank you. I might be, not sure yet. Taking a drink he continues. I just like seeing her happy, she's gorgeous and as of yet I haven't seen her in a down mood. I guess that means I am the reason she's happier. Yay well, don't let this get to you but thanks Gaki. Standing up Anko kisses his cheek in thanks, and grins wide. Don't let it get to you, but I'll kill ya if you hurt her Gaki. Taking the path back to the bedroom she stops in the hallway. I'm glad to hear she's better, she seems so much better than before the mission. Almost like when I first met her. Retreating to the room she takes her place back on top of Kuranai and falls asleep in seconds. Brat. She, the snake, called me a brat. Issues much. Finishing off his water he sets the bottle next to his shoes and closes his eyes, with nothing left to do he meditates. After so long in his trance he opens an eye to check the time. 9.30, perfect. Stretching and sitting up he yawns quietly and heads to the kitchen. Taking out all the ingredients for the dishes he's about to prepare, he turns the water on letting it warm up. Pulling out seemingly random things, from garlic powder to fish, he sets them all on the counter in the middle of the kitchen. There, got everything but the bread for the dango. Quickly grabbing it, he takes out a few pots and pans, spatulas and spoons, a knife, and a fork. Washing his hands to get ready to cook he starts with the spice. 
Taking a bowl from the cupboard he starts mixing all the seasonings he bought along with a few already in the house. Taking out a scroll he tapped a little bit of a black powder into the mix and churned the powders. Taking a spoon he tests the spice and deems it good enough for breakfast. Heating the oven and filling a pot with water he set a pan on the stove and greased it with a little oil. Turning two burners on he set the water to boil and the pan to heat up while he filleted the fish with the knife, tossing strips into the spice mix and into the pan. Opening a bag of rice he dumps the entire thing into the pot and lets it soften while he tends to some eggs and grabs another pan. To an observer it would look like her was randomly throwing things and getting lucky with how it all turned out. Slowly Naruto started to hum while cracking the eggs and setting them in the pan. Turning the rice down he turns and grabs a pinch of the spice and lets it rain over the pot, mixing up the rice with a spoon. Turning slightly he grabs the spatula and flips the eggs along with the fish. I can see where you are. I can tell you're enjoying it so far. Grabbing the bread he quickly sets it in another pan to darken, grabbing the sweets to mix with the bread. Quote dot dot dot, I would love to escape but now I am bound, by the burn of your eyes looking on as I am starting to realize. Grabbing some peppers and veggies he starts to chop them up and toss them in with the eggs and fish. Taking the spatula and flipping the eggs to simmer a bit more, he tests the rice. Deciding it needed more he starts churning it and pinching spice into it. Grabbing some cheese with one hand he sprinkles it over the pepper-filled eggs and a bit on the fish. Quote dot dot dot, I'm a pawn in your game, and this checkmate. Grabbing some lettuce he drops it with the eggs and turns the burner off, using the spatula to close the eggs, melted cheese holding it together. Taking the pan he sets it on a pad on the counter, grabbing the bread and sweets he mixes them together into larger balls of dango than what he saw the shop sold. Taking another batch of darkened bread he starts making his famous dango. Quote dot dot dot. As the roses lift their heads to catch a glimpse of my demise. Setting all the dango down on a cookie sheet he sets it in the oven to cook a bit before flipping the fish again. Grabbing another pan he grabs a steak that he bought and lets the pan heat up with oil, setting the steak in after cutting the fat off. Turning the burner off he takes the rice and sets it by the omelets. Tending to the steak he pushes the spatula down onto it getting the grease out and flips it. Quote dot dot dot. You'll be throwing lies around like ocean waves throw down the tides. Grabbing the fish he checks both sides and pulls the slices onto an empty plate. Scooping up the peppers and veggies and putting them on the same plate. Using the pan for fish he sets bacon onto it and lets the oil and grease from the fish cook the bacon faster, to a light crisp. Checking back on the steak he presses the grease out and flips it once more, putting spice on both sides, letting it finish darkening the middle. Quote dot dot dot, and they are breaking on my shore, and the rescue team won't save me now, I'm out too far. Taking the dango out of the oven he takes one and cuts it open to test it, perfect. Taste testing it for himself after letting it cool, he sets them on another pad with the other finished food. Grabbing a plate he presses the steak and sets it on the plate putting it with the finished food after double checking it was ready and fat free. Swiftly turning he takes the bacon off the burner and turns all the burners off, along with the oven. Setting the bacon down with everything else he goes into the fridge and grabs some fresh fruit he bought in a bowl. Quote dot dot dot. So I'll waste these nights for a while, but I'll be holding onto you forever. Using the fork to improvise he somehow squeezes the juice from the oranges into a large jug over the sink, after the jug was filled a third of the way he adds a bit of sugar and tastes it. Seeing it too strong he adds a touch of water from the faucet and tastes it again, nodding he sets a lid on the jug and puts it with the food. Taking a lemon he cuts it up and sets it on a plate by itself for now. Quote dot dot dot, and this is where my heart is cold and torn, and as I read the words you wrote last night, the butterflies are creeping through my spine. Dot dot quote. Cutting the steak in two he puts each on a plate, splitting the fish and bacon along the two plates. Taking an omelet for each plate he sets one on a third as well. Taking rice he puts a large portion on the plate with the lone omelet, using the rest on the last two plates. Splitting the dango in three equal portions he even out all the plates. Taking three glasses out he puts a lemon wedge in each glass and fills one with orange juice setting it with the seemingly empty plate. Putting a lemon wedge with each piece of steak and fish he squeezes the last one in his orange juice and tosses the peel in the trash. 
Looking over at the time, it took a while to make the food, it now said 11.15. Shrugging Naruto cleaned up the dishes for 15 minutes and went to the bedroom door, which was mostly closed, and knocked softly on the door frame. Hey breakfast is ready you two hurry up before it gets cold. Getting back to the kitchen he sets up forks for everyone and sits at his spot, tasting his omelette and grinning to himself. Slowly he heard shuffling and some fighting, before long he saw the two coming in, stretching and yawning the whole way. Well now this smells delicious Naruto. Kurenai smiled at him and sat in one of the seats while Anko took the other. How did you manage to make all of this? I didn't even have some of it here. She questions looking to him for an answer. Kinda snuck out and went shopping. Taking a quick bite of his omelette he continues. Well are you both going to sit there and stare, or try it? Looking over he saw Anko hesitate. Looking across the table Anko watched with bated breath as Kurenai took a bit of the fish and tried it. Hearing Kurenai gasp slightly and grab another bite, she surmised it mustn't be that bad and tried the steak. For minutes all was silent, the only sound was Kurenai cutting her food and munching happily on it, along with Naruto taking a drink of his orange juice. My god. Anko started softly. This is. Fucking delicious. Anko jumped into her food with gusto as Naruto almost dropped his juice and Kurenai grinned at her friend. Finishing up his omelet Naruto starts with everything but the dango on his plate, working his way across the plate. Anko quickly poured some juice and took a sip. Damn even home squeezed OJ. Anko murmured and took to the fish. Kurenai poured some as well and took a few sips before getting back to meal with vigor. Mentally Naruto was chuckling to himself from the two women's reactions. Is it really that good? He asks himself as he shrugs and take a bite of Dango. Grinning to herself Kurenai was wondering if she should make him a permanent resident for her household right now. This was the best meal she's ever had since her mother made her dinner when she was a kid. Anko was jealous, beyond that, she envied Kurenai right now. He can fucking cook. This Dango is heavenly. Oh. My. God. Dot she so has a keeper. Damn I'd love to have met him first. Quickly she eyed the boy in question intently. Even lasting only a second she concluded a few things. Good looker too, doesn't look like he'd be bad in bed, damn her. Taking to her food once again she swore she let out a moan. Raising an eyebrow at hearing the snake moan from his food he looked back at Kurenai who, like a chain reaction moaned right after her friend. Sweet dropping Naruto finished his meal and rinsed the plate, standing at the counter and drinking his juice and hums a bit more. Looking up Kurenai couldn't help but feel happy, she found this guy. Nice, sweet, good looking, and can cook. It's like she won the lottery for dates. A knock interrupts the peace of the atmosphere in the room and Naruto excuses himself to go get the door. Getting to the door he turns the lock and opens it quickly asking a polite. Yes, how may I help you? To a somewhat tall, bearded man with a fire handkerchief on his waist. And who the hell are you? The man yells out, seeing another man in Kurenai's house was not what he was expecting. And who the hell are you? Shit I know that voice, looks like your lover is back. Anko teases the crimson eyes Jonan. Damn it, it was such a good morning too. I'll be right back. Getting up quickly not knowing what could happen she turns around the corner. Looking around Anko snickers and steals a dango from her plate as she has yet to touch them. Dash. Asuma. Of what do I owe the pleasure? Kurenai asks with light sarcasm as she wedges in front of Naruto, who just moved back and held onto the door for a second before going and pouring more juice. Who the hell is that? Asuma asks, barging in and sitting on the couch without taking his shoes off, tracking dirt through her white carpet. Scoffing Kurenai glares at him. What does it matter who he is? Closing the door knowing he won't leave without answers she sit across form him. I come to visit and that guy comes and opens the door, that's what it matters. Why is he here? You said you're not planning on dating anyone while you refused my date before your mission. Asuma looked at her angrily, starting to pull a cigarette out. Don't you dare. You do and you'll never be allowed here again. As for why he is here, he had nowhere to stay last night and I met him a while back, he's getting a new house today. I thought I would let him sleep on the couch, and make me an Anko breakfast. Kurenai saw Asuma scoff at Anko's name. Yay, you're right I wasn't planning on it, and nobody says me and him are dating. 
So then you're not dating that guy. Good. Asuma grins and is about to ask her on a date. Actually I never said we weren't either. Not that it's of any concern to you. Grinning when she sees him scowl she continues. Now as I said, I'm eating if you'd like you can wait outside until I'm done, or we can try and talk another time Asuma. Nah I'd rather stay right here and keep an eye on you. Asuma crosses a leg over his knee and leans back. Sipping at his juice Naruto stares as Anko still is munching ferociously on her dango. If you like it that much I can make you more later to SNA. Anko-san. Naruto commented without looking at her. Swallowing the bit in her mouth, Anko looks at him with surprise for calling her by name. Really? Damn Gaki. I'd love that. This is better than the shop down the street. Fucking good. She answered while shoving half of another oversized dango in her mouth. Thanks, I think. Naruto replies while glancing at her, and taking another sip of juice. You know, I mean what I said last night. You hurt her and I'll kill you, you got that. Anko said with killing intent sent at the boy, who to her surprise only raised an eyebrow. Going to have to do better than that. Pretty protective, you got a crush on the rose. Naruto couldn't help but grin at her blush. Either way, it's good she can have a friend like you. There might be hope for me yet, maybe. Naruto sombers up a bit at the end. Hey now, what do you mean by that gaki? Anko asks, eating her dango in a dignified manner, until realizing it was dango and shoving it into her awaiting maw. Well with that snake's mark on you, and your curse for it, she doesn't seem to hold it again you at all, so maybe my own curse won't be held too highly in consideration. This got Anko to stop eating. How? Dot how do you know about that? I smell of snake I get that, how did you surmise what you did with just that? Anko asked nervously, somewhat fearful of this man. It doesn't take a genius. Just like it doesn't take one to see how much you hate him and what he's done, or how you're not associated with him in any way. Anko sighed as he said this. But how will that help you? Well I'd tell you but I have no reason to right now. Naruto debates telling her, his curse, she knows the same fate with that snake, but then again she might do what the others did before. Try me, you dug up my past, spill it brat, or I'll make you. Chuckling Naruto looks at her in all seriousness, with a hint of humor in his voice. I'd like to see you try snake, I really would. Standing up Naruto points to his stomach. At first Anko questioned him and just blushed at his muscles. Glaring up she found him with a raised eyebrow and a smirk. Looking back she saw a huge intricate seal. Gasping she speaks. You, you're the Kyubi child aren't you? Getting a nod as he sipped his drink she shivered. He must be powerful then but why does he act the way he does? I see that is similar then isn't it Gaki? God damn it get the hell out. Looking down at Anko, Naruto and her both get up from leaning on the counter, and or seat, and march to the living room. What the hell is going on here? Anko screams and sees Asuma, obviously pissed with an unlit cigarette behind his ear, bent over the couch leaning into Kuranai. What the fuck does it matter to you snake bitch? To the surprise to everyone Naruto was the one to answer from the back, still sipping his juice. You're disrupting a peaceful atmosphere, a nice breakfast, and two lovely ladies morning. Not to leave out, I'm sure that Kuranai-san doesn't want you here Sarutobi-san. Naruto said from behind Anko, holding her back by her shoulder with the seal. Seriously who the fuck are you? This one won't say much. Pointing to Kuranai, what about you snake bitch, you gonna answer? Asuma yells. Naruto quickly wraps an arm around Anko holding her back, to which she realized, maybe she couldn't kill him, it wouldn't stop her from trying though. Resting his head on her shoulder he takes another sip of his juice, drawing it out for Asuma who is getting more pissed by the second. I'm afraid Anko isn't in the mood for exchanging words, now are you? Naruto glances at her, to which she growls back at him. Smiling Naruto turned his attention back to Asuma. Now, I believe Kuranai asked you to leave. Naruto leant a bit more on Anko, getting comfortable on her shoulder, his breath tickling her neck. Why don't you go do that? The door's right there. Why you little? Naruto grabbed his arm as he was cocking it back to hit Naruto. Asuma took a double take, two of him. How the hell, Shadow Clone, when did he make it? Anko didn't even notice him make it and he's leaning on her. 
Kuranai was looking more at Naruto and his behavior with Anko than Asuma for a second. Soon when he talked she turned to Asuma, only to smirk. I'd really rather not have to fight, so just do what the woman says Sarutobi-san. Quickly Asuma pulls from the clone's grasp and the clone poofs away. Yay, whatever. Walking out the door he slams it on the way out. Waiting until the door slams shut, Naruto gets up off Anko, lending a hand to Kuranai to help her up. What's with the San Naruto? I thought we got over this. Kuranai asked playfully. You want him to know how close we are. I mean I could care less who knows, thought you did though. Naruto grinned. You seemed awfully comfy on Anko's shoulder Naruto. She noted how Anko hadn't moved yet and a small blush adorned her cheek. Or maybe she was comfy with you. Grinning Kuranai teased her friend, who glared and stomped back to her dango. Walking over he cup her chin and kisses her. Go eat Rose, I'll clean this mess. He commented on the dirt in the carpet. Smiling sweetly Kuranai nodded and kisses him back. Thanks Naruto. The food is delicious, thank you for a nice breakfast. Taking a quick hug she goes to finish her meal. Taking out the vacuum in the closet he quickly uses a light water jutsu and cleans up the stains. So Anko, comfy, giggles Kuranai while eating the steak. He grabbed me, that brat. I didn't say he could grab me, but I just froze when he leant on me. Damn brat. Anko muttered and stole a dango from Naruto's plate. Don't worry about it Anko. Smiling Kuranai cuts a piece of steak off again, chewing it for a few seconds. Besides, he's very sweet, he wasn't going to do anything to you, just keep you from getting into more trouble. Yay yay, whatever I don't need help. Grumbling she munches her dango. Well it's done and I'm going to. There was another knock at the door, and Naruto insisted to open it again. Taking the same approach he opened the door with. How may I help you? Taking in the looks of a masked ninja. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. You are to report to the Hokage at 1 o'clock. I'm here to pick you up. Looking at the clock Naruto noted it was 10 to. All right, can you hold a second please? Getting a nod he quickly ushered the Anbu in and headed for the kitchen. Kuranai, Anko, I must cut my visit short, I am needed at the Hokage's office. Sorry I can't see you finish. Smiling he leans down and kisses Kuranai. Before he could get up she pulls him back down, his hand shooting to the table to stable himself before relaxing into the kiss. Ahem, I'm still here you know. Naruto got away for a second to reply with. Yes, and, do you want one too? The humor in his voice was thick and Anko threw a fork at him. Catching it swiftly Kuranai finally let him go, using the fork he took the last dango from Anko's plate. This if for the one you stole from me. Smiling he munched the dango and tossed the fork in the sink. CYA round ladies. Walking to the other room he slips his cloak and shoes on in seconds, following the Anbu out the door. Wonder what's going to happen with him at the Hokage's office. Anko ponders out loud. Don't know but I'm not letting this food go to waste, you full yet. Kuranai asked, getting a slow nod. Jumping up she grabs some bowls with lids and puts the extra food in them, setting it all in the fridge for later. Ker-chan. Let's go for a walk. Anko bounces around and tugs on her friend's arm. Giggling she agrees and slips some more clothes on in her shoes, walking out into the peaceful day with Anko. Hey old man you wanted to see me. Naruto called to the Hokage who chuckles and motioned to the seat in front of him. Yes, I did Naruto, we have a council meeting today, for your birthright and heritage. Smiling he puffs on his pipe. That's great Oiji-san, I guess let's get going then. Stupid council. Chuckling Hiruzen agrees as they make their way down the hall to the council chambers. Wait here while I introduce the meeting, I'll call you in. Seeing him nod Hiruzen walks in the room. Hokage-sama why are we all here? Some of us are busy and need to attend to our clans. Hiyashi stated while a few clan heads agreed. Oh stow it Hiyashi, you just wanna run your poor girl into the ground more. Sume retorts. Hokage-sama, not to be rude, but what is this sudden meeting about? She asks politely, to which the Hokage smiles. To welcome a clan back to Konoha, and appoint the clan head to their rightful spot on the council. Suddenly all the members in the council went silent. A new clan. Welcoming back a clan. And what is this clan to us? Mustn't be too great if they were here once and trying to get back again. 
Sakumo Haruno yelled from the back. Ah, but they aren't trying to get in, I'm making sure they do. The Hokage grinned at their stunned faces. Would you please come in? He called to the doors. Sighing Naruto resigned himself. He heard it all, and it finally made sense as to why he was called here for this. Though it would help the old man, and he'd have power himself. Smiling he thinks to himself. I might like this just yet. Opening the door everyone is greeted with the sight of an above average height male, hidden in a cloak, with silver pants, black flames licking up with red trim. Hi Hokage-sama. He nods without lifting his head, hood covering his face. Standing next to the Hokage he peers out at all the clan heads. Aburame, Inazuka, Hayuga, Nara, Akamichi, and Yamanaka, along with other clans. Smirking he spied a seat just for him in the middle, separating everyone on the shinobi council. Please remove your hood, the Hokage asked while smiling, which a few in the room did not like the looks of. Nodding the figure gripped the hood and pulled it back with his eyes closed. Many in the room gasped thinking the Yandaimi was back. Cries of the Yandaimi echoed the room. Until he opened his eyes, silence ensued once again. Purple, a red ring around the pupil. The Yandaimi had blue eyes, strikingly so. No, I'm not Minato, but I am Namikaze. He states coldly. Clan members meet Minato's son. Naruto. Some of the clan heads gasped, others scoffed. Some growled. One even shouted to have this. Naruto, killed for being a demon. Silence. Everyone looked at the Hokage, who smirked and turned to Naruto. Yes Naruto. Do you have something to say? Turning to Hiruzen Naruto nods. Yea old man, I want my inheritance, and I want my home, then I want this council seat. After that, I want to take you for ramen. Naruto smirked at the end as did the Hokage. Nodding, he got up and grabbed a few scrolls from a drawer with the Hokage seal over it on his desk. I moved these here knowing this would happen, this is everything they left with me. They, Naruto asks coldly, yes your mother too. He answers skeptically, not knowing the past transgressions. I don't want them. Unless they hold some information on my bloodline, you can burn them. Naruto stated taking Minato's scrolls and storing them in a ceiling scroll. I don't understand she was your mother you should, Inoichi was intercepted ferociously by Naruto. Mother. That bitch isn't my mother. No mother would do that to their own son. She can rot in hell for all I care. Naruto said as the temperature slowly dropped a few degrees. Naruto-san, if I may, why do you say this about yo, this woman? Sum asks kindly from her seat by Inoichi. Well since you're so polite I shall explain to you why, you see she found out about this curse I seem to have gotten when born. A few people flinched at this. And when she found me she, Hokage-sama, I'm sorry but they just burst through and I couldn't stop them. The secretary yelled as a bunch of people filed into the room taking to the middle of the room past Naruto. Every person in this group had raven hair. Deep, dark, reflective raven hair. The leader had spiked up hair, pushed back into a low ponytail, in a low voice he called out. A council meeting without me. Why the long wait Hokage-sama? Been on a trip for a while and couldn't find a way back, stranded. Yet you go on like nothing happened. The volume of the male's voice rose quickly. The Hokage noticed a few things, the first on his list was the very person next to him. Naruto stiffened, so much so he hasn't moved since the door burst open and everyone barged in. Seeing his eyes change slowly the Hokage had no idea what was going on. First the eyes of a tiger, snake, hawk, finally of something he's never seen. A four-pointed star surrounded the pupil, a small circle in the edge of each point. Slowly the star seemed to spin. I'll fucking kill you Fugaku. You're a dead man Uchiha. Naruto started to lunge. No one moved. No one could. Naruto's killing intent had everyone's breath missed in the room, and they could barely move, even the Hokage. Pulling out a sword Naruto kept his pace. A normal blade, thicker and wider and as sharp as any blade out there, the handle was pulled in slightly giving the blade a tilt, by the hilt was a small half circle, a bent piece of metal in the middle. A small hole at the tip of the blade indicated it was hollowed out. Rushing forward, Naruto swung the blade down at the stunned Uchiha. Ker-chan. Anko you're right next to me you don't need to yell. What is it? 
Turning to her friend she felt slightly unnerved. Well, first off let's sit. Anko plopped down on a bench in the park they walked to. The trees were swaying in the breeze, a few were blooming this time of the year, with white or pink flowers on them. Kids sat around the playground interacting with one another, a group of kids swinging or on the jungle gym. All right, so what's up? Kurinai turns to her friend slightly and crossed her legs. Well, Anko fidgets a bit. It's kinda. Anko this isn't like you just spit it out. I'm trying Kurinai. Kurinai's eyes widened ever so slightly, saying her full name shows seriousness from her friend. All right, I'm sorry, continue. Turning more to her friend to show she's more attentive. Sighing Anko opens her mouth but it frozen by an immense killing intent. Looking around Anko notes how almost every civilian, and anyone under Chunin were out, and dropping like flies around the city. Looking at her friend they nod and head to the source, the Hokage Tower. Kurinai noted how Anbu controlling the border, miles away, were flying into the city, every alert Junin was moving into the vicinity also. Suddenly the Anbu stopped, a five meter radius around the tower, Junin foolish enough to try to go past them were knocked out by the concentrated killing intent. Captain, not even our most skilled unit can make it in there, the killing intent is too much, what's going on? I, I don't know bear, there's nothing we can do though, let's just hope our Hokage is alright. It's all we can do for a while. Suddenly the killing intent started to lower slightly. No one move it could be a false alarm. A captain yelled out from the Anbu units. One foolish Anbu decided to go in, and in that same second, the killing intent doubled from what it was before. Suffice to say, the Anbu was knocked out, and knocked back from the tower, a slow mist seemed to form around the tower, showing how cold the temperature had dropped inside. Her chan Isn't Naruto in there? What's going on? She let her sentence run off, as no one could answer her question if they wanted to. Thinking for a second, Kurinai's eyes widened significantly. He is in there, I hope he's okay. He didn't anger the Hokage did he? She idly thought and stared up at the Hokage's windows, which were close to the council chamber windows. Everyone back now. The same Anbu that took charge before yelled. Everyone leapt back to various building farther away, but within distance to see what was going on. Every available ninja was watching, even Team 7, 8, Team Guy, and Team 10. Somehow the genin weathered the killing intent enough to stand. You're a dead man Uchiha. Sasuke stiffened in the crowd, and Sakura looked at him with care in her eyes. For a second nothing happened, then a body seemed to crash through and out the council windows, shattering not just the window it came from, but the two on both sides. The Anbu were instantly on guard, Tonto's out and in a defensive stance. The body hit the ground once and bounced, followed by a purple bolt that hit the spot of ground he bounced off of. A black blur shot out, and before the body could hit the ground again it kicked up, sending the body skyward, and landed after a follow-through backflip. In a crouch the black blob shot skyward intent on its target. Was that Naruto? The inside of the black was red, like his cloak. Kurinai started to get worried now, and Anko took notice and stood closer to her. Minutes before, turning the blade around Naruto slammed the back edge of it into Fugaku, sending him crashing through a window with such force that four other windows broke, two on each side. Some of the council were knocked out by the killing intent, others were watching with morbid fascination at how this, boy could take down an Uchiha head, Fugaku no less. The Uchiha in the room couldn't believe what was happening, they were the only ones left, and this boy decides to attack their leader, the one who got them back to safety after someone kidnapped them and left them on an abandoned island for years. None could move. The Hokage couldn't do anything, his little Naruto just attacked the Uchiha head, albeit with reason, he didn't this killing intent. How is Naruto producing it? This is on par with the level when Uchiha Madara and Senju Hashirama, at the battle in the Valley of the End. Naruto walked to the edge of the window and charged up Chakra to his blade, pointing the tip he pulled on the metal hanging in the half circle. A loud crack reverberated the room and the blade was pushed up a bit by an invisible force. A bolt of pure chakra shot down where the body bounced and Naruto cursed. Lunging out the window he landed under Fugaku and kicked up, leaned back, and did a backflip, using too much momentum he would have lost balance had he not done one. Crouching, he shot up intent on killing the man. Fugaku was lost, 
He didn't know this man, but he wants him dead. Trying to move against the extra forced gravity pushing down he struggled to do hand signs. Grand Fireball Jutsu. Using enough chakra to take out the Hokage monument he shot out a fireball, white hot. To everyone on the ground it looked like the sun, shielding their eyes enough to see they all looked up, the Hokage in the window. Staring blankly Naruto pulled his sword forward and charged up chakra into the blade. Instead of stopping the flow he pulled the blade above his head and pulled the trigger, pulling the blade down to his feet before stopping the flow of chakra. Repeating this again perpendicular to the last Naruto watches, unblinkingly as the purple chakra cut the ball of fire dissolving its power before it went out. Suddenly for everyone below, with the absence of the bright light, the all went blind, having to have their eyes readjust to the normal light. Kurenai stared up at Naruto in awe. He stopped the fireball without breaking a sweat. Anko had similar thought. If he's that powerful, glancing at Kurenai, damn you again. Grinning she watched Naruto still ascending into the body, unidentified but a human no less. Wah. What? What are you? Fugaku yelled down at the approaching man before he disappeared. I'm your worst nightmare Uchiha. I'm the one who will take you off your throne, and I'm your experiment gone wrong. Naruto whispered into the Uchiha's ear. Eyes widening Fugaku could do nothing as Naruto swung the back of the blade down again. Sending him careening towards the ground in a blur, unseen by the untrained eye. Landing with a smoke cloud poof, all the Hyuga turned on their Byakugan to see better. Fugaku couldn't move, he lay, imprinted into the ground, cracks surrounding his body. He was sure he had a few broken bones at least, and some internal bleeding. Coughing up some blood he turns on his Sherigan to see as the smoke cleared a bit. All he sees is a giant ball of chakra coming at him only half the size of his fireball but big nonetheless. Slowly the ball got smaller, denser, the closer it got, until it was barely bigger than him. Resigned to his death the Uchiha just watched. What he did not expect was the ball to suddenly expand where it was, feet above him, enough to still hit him. The chakra cleared the smoke, as intended, and there he sees Fugaku, in a crater made by the blowlet, charging a purple element into the blade, it sparked like lightning but the heat was was more like fire. Soon the crackling was filling the air as Naruto dropped faster, taking to a dive, blade hanging behind him, leaving a trail of purple in his wake. Meet your fate Uchiha, Naruto screamed as his eyes spun faster the angrier he got. Pulling the blade back he turned the tip to the ground and jabbed it forward as he descended closer to the ground. Impaling the Uchiha on the tip, the wound didn't bleed the heat cauterizing it. The heated lightning coursed through his body before the element stopped and Naruto landed feet away from the body. Back turned away, he stared over the sea of shinobi at the clear sky. Kurenai looked down at Naruto's face and saw nothing, he was blank, no emotion, his eyes were filled with rage, she swore she saw the shinigami himself in Naruto's eyes. Looking over at the body she started to growl as the anger boiled up. Kurenai what is it? Anko asked looking over at her red-eyed friend. That, that Uchiha, he's the clan head. Anko nodded not seeing where this was going. He, he was the one to put Naruto through so much pain, his clan was the one torturing him. Anko looked puzzled, she didn't know what her friend meant. Kurenai pieced it together, her dream and his hate for the Uchiha, at least what she guessed. The ninja around were starting to grow weary of her, her killing intent raising slowly. So Uchiha do you like your little experiment now? Naruto yelled before turning and morphed into a wolf, his first animal earned to him. The shinobi gathered all gasped as Naruto transformed, the council members looking out the windows watched in stunned silence as the boy's bloodline was revealed. Lunging, Naruto knew the Uchiha would live, they'd give him the best care, he'd let him live, for now. Grappling onto the Uchiha's leg Naruto proceeded to tear and rip at skin and muscle, loving the sound of Fugaku's screams. Sasuke was frozen to place, his father, he was alive, Itachi didn't kill him. A lone tear rolled down his cheek, he was going to lose him and there was nothing he or apparently anyone else could do. Father. He mumbled. Father. Some turned to him. What? What are you all looking at someone stop him? Taking a K a few Anbu went in throwing aside their orders to stay still. Naruto noticed this and quickly started to change forms. 
Taking on an animal that was once an experiment itself of Orochimaru's, he slowly got on his hind legs, they thickened. His chest and arms also thickening, his wolfen body growing upright. Mentally wincing Naruto grabbed an Anbu by the head and threw him into another one, no serious damage just getting them out of the way. Ugh. I can't hold on to this form long, it's not a natural animal. Naruto grunted as he grabbed another Anbu and swung him around catching two more Anbu and knocking them unconscious. Hitting the last one in the back of the neck, he dropped to the floor. Seeming to ripple Naruto's body took on the of a Komodo dragon, taking to the Uchiha's wounds and biting down, letting the poison saliva run in his blood. Treatable. Too bad though. He though before taking form of a medium three-tailed fox. Many in the crowd backed away or flinched seeing the fox, too much of a reminder of the Kyubi. Anko's eyes widened and looked at her friend, whose eyes went blank when the fox was shown, she was no longer mad from what Anko could astern. Naruto didn't even notice the shinobi move, he was too focused on Fugaku, who was looking up at him with fear in his eyes, Sharigan be damned, fear can't hide. Grinning a feral grin Naruto returned to himself and walked over to him, grabbing the handle of his sword. Come on Uchiha I know you got more in you than this right. Naruto brought his foot up and slammed it into Fugaku's face, crushing it, before it turned into a log and Fugaku was standing up feet away. See, not too old. Grabbing his sword Naruto gave a tug and pulled it out of the ground. Demon child, do you see what has become of you? I could help you, shut up. The shinobi in the crowd were focused on Fugaku and swung their head to Naruto. After what you did, I'm not going to let you help anything. I must thank you Fugaku. Chuckling Naruto saw the confusion on his face. I have no restrictions with my bloodline, any animal I don't have to study it for days or weeks like my mother did. No I simple kill it, just one, and I can use it. I don't have time restrictions either, or a limit of how often I can use it. Fugaku smirked. Good I see my plan has succeeded then. Now I can. Die. Naruto calmly stated and rushed Fugaku, blade raised. Fugaku couldn't move, he watched with blank eyes, not caring about this boy at all for what he did. Feet away from the man, Naruto saw the Uchiha goddess jump in the way as he started to swing. Cursing himself he swung faster, cutting only the cheek of the Uchiha goddess, and with only inches to spare, gracefully spun to the right, towards the arm with his sword, pulling the sword along and sliding his hand up to the hilt leaving a few inches of the handle left. Stopping his spin and momentum millimeters before hitting the goddess, arm outstretched past her head, he grinned. Staring at the man before her angrily the goddess watched his lips turn up before hearing a low, thud, behind her. Slowly she followed his arm to the sword, and saw the handle sticking out a few inches, enough to hit her husband with. Looking down she saw a red mark on his temple. Don't worry, he's not dead. Yet, Naruto stated coldly and pulled his arm back, dropping his sword as it puffed up in smoke before hitting the ground. Glaring back at the blonde boy she pointed to her husband. What did he do to you? We just got her and, if you don't know then I'm sorry he hid it from you, I just feel sad that you're with this man. Naruto interrupted and looked up at the Hokage. Hey, old man. Every shinobi looked at the boy and a few started to move towards him. Chuckling Hiruzen looked down. Yes Naruto. What is it? You should get him some help, I don't want him dead yet. And I'll be taking my seat on the council next meeting. Shaking a scroll up at him Naruto says. Even got my stuff, the wanted. Dot and the unwanted. Naruto grumbled the last bit but everyone still heard him. Soon looked out the window and grinned at the boy. Certainly is remarkable little pup, cute to boot. Grabbing her bag she slung it over her shoulder and walked up to the Hokage. Yes Soom. He asked without looking. This is the report you wanted on the other clans and the findings of the Uchiha estate. She said giving him the bag and staring at Naruto. Boys cute Hokage same. Strong too. Enough to give you a run for your money. She chuckled. Yay. He's taken Soom. Yuhikur and I I believe. Tisk tisk. Too bad. He could be some real fun. Giving a toothy grin she jumped out the window. Shinobi gathered watched with bated breath as Soom jumped down and clapped Naruto on the shoulder. Nice job putting the bastard in his place Naruto, welcome to the council. Grinning down at the boy she didn't see him react for a minute. 
Taking his eyes off Fugaku and the Uchiha goddess Makoto, he looked at the hand on his shoulder. Claude. Skimming up the arm he sees a feral face with a grin and markings of her clan on her face. Inazuka-san. Naruto nodded his head. Thanks. Glad to finally take my anger out on the bastard for what he did to me, he's still not dead yet. Too bad really. Soon looked at him seriously. Really? What exactly did he do? Naruto looked at her and chuckled for a second. I'll give you a small summary. Makoto you might want to listen up. This will be the best he did. Every shinobi in the area moved a little closer to hear him. Anko pulled Kurenai along, as she was just getting her bearings back. I guess I'll start from the somewhat beginning. Naruto sighed. You did want to hear about why I didn't like my mother too. This got Anko and Kurenai's attention, who after realizing Naruto was the Kayubi's holder, had some things to talk to him about. I was living with my mom for a while, after I was born. On my fifth birthday, she said she'd take me out for ramen, she did. I was happy and she was smiling like a mother would for her son on his birthday. Suddenly she said she had to go do something and she left me alone, with enough money for a few more bowls. I ate, and decided to tell Tiuchi that I'd be back in a bit and went for a walk to the park. Naruto now noticed how all the shinobi were off the buildings and listening to his tale. Sighing he continued anyway. Well when I got there I saw all the other kids playing around, and tried to go play with them. All their parents pulled them away and told me to scram, picking up stones and throwing them at me. A few shinobi stiffened, while other shinobi narrowed their eyes. I ran away from them as fast as I could and got lost. I couldn't find Tiuchi's restaurant, or anything I recognized for that matter. After a few minutes wondering I started to panic, thinking my mom was worrying about me, so I started to ask around to find Ichiraku's. I was only met with glares, fists or feet. Up in the window the Hokage flinched slightly at that. Then when I finally recognized something and was walking to it, a kanai hit the ground at my feet, I looked up only to see the night sky, and people walking around like normal. When I tried to take a step another kanai came down, closer to me this time. Soon they started shooting down at me and I could do nothing but run. What's going on? A blonde boy thought as kanai rained from the heavens at him. Mom. Help me. Looking back he saw nothing. Everything was a blur. He was moving so fast he didn't even know how long he had been running, or the buildings around him. Stopping to catch his breath, he leans against a tree for support. Taking his time he quickly realizes his mistake. Suddenly dozens of kanai rain down, growing closer and closer, hitting the ground, tree and finally one landed in his right lung. Choking he rips it out and puts it away for later, just in case. Taking another second, one he'd regret, to take a breath to run, more kanai, from every direction. Some from above, some from left, or right. None straight on anymore, out of them all Naruto manages to dodge some, getting only scrapes and cuts from them. Taking off he catches a glimpse of red in the wind. A single thread, moving as part of the wind itself, slowly reaching up he grabs it. Silky soft, and glinting red in the sun. Mommy. Looking up he couldn't see anything but the shine and glint of metal in the moonlight. Taking off and dodging all the projectiles, Naruto runs through the clan district. Running through the forest to try and find cover in the trees. First he hear barking, growing louder and louder. Running faster he jumps over a few bushes and saw six huge dogs in a kennel. All trying to tear the fence apart. Kuromaru. What's going on? Hey, shut up and tell me you guys. Naruto heard a voice yell and he split in a second, going the other way and into a nice clean forest. Buzzing was all around him, every type of bug, and some he's never seen, were all around him. Looking in a panic he sees one man in the forest, who is looking right at him. Without a word the man turned away, his coat covering everything but his glasses and hair. Naruto didn't know what was happening and took another quick turn, taking to an open field. A giant Fuma shuriken flew down at him and he jumped to get over it, only to see it curve back up to the sky and over the horizon in front of him. He was the one riling up Kuromaru and the others. Poor boy. Soon thought and squeezed his arm. So, he was the one in our forest, no harm no foul. Shibi thought silently and nodded to himself. Tripping over a wall in an attempt to get over it, he saw a few people staring at him, veins bulging on the edge of their eyes. 
What are you doing here? Talk now or die. Shaking like a leaf Naruto takes off faster than any of them could follow. They watched as he jumped the other side of the wall after a shinobi got a couple strikes on him. He limped for a minute before taking off like before. Looking back, Naruto didn't see anything and slowed down a bit, taking a breather but not stopping, he learned once. Slowly he looked around to see where he was, the shadows themselves seemed to waver and dance like water. Taking a look down the forest he saw many glowing eyes staring back at him, the moon being reflected through them. Getting an uneasy feeling Naruto jumped out. Why is everything so creepy around here? I just want my mommy. Naruto screamed to himself as a few tears leaked down his cheeks. Tripping on a root on the last tree, Naruto rolled, not wasting time he quickly rolled, jumping to his feet and making his way through the paved grounds and houses. Everything had red and white fans on it. First all that, now these red orbs. What next? Kami helped me find my mommy. Running through the streets he heard a voice. Leave now. A hushed voice said. Spinning Naruto didn't see anything. There must be somewhere to hide. Now, you must leave, before anyone sees you, go. Taking another look, Kanai out Naruto sees nothing and runs deeper into the clan's compound. Finding a shed he grabbed a dirty cloth and stared out, paranoid. Slowly drifting off he heard a faint voice. I told you it would be too easy. Fugaku. Mommy. Not having the strength to lift his head, Naruto passed out. Well that would explain yo. Kashina then. But what about Fugaku? Sum asked, her anger held inside. Kurenai was seething, holding in her anger towards the village and Kashina, along with the Uchiha. Her hair covered her face a bit as she looked down a tear fell from her face and hit Anko's shoe. Deep in thought about how close she was to the gaki, Anko barely noticed the drip of something on her shoe. Looking down she saw a wet spot and looked at Kurenai. Quote dot dot dot. Ker Chan. She asked gently. Shaking her head a bit Kurenai looked up, the tear streak blown in the wind. Yes Anko. The whites of her eyes are a bit pink. Anko thought. Come here Ker Chan. Anko grabbed her in a hug. Thanks Anko. This just pisses me off and shows how much he's been through. Sighing Kurenai moves away from Anko and smiles, listen back to Naruto's story. Yay that bastard Uchiha needs to get the worst possible treatment. My snakes. Anko grinned as a few snakes slithered around her arms. Nodding Kurenai watches Naruto. His ear twitches and he looks over for a split second, hearing the snakes. Stiffening Naruto smelled snakes and glances over as his ears twitch. Yay. What about my husband, hm? You haven't said anything yet except how your mother chased you to us. Naruto could tell the Uchiha goddess was hiding something, her concern seemed faked. Well. Waking up on a table to see Fugaku's face in his own, Naruto struggles. There's no use demon, those are reinforced chakra draining binds, you can't get out of them without me or someone else letting you. Why am I here? Naruto yelled. Oh just a little test. You too. Start with the fluids now, he's awake it will go through his system faster. The two Uchiha he pointed to nodded and grabbed a few syringes and roughly stuck Naruto with them. After so many injections, with seemingly no results, Fugaku ordered a few more clan members to cut the boy a few times and start putting in pills and acids along with a higher dose of the liquids of before. Screaming Naruto could do nothing but yell for his mom and for help. Silly child. She won't be coming for you, she's the one who brought you here. Believe it or not, it's completely up to you. Fugaku chuckled as the boy started to cry. The screaming stopped and he stopped struggling, resigned to his fate. In a lone corner, undetected by Fugaku or the clansmen, Itachi hid, watching it all and shaking his head, disappearing into the darkness. Sasuke was shaking like a leaf, this wasn't who his father was, and this was what he was doing. Taking a new look on life he thought maybe Itachi did the right thing, if the head was corrupted, so could everyone else right. If it wasn't for Itachi saving me and letting me out, well, let's just say I don't know what could have happened. Naruto finished leaving out much detail. And that's the overview. Many shinobi gasped as he finished. Some thought he deserved it. Others were on edge, wanting to kill the rest of the Uchiha right there. Up in the council room everyone stared at the Uchihas there. For their sake, they hoped none of them knew of this. All the Uchiha were looking on like deer, 
how could their head do this? Now Makoto, do you understand? Nodding. Oh yes, Makoto understood, she had suspicions before, but with the truth she didn't need to be with the scum anymore. Kicking Fugaku once in the ribs she heard a few gasp in the crowd. One Anbu couldn't handle it and went to attack Fugaku, Makoto be damned. Just as he was about to strike through Makoto, Naruto grabbed the blade, bare palmed and stopped it, leaving another cut on the Uchiha goddess cheek, and a huge cut in Naruto's hand. If you heard or saw what had happened just now Anbu-san, Makoto isn't on the same page as her husband is. Naruto said coldly, feeling the blood pool at his elbow and drip. Jerking his hand the Tonto snapped in half and he kicked the owner back into the crowd. Besides, Naruto started, staring at his hand covered in blood. If you heard me at all, Fugaku is mine. Turning to Makoto he licks his thumb and rubs it over the two cuts, that after a second, sizzle and smoke lightly. Cleaning and closing the wounds. Looking back at his hand he licks the wound and watches it sizzle. Letting his hand drop he smiled to the Uchiha goddess and walked back to Soom. Well that certainly was a surprise. Soom barked out between laughter. Old man. Those medics. Naruto yelled, to which the Hokage nodded and sent down his personal staff. After dragging away the unconscious Uchiha, Naruto looked up, the moon was starting to come up, meaning the sun was setting soon. Well Soom, I must be going now, I have things to attend to. Nodding Soom let him go. Damn that boy is hot. Taking a sniff she almost jumped. His pheromones are thick in the air. Walking towards her compound she had things to talk about with Kuromaru. Naruto. The Uchiha matriarch called out, causing him to stop. Yes Makoto-san, he asked turning around. Thank you for explaining, I had my own thoughts but. Without proof there was nothing you could do, it's fine. Grabbing him in a quick hug the matriarch walked through the crowd after kicking Fugaku again. Sasuke ran out of the crowd and grappled her, screaming. Mom. And saying things like how he was glad she was alive. Hey Kuranai. Anko noticed her start to act funny when Makoto hugged Naruto. What's up? Nothing Anko. She stared at Naruto as he walked away. Just thinking is all. Taking to the monument, Naruto sat on top of the fourth Hokage's head, the Yandaimi. Quote dot dot dot. Fuck this. Getting up he notices the blood on his arm still and shrugs making a few enhanced clones, just 30. Come at me, I need some stress relief. Taking out his sword, and noticing none moved he pointed it and shot one. Blood spurting from its shoulder as a clean hole was seen before blood oozed out of it. Come on move it. Naruto yelled and the clones jumped into action. Three came at him at a time, one going low and another coming with his sword. The third stood back and started doing hand signs. Jumping over the sweep kick and glancing his blade off the clones, the clone stabbed the one sliding under the real Naruto, a large gash across his arm. Naruto, on the way down charged the heated lightning back into his blade, and cut off the clone's head that got cut under him. Dodging the blade again he channeled chakra and shot out a blade of plasma at the clone making the hand seals. Jumping out of the way, the clone finished and called out. Tanuki's Ma. The Hokage's monument seemed to open up as jaws seemed to come open and clench down on a few clones, Naruto at the last second substituted with the one who called out the jutsu. Four down. Stabbing at a clone that came at him Naruto's plasma charge blade cut through him like butter. Stopping the plasma he flung the clone off the monument and shot three bullets down at him. Walking down a street with Anko by her side, Kurinai was thinking about Naruto. He had been through so much, she remembered the night that she went by the Uchiha compound, the very night he was taken. It saddened her that she couldn't do anything, or even knew about it at the time. Come on Ker-chan let's go to your house and rest up, we still have those leftovers from breakfast. Kurinai stiffened for a second and grinned. Oh yay. Next best thing to him, is his cooking. Let's go Anko, I'll heat it up. Suddenly a purple ball shot down and hit the ground in front of Anko, stopping the two in their tracks as they looked up. The sight greeting them was a bloody and battered Naruto getting hit by two other purple bullets, showering blood over the ground. Hitting the ground with a sickening crunch the clone finally fell apart as the blood soaked the ground and the whole clone turned red before seeping into the dirt. Looking at Anko, who shrugged, 
Kuranai decided to leave him alone for now, it seemed he was taking out his aggression. Damn thing flew halfway across the village. Naruto noted looking down the face of the cliff. Coming up behind him another clone stabbed at him as one more slashed downwards. Naruto spun and put his blade up, side of the blade catching the point of the clones. He spun back knocking the clone off balance, and slicing up meeting the other clone's strike. A few seconds later and more clones joined in the fun of beating their master. To a viewer who looked on, Naruto seemed to be losing to himself. But to a critical eye, Naruto wasn't getting hit, on the contrary, his motions were fluid, even with the big blade, it was like a graceful dance through the clones, who seemed to be spurting blood almost non-stop as his blade swung. Taking a second to charge his bullet up he stabbed a clone, and pulled the trigger, the resulting blast blew off the clone's back, a hole about a foot wide in the center of his back. Ten down. All the clones stood in a circle around him. Grinning Naruto charged up his bullet again, and held the trigger down, spinning and letting the blade shoot a continuous stream of chakra. From the sky it looked like a whirlpool of purple chakra. The few clones that got caught were sliced up and burned by the chakra. Mom. Sasuke yelled once more as they got home. Grabbing onto her he let tears stream down his face as she held him. Shish shish, Sasuke-kun don't worry hun, mommy's back and you're alright. Makoto cooed to him. I heard from the council you were bent on revenge. That's not healthy, you're just going to get yourself killed, live like a kid Sasuke-kun. If you meet Itachi, if you wish you can fight him, but he really did the clan a favor. Sasuke nodded to his mom. His dream changed, no longer to kill Itachi, to help his mother and the rest of the clan become better than before. Don't turn into your father sweetie, you're a good boy and you don't need to be doing anything that he did. Sasuke nodded again and offered to help her buy groceries, with a smile on his face. Sure. Let's go now. Makoto smiled back. Fifteen down. Naruto launched over a clone's blade and used its head as a stepping stone, Flipping in the air he sliced a clone up and straightened out, stabbing his blade into another clone behind the first two, straight through its head and down its throat. Feet hitting the ground, without cleaning the blade, he spun and blocked a strike from another clone, by this time cuts and hole could be seen over his body, the clones getting lucky shots. A few clones in the back were shooting chakra bullets at him, coating his blade in chakra he deflected them into other clones. Cutting one bullet down the middle he lunged forward as both halves exploded after a few seconds, sending the clones around him reeling. 18 down. Well Hokage it's agreed that Naruto will take his seat as clan head, and Makoto will take her seat as the new clan head for the Uchihas. Hiyashi said, as he had the most power he was the council spokesman. Good, now Fugaku will be detained until further notice, this meeting is dismissed, I have enough to do today. The Hokage grumbled with a smile on his face and watched everyone leave the room. Looking over at the Hokage monument he smirked. Thank you Naruto. Making a few clones he set them to work on his paperwork and took to his bed for a nap. 24 down. Kicking a clone off the cliff, Naruto sliced up with his blade and pulled the trigger, sending a blade of chakra out that, once hit the clone sent him up into the sky. Finishing a few hand seals, Naruto called out. Plasma Dragon. Purple lightning shot out and engulfed the clone, sparks seemed to shoot out from the core as the dragon turned into a ball after hitting the clone, slowly growing smaller as the lightning raged around the ball of intense heat. Any blood that would have dripped to the village was zapped and evaporated, or dissolved in the heat of the dragon's core. Throwing the blade, it puffed in mid-air, and charging the remaining clones, Naruto jumped. Raging Kitsune. Naruto called as a large fox made of fire appeared from around him and charged the remaining five clones, tails whipping around and charring the ground. Taking a clone in its maw, the kitsune swallowed and all the fell out of the fire was bones, before they dissolved into blood. Tanuki's maw, the the ground opened up and swallowed the kitsune whole, smoke coming up from the ground as it closed. Many villagers looked up at a scene on the Hokage monument, seeing a red flaming fox, that soon fell into the earth. Only to scare the villagers more, when all the Hokage's eyes seemed to smoke for a few minutes. Lining Claws. Naruto yelled as his hands were enveloped in lightning that seemed to come to a point on every finger. Jumping at a clone and cutting through it, he turned and cut another set perpendicular to the last. 28 down. 
Panting heavily Naruto flung himself at the remaining clones, as one took the hit the other used his blade and slice into Naruto's back. Naruto grit his teeth and landed on his feet. Taking his chance he turned into a large twin-tailed fox, then charged the two clones. One was stuck through on the fox's tail, the other was mauled and flung off the cliff. Taking the time to look at the last clone, he returned to normal and the clone hit the ground. Walking over he looked down as the clone started to twitch. Not today. Naruto stomped on the clone's head as the blood spewed all over. The final clone popped in a bloody mess and sank into the earth. Gah! Always such a mess with them. Naruto smiled to himself. Covered in blood from the clones, all his cuts were fizzling and healing themselves. Taking a walk down the streets of Konoha, he didn't bother to wash up, he figured to go to the hot springs after he ate. What's that smell? It's thick of blood. Sasuke. Keep that to yourself. A feminine voice scolded him as they rounded the corner. Naruto stopped walking just before Makoto ran into him and dirtied her clothes. Causing Makoto to yelp in surprise. Naruto. What happened? Makoto asked in a caring voice, which made Sasuke seethe some next to her. Training. Blood clones. No big deal, really. If you say so. I'd like to invite you to eat dinner with me and Sasuke here. You can take a bath before you eat. Makoto smiled and moved a bag around in her arms, full with food. Glancing at Sasuke, Naruto nodded. He seems less, like his father. He might be good yet. I'd like that, thank you Makoto-san, Sasuke-san. Naruto nodded and made a clean clone to help carry the groceries. Why, thank you Naruto. Makoto said leading the way to the compound as Sasuke pulled Naruto back. Just what are you trying to pull, loser? Sasuke asked with a sneer. Nothing. You don't seem like you'll turn out like your father now, so I have nothing against you, a clean slate if you will. Don't piss me off, and we'll be fine. Your choice from now on, you can either become my enemy, or get that stick out of your ass and be like a normal person. Naruto stared blankly at him before catching up to Makoto and following her to the springs. Sasuke stopped for a second and headed to the kitchen with the clone and set the groceries away. Here you go Naruto, take them clothes off and I'll wash them quick. Makoto said standing there. Um, not to be rude but can you at least turn around until I rinse the blood off myself and get in the spring? Naruto asked politely. Blushing Makoto turned around and folded her arms as the water came on. Hearing clothes drop into piles on the floor. Looking down she saw the pink bubbles of mixed blood and soap going down the drain. Shaking her head the pink seemed to dilute and disappear. Naruto finished washing and grabbed a towel, sinking into the spring, he let it relax his muscles away and called out to Makoto. All right, I'm in, you can grab them now, and thank you Makoto-san. Turning around Makoto grabbed his clothes. He rinsed them. She smiled. It's nothing Naruto, I'll call you when the food is ready. Seeing him nod she left and put his clothes in the wash. Sighing Naruto let out a deep breath and scooted down in the water, letting it soothe his pains away. Naruto closed his eyes and slipped his chin underwater, laying on a shallow rock poking out of the water. Mom, why did you invite him here? Sasuke asked. Well he helped prove your father was as bad as I thought he was, and he seems like a nice person. Makoto answered as she stirred a stew. All right, Sasuke, will you go tell our guest that the food is done, I need to set the table. Seeing her son nod she smiled and started taking out the dishes. Hey, Naruto, the food is ready, finish up fast. Sasuke yelled into the door, seemingly calmer than before. All right, Sasuke-san, I'll be out in a few. Naruto said back as he sat up. After making sure he wasn't coming in Naruto stood up and stretched, making sure his towel stayed on. Getting up and grabbing another towel he dried off and touched a seal on his arm to open his scroll for other clothes. Grabbing some plain boxers, a replica of his other pair of pants, and a dark red shirt, which had a slightly high collar and sleeves to his elbows. He got dressed, the shirt hung loosely on his frame. Drying his hair he let it spike out like normal. Taking time to put the scroll back away he set out to open the door. Just as he was about to open the door Makoto appeared with some clothes and looked at him. Oh you have some, that's good. 
Makoto smiled. I forgot to set some in here for you, my apologies. Waving it off Naruto responds. It's all right Makoto-san, I would have worn my own anyway. No offense, I just like them better. Seeing her nod he followed her to the kitchen. Sasuke was sitting quietly on one side of the table, Makoto took a seat next to him, and Naruto sat across from Sasuke. A bowl sat at each seat, with a smaller bowl filled with rice, and a plate with bread on it. Makoto filled up Sasuke's bowl and her own before passing it to Naruto, receiving a quiet, thanks, from Sasuke and a, thank you, from Naruto. Both waited for Makoto to start, who smiled and motioned for both to eat. Sasuke dug in, missing his mother's cooking, while Naruto ate at a normal pace, thoughts fluttering across his mind. Makoto-san, this is delicious, thank you. Makoto smiled and offered him more after Sasuke took his second bowl. Nodding he let her refill his bowl. Before finishing his stew he ate his rice and offered to get drinks, both wanting some juice and he wanted water himself, grabbing cups he filled them accordingly and handed everyone a glass, taking a drink of his own. Taking a piece of bread he dumped it into the stew broth and bit into it. After finishing his meal, drink, and rinsing his dishes, Naruto sat at the table, politely waiting for the others to eat. The table was in silence, as everyone was thinking about something themselves. Ahem, Naruto, do you have a place to stay? Makoto asked between bites. No, I was going to get a hotel, I need to read my things from my parents and then I'll get my inheritance, which will include my clan house and land of my own. Well, how about you take Itachi's room then? Sasuke stared at her for a second before rinsing his bowl. If that is okay with both of you then I would like that. Naruto noticed how Makoto was going to give Sasuke the stare all parents do. And I mean he has to be okay with it, not you telling him to be. Makoto looked at him with surprise but nodded and both awaited Sasuke's answer. Taking his time with the dishes and finishing his juice he thought it over. I guess it will be fine. Taking to the living room he sat in a chair and studied a scroll. Makoto looked at her son worry evident in her eye. Naruto saw this and sighed, walking into the living room and grabbing his shoulder. Let's go outside Sasuke. Naruto said politely and pulled him up. Not thinking straight he let Naruto lead him outside to the pond he practiced his jutsu at. Listen, we need you to lose that attitude Sasuke, that kill Itachi, gain power, type of shit, it will only get you killed. Sasuke stared at him as his anger rose higher and higher with each passing word the blonde said. What do you, I wasn't finished Uchiha. Cutting him off with authority Naruto continued. Your mother is worried for your mental state, from the look on her face. Besides, to get stronger you have to have something to protect, it gives you a better will when facing danger, knowing that you can keep at least one thing safe from the darkness that is always around us ninja. Sasuke was silent, he knew the blonde was right, but he couldn't get over what Itachi did. Give me the scroll, Naruto said holding his hand out and looked at it when Sasuke gave it to him. Whistling a bit Naruto looked up. Fire Dragon Jutsu. That's impressive trying to see how it works before trying it, smart. The key to this is to have the right fire manipulation and the right chakra, if you have the wrong chakra level it could obliterate your lungs. Or turn out to be smoke which will gag you. Naruto lectured and Sasuke nodded. Watch. Naruto went through the hand seals and put the right amount of chakra into it sending the dragon into the lake. The amount of chakra can also differ its size, but you need an adequate amount of shape manipulation to make it change sizes. Try it with the amount it takes for two grand fireballs. Sasuke looked at him like he was crazy. Trust me, with how much chakra you've probably been using you have nothing to lose. Nodding Sasuke stood up and tried it. Gauging the amount he did a grand fireball first, then tried the fire dragon. At first only smoke came out and he held back the gag, adding just a bit more chakra, soon the dragon took shape and flew out into the forest. Jumping up Naruto shouted, water dragon, putting the fire out and looked at Sasuke. Well, I'd say good job, but you haven't shown if you'd change yet. So for now, Naruto clapped his back, keep trying, Naruto said and walked inside. Sasuke looked at his back and lost his sneer. Just like Itachi, taking a few steps he dipped his feet in the water. Maybe. Maybe Itachi didn't do anything wrong. Is there any chance he had to do it? 
Of course there is but the odds. Not that great. But then again, testing his strength by killing them all. That doesn't make sense either. Sighing Sasuke stood up and walked into the house to be greeted with his mother giving Naruto a hug, and him scratching the back of his head. Up in Itachi's room he rummages through the drawers for anything of interest. Feeling a mental tug he knew the clone dispelled and smiled at the hug, and the fact Sasuke didn't seem like a prick at the moment. Finding a little unmarked book Naruto looks through it. One week to go. Well I guess this isn't really a spur of the moment thiny but, the whole clone is corrupted and I have to take them out. Sasuke won't understand this, I'll do IR before he gets home from SR Hul, hopefully I'll be done before he gets back. I'll have to start pretty early to beat him though, and without getting caught, that will be HGRDER. What's this? Itachi was in the Anbu he wouldn't leave this. Naruto's eyes widened. Unless he meant to, he said out loud. Skimming the next few pages he looks for anything of interest he noted a few letters out of place just like in the first message. Noticing how some letters when drawn look like others the way he did it, while others were just misspelled. Grabbing a brush, some ink, and paper, Naruto got to work. After the first page he came up with. If you are reading, Naruto turned the page and took to reading the page, finding the next one was just as easy as the first when actually looking it read. This there is a saf. Going on to the next page. E in my room under T. Sighing Naruto cracked his neck and turned the page. He bed the floor bow. Turning the page once more. Ards can be removed. Once again. D open it and follow. Turning to the final page Naruto sets out to finish the puzzle. W the instructions. Okay so as a whole. If you are reading this there is a safe in my room under the bed the floor boards can be removed open it and follow the instructions. Well well well. Naruto moved the bed and removed the floorboards, which indeed came up with a tug. Grabbing the safe, he found he couldn't open it. Turning the last page over he saw a few numbers, taking the chance he turned the dial a few times and the safe popped open. Now let's see. Naruto read the instructions and his eyes became wide. To whom it may concern. Yes, the diary was blatantly obvious but no one looks through my stuff, if you did then I'm either gone already or you have killed me. Either way you must do as this is told, if and only if I am alive. Go to the Hokage. Tell him the code. The weasel dances in the shadows of the leaf, becoming dark when the leaf is brightest. He will know what to do, what to show you. Before you do that, put a bit of your blood on the door knob before leaving, it will lock the door and drop a scroll onto the bed, after getting the scroll from the Hokage come back and put your blood on the outside knob, grab the scroll and follow those instructions. I bid you farewell. Itachi Uchiha. Eyes wide he goes downstairs, putting the scroll away and sliding everything into place. Coming down to a scene of Sasuke and Makoto both reading Naruto sits down in a vacant chair across from Makoto. Makoto-san, may I speak to you upstairs, alone, for a minute? Naruto asks quietly gaining both Uchiha's attention. Certainly Naruto. Sasuke stay down here. Getting a nod from her son she lets Naruto lead the way. Put up a privacy seal please. Naruto asked and saw the room glow. Thank you. Now, did Itachi ever give you hints of something? The massacre. Anything at all. Was he acting weird before he did it? Why are you asking me this Naruto? Makoto said with an edge to her voice. I'm sorry Makoto-san, but it's important to what I have found. Please answer the question. Makoto sighed. No he wasn't, he was acting normal like always, not talking, fighting with his father, ignoring Sasuke. Everything was normal. Naruto nodded and took out the journal, handing it to Makoto. I found this while looking in a drawer, read over it. Naruto watched as she read all seven pages. Yes, what's this have to do with it? He was preparing himself for it and saying how the clan was corrupted, how he wanted to test his power, just like was reported. Makoto said wearily. Yes, now read it over. Naruto emphasized read to her. Taking a look at each word she noticed a few mistakes. Itachi was great with spelling and grammar, why would he make these mistakes? That's what I thought. He was a good ninja and a good learner, why make mistakes? Simple ones an academy student could fix. He wanted to, I pieced them together and got this. Handing it to the Uchiha matriarch he let her read it. I opened the safe, 
and it told me to go to the Hokage. This room will be locked tomorrow. Don't try to open it and keep Sasuke away for the day. I'm doing as Itachi asked, for his sake at least. Makoto nodded and stood up, stretching. Well good night Naruto. She smiled. Good night Makoto-san. Naruto said as he closed the door after her and laid down to rest. Kicking her feet up and reading a novel off her friend's shelf she laid in the couch that the blonde had the night before, she noticed how it smelled of nature still. Her chan Anko called as her friend came out into the living room. Yay Anko. This book ain't bad. Any more of the dango that runt made left. Looking over her book she saw her and I shake her head. You ate it all Anko. What's up with you? All your sentences are clipped. Anko set her book down. It's Naruto. Just, thinking about him I guess. He isn't coming here for the night is he? She asked staring at Anko. Doubt it, it's late and he hasn't come why come now? Well, his keke jenke was revealed today, I wonder what the council will do about this. Considering he's a clan head too. Probably gonna make him fuck the brains out of a few chicks before he can do any missions. Her and I made a gagging sound at that. I don't think he'd let the council do that, though they'd try for sure. Anko noted her friend's attitude. Her and I, don't be like that, he truly has feelings for you, he wouldn't go and hurt you by doing something like that. Yay, well maybe, I don't know Anko. Setting her book down Anko sat up. Her and I, knock it off, that boy likes you, hell it's more than that and you're damn lucky to have someone like that. I'd give anything for something like what you have. Anko let that slip but didn't show any mind to it. Yay, I guess you're right Anko thanks. Maybe I can help you find something like that. Her and I grinned. Tomorrow I'm going to take you window shopping for guys. Not like there will be anything I like, even if there was it's not like I'd be in a relationship with them, it wouldn't last, they'll end it. Oh Anko, don't be like that. There's someone who you must be crushing on and someone who won't be like that to you. Yay well that's not an option now is it Ker Chan? Anko thought sadly but grinned at her friend. Yay if you think so, then let's go shopping. Anko, I know you what is it that's bothering you? It's nothing Ker and I, so what do you think about Naruto's condition? Anko asked about him being a Jinchuriki, trying to change the subject. Well, I guess nothing of it, it doesn't bother me and doesn't change my feelings for him. Her and I thought out loud. That's good. Then you won't care about the Kyubi, the brat was worried about that. Her and I looked at her oddly. Whatcha mean he was worried about it? Well he was cause of how everyone else treated him for it, not that it's noticeable right now, but before, well you heard the story, everyone in the village did. I'm sure after that it just got worse for him. But having me as your friend, it kinda reassured him that you wouldn't care much about it. Then again maybe that's why he isn't here right now, he's worried about that. Her and I thought to herself about it, finding that she really wasn't bothered by the fact her had the Kyubi inside him. After all he wasn't the Kyubi so it's fine. Her and I smiled at her friend and hugged her. Thanks Anko. Anko smiled. So long as my friend is happy then I'll be happy. She thought to herself, knowing Her and I was her only friend in the village as of yet. Let's head to bed Anko. It's been a long day for everyone. You sure I should sleep there? Your new boyfriend but take offense. Grinning she followed Kur and I. He sure didn't seem to care much before. Kur and I remarked smartly. Or didn't want to piss you off. Anko snickered as Kur and I undressed to her mess top and shorts. Taking the chance she took off her coat and skirt, leaving her in only her fishnet body suit. You know, that doesn't cover anything Anko. And was her reply before bouncing into bed with Kur and I, snuggling into her chest and sound asleep in seconds. Sighing Kur and I looked down at her friend and ran a few fingers through her hair. Naruto, I won't let you go just cause of what happened today. She smiled to herself and finger her necklace while falling into unconsciousness. Waking up early Naruto told Makoto he'd be back in a bit for breakfast, he had an errand to run. Taking off early he slid into Kur and I's window making some dango and food quickly he stowed it all in the oven, to keep it warm and left a note for Kurunai. Anko sat in the corner watching him the whole time until he left. Too much of a rush to notice I slid out here. Anko asked as she slid back into bed with Kurunai. Smiling softly for her friend Anko let a single tear fall from her eye. 
Makoto-san. I'm back for breakfast. Naruto called out. Sasuke came and opened the door. He had a slight smile on. Letting Naruto in for breakfast, and taking his seat by his mother. Glad you could make it Naruto. Take what you want. Orange juice in the fridge. Makoto smiled warmly and took to eating her food. So, Naruto. Sasuke asked to break the silence that had been going on for a few minutes now. Seeing him look up Sasuke continued. What did you have to go do so early? Giving him a raised eyebrow to say. Since when did you care? Swallowing his food. Well I had to break into someone's house and make them breakfast before they woke up. That's all. Naruto smiled and finished eating, taking a drink of orange juice. Ah, that's sweet of him. Makoto thought. When will you be leaving for the Hokage Naruto? Glancing over at Makoto he shrugged. I guess around noon, until then I'm going to train if it's alright with you Makoto-san. Getting a nod of confirmation, Naruto headed to the laundry room and changed into his normal clothes, sealing the others up, and taking off outside to train, on top of the pond, with 500 other clones. Sasuke watched on as Naruto trained for the next hour or so. He was amazed that Naruto could make so many clones and still have enough energy to fight and win against them all. Makoto watched in fascination while making some lemonade. When Naruto was finished, Sasuke sat next to him and Makoto brought out some lemonade, deciding to sit on the dock and dip her feet with the boys. Naruto did you already lock the door? Makoto asked as she leaned back in her tank top, it was hot out after all. Yay, Naruto said while sipping his lemonade. This is pretty good. Smiling Makoto thanked him. I should be going to see the old man soon. I'll be back in a bit Makoto-san, Sasuke. Naruto hopped up. I'll be taking the cup. Grinning Naruto refilled it. I'll bring it back though, no worries. Be careful Naruto. Makoto said as he left the compound. Naruto waved back and was on his way. Just waking up Kurenai and Anko head into the kitchen. What smells so good? Kurenai asked. Beats me. Anko said making her way to the oven and pulled out the food Naruto left them. Anko. Did you make that? Kurenai asked wearily. No. Anko said and pointed to a piece of paper while taking a bite of dango and moaning. Oh. Naruto broke in and made it. Okay then. Kurenai said and giggled while taking her food. He can be so sweet. Anko grunted in agreement and picked off some food. A knock came from the door and a muffled. Enter. Was replied. Walking into the room Naruto looked around for any company. Hey old man. Company. Not until you. What can I do for you my boy? The Hokage asked, letting his clones do the paperwork and sitting on the couch. Well old man. About that. The weasel dances in the shadows of the leaf, becoming dark when the leaf is brightest. The Hokage sat bolt upright and nodded creating a soundproof room. So you found Itachi's journal. He told me he left it for someone, apparently nobody went through his room well enough. Getting up he grabbed a scroll. This is something he told me to give to the one who found his note. I already know what it is. But I'm not sure this should get out in public knowledge. That's fine old man. I just need it to finish this puzzle. Thanks OG San. Naruto said hugging the old man tight. You're welcome Naruto. The Hokage chuckled a bit and told him to get going. I'll see you around old man. Naruto waved and jumped out the window. Destination, Uchiha compound. Getting into Itachi's room, he locked the door behind him and sat on the bed. Opening the scroll it read the following. You have come far whoever you are, and I give you congratulations for that. If you don't already know, the reason I killed my clan was because they were corrupted, they were going to try and overthrow the Hokage. I was ordered to take them out, I could only spare Sasuke. Dot dot. Though I think some others got out alive also. I became a missing nin to accommodate the role of killing them all off. It was planned perfectly, I joined the Akatsuki as a spy. Jiraiya is the leader of the spy network, and I will only answer to him, and now you. Naruto. Yes, I knew you would be the one to find this, you would come back and try to pilfer anything of value. I am your only lead to the inner workings of the Akatsuki. I wish to come back at some point and be with my family again, if those are the ones to get away. I know you are the one who can help me with this. Thank you for coming this far. Grab the scroll on the bed and follow those instructions. 
Itachi Uchiha. Well well. He never was a bad guy ne. Grinning Naruto grabbed the scroll and opened it. What's up with all the damn scrolls? Fucking weasel. Naruto. This doesn't include much instructions. Just keep this with you at all times. The seal, when applied chakra, will make a shadow clone of me, and since you're making it, no one will sense my chakra spike. The memories will return to me after the clone is gone, just like a normal one. Call a clone as soon as you can, but for the first time make sure you're outside. Anything further, just talk to my clone. Itachi Uchiha. Naruto. Sasuke. Get in here for lunch. Makoto yelled throughout the house. Glancing at Itachi's clock, Naruto wondered how long he was looking at the intricacy of the seal. Must have had Jiraiya help him with it. Chuckling to himself he closes the scroll up and puts it in his pouch. Getting into the kitchen he sees Sasuke walking in from the dojo with a smile on his face. Setting the table Makoto made a simple lunch, including ramen, rice balls and some seasoned pork. Dig in you too. She smiles at them. We have to go soon to the council Sasuke, regarding the Uchiha who are back in Konoha finally. Sasuke stopped eating and looked up at her as if he totally forgot about the world around him for a while before nodding and going back to his food. You're welcome to come with Naruto, unless you have plans of your own in mind. Thinking it over a bit, he figured he did need to talk to the old man and the council at some point anyway. Might as well, it might help get some things of my own out of the way. Taking another rice ball he devours a bite out of it before continuing. And make thing run along smoother than they would if I waited. Nodding Makoto smiles at him with a few thoughts in mind to bring up to the Hokage and the council members when the meeting comes. I must say Makoto, your cooking is amazing. These rice balls are delicious and the ramen, well, compared to Ichiraku's you can't win, but this comes in a very close second. Grinning in his mother's praise Sasuke finishes up his bowl and opts to take his and Naruto's dishes to the sink, getting a polite, thank you, from the blonde. His mother seems to have a real effect on him, he's changed so much in the course of only a night. Similar thoughts were going through both the Uchiha's heads, the smaller of the two gaining a genuine smile when looking at the matriarch. After both dressed Anko suggested Kurenai and herself go for a nice stroll around the park, completely forgetting about Kurenai's, window shopping. Sitting on a bench and just relaxing Anko sighs contently as the rays warm her skin. See anything you like. Hearing her friend's voice she opens her eyes and glances at her. What do you mean Ker-chan? Grinning at her friend's memory she crosses her arms and looks around at all the people walking through the park, shinobi and civilians alike. If you remember, we're going window shopping for you today. Smirking at her friend's reaction she continues. Oh come on it shouldn't be too much of a shocker I mean really, there's lots of guys out here, you have to be interested in someone in the village right? Oh if only you knew. Anko mentally sighed but grinned at her friend to cover it up. Well then Ker Chan, show me around and let's see. Hours passed and they bumped into a few people that flirted with Ker and I. Some that were disgusted by even being in the same area as Anko. Some that seemed to want Anko but, for all the wrong reasons. And there were few that seemed to genuinely want Anko, but none were nearly her type. Sighing heavily Ker and I turned to her best friend. Anko. I don't think we're looking in the right part of the village. No need to look Ker Chan. Nodding Anko plops down with her friend. Maybe another time then. Smiling over the slight pang of her heart Anko grabs onto a kanai in her pocket and starts playing with it waiting for what's to come next. Oh come now. What do you mean Anko? Just going to give up like that? Grabbing the kanai when her friend tossed it in the air she rests it in her hand. Don't you think you're being a little hard on yourself? Ker and I, I've been looking for someone, anyone, for the past few years, I haven't met or seen anyone that catches my interest and kept it. Anko resigns in a voice that Ker and I knows all too well. That's a lie, she says staring blatantly into the purple eyes of her friend. Shocked slightly Anko stares back and fumbles with the words in her mind. Hesitating is proving it more of a lie you know. Anko sighs and nods. Then what is it Anko? It's... Not something I'd rather talk about. But I have a feeling I'm going to have to open up to you like always huh? Giving off an awkward smile to her friend Anko sees Kurenai nod. Bracing herself to be berated or scorned for this Anko takes a breath. Well, I suppose in short, 
I'm jealous of you Kuranai. Blinking a few times in shock Kuranai backs away slowly and repositions herself to face Anko in the grass. What do you mean Anko? Why are you jealous of me? Look at you Kuranai. Taking a slow breath Anko continues. You finally found someone worth your time, after all these guys flirt with you and ask you out. Yes I know, they all meant nothing simply cause they all just wanted to fuck you. But you still got attention, and now, you have something worth all those other assholes that tried to use you as a toy. I haven't even been flirted with by anyone, other than a joke really. Growling slightly she continues, Orochimaru, choking on the name itself, messed a lot up for me. I haven't been able to have that real feeling of a relationship or even dates really. I'm really happy for you, don't think I'm not, I'm just put off by the whole thing. Finally looking back into Kuranai's eyes after avoiding them the whole time she was talking she waits for her reaction. Does she, have a crush on Naruto? Kuranai blinks as she thinks this but keeps a crucial eye on Anko as thoughts go through her head. I don't doubt it, but, she mentally trails off with a sigh. Well find the one you're interested in Anko, smiling softly to her best friend. No worries, it'll just take some time. Anko blinks and wonders what she means by that, but decides not to push it since they aren't going to window shop anymore. Come on Anko, let's get you some Dango. Smiling when her friend cheers for Dango they head out. Makoto had gathered all the Uchiha that came back to the village and headed out to the Hokage's tower with Naruto and Sasuke in tow as well. The trip itself was mostly silent, tensed from all the looks at Naruto, and from what they were going to the Hokage's tower to talk about. None of the group knew about what Fugaku did, none wanted to get any more involved with it now than they had to. The uneasy feeling was lost at the head of the group, simply, a relaxed air filled the three leading them. Makoto smiled back at her son and the family that survived. She also took the time to look Naruto over. With what she had in plan, she would be happy and hoped he would be happy with it all as well. Everything will work out perfectly, smiling to herself and the plan she had, they continued the walk in the silence. Come in, putting down some paperwork the Hokage smiles seeing Naruto, before looking at the rest of the group that walked in. Ah, Uchiha's. First, since the last time you were here wasn't a great welcome, I'd like to welcome you all back to Konoha. Sarutobi smiled when the group relaxed their shoulders. Looking back at Naruto his smile softens more. And welcome to you too Naruto, what do I owe the pleasure to? Sitting back and relaxing in his chair he waits. The Uchiha seemed to all glance at him, wondering why he respected this child so much, but none could dispute it. Are cared to for that matter. Looking at Makoto Naruto started off. Well, first I came with Makoto-san since she invited me. Looking back at the Hokage he continued. And I have some things I need to work out with you as well, so I figured, why not take two birds with one stone? He smiled softly at the old man behind the chair. Well, we have to go into the council rooms for the Uchiha, would you like to join us? Seeing as you do have a seat there now, you aren't going to be notified to come until you are stable mind you, but you still have say in all that goes on as well. Ushering the group into the other room where all the clan heads and the civilian council resided, he watched Naruto nod and find his seat. The room suddenly got quiet as they watched Naruto take a seat on the council, and the Uchiha just stood by the Hokage. Everyone. The Hokage started off. I would like to formally welcome the Uchiha back into Konoha. Noticing all the nods and smiles from the council and a few cheers from the civilians, which made the shinobi roll their eyes slightly, he continued. I would also like to welcome back the Namikaze clan. For the most part smiles went all around, some civilians glared, but were shot down by the clan heads themselves. Naruto nodded to the shinobi and turned back to the old man as he continued. For now, I would like to inquire where you have all been. He said glancing at the Uchiha. Makoto took the step forward, as there were many shinobi, but Makoto decided to stand out for them all. Hokage-sama. We've been on an island that seemingly floated the oceans around the elemental nations. We found out it was actually a giant tortoise after a while. Many of the shinobi nodded, knowing of the giant amphibian. We, don't remember how we got there. Even Fugaku doesn't know. We were all knocked unconscious and seemingly sealed into a stasis scroll. When we awoke, 
we were all placed in homes upon the tortoise. The Hokage puffed on his pipe and looked at Naruto of all the people in the room. And, I would like to inquire with all of you Uchiha, how many of you knew of the corruption? How many of you knew what Fugaku was doing to young Naruto at the time? Looking up shocked, Naruto wonders what the Hokage was getting at as his fists clenched slightly. Which didn't go unnoticed by the council. Makoto seemed to speak for the group again. We, as in none of us, knew about what was happening to Naruto-kun at the time, she said somberly hanging her head. None of us were ever informed of it until yesterday. Looking back up at the Hokage she put on a grim smile. Just as well, none of us were in on the corruption or knew about it. Until we were all on the island and Fugaku let us all know. Gripping her fists a bit she relaxed. I had my suspicions of him before but no proof. With the proof he gave us at the time, we all shunned him. He had no place among us but he kept trying to repent for it. Eventually we gave him a place back with us, as he was the one to start the organization to get us back to the mainland. Staring at them with a critical eye the Hokage nods slightly seeing truth in her words and no deception in the group's eyes. Naruto, his eyes morphed to that of a tiger once again, stared intently at the group. Which seemed to unnerve many in the group until his eyes changed back and he nodded to himself as well, relaxing the room. If I may Hokage-sama. Getting a nod Makoto continued. I will be taking the head of the clan, if that is all right with the rest of the Uchiha. I may not be a shinobi anymore, but I still know how the clan works, I know how to keep them in line. Nodding the Hokage smiled at Makoto and waved his arm out to the seat saved for the Uchiha. The rest of the Uchiha stood off to the side, seemingly out of the way. I will lend a large stipend to the Uchiha for food and clothes and the such. We will assess your skills and place you back into the shinobi corp accordingly. Getting smiles the Hokage feels everything is finished with the Uchihas for now having to wait until they settle in for more changes to come up. Seeing Makoto wanting to speak he called out to her. Well Hokage-sama, since I am head it's not a problem now. But I would like to suggest a proposition with the Namikaze clan. Feeling Naruto's glance on her she continues with a smile. One of living arrangements. Smiling wider as she sees Naruto's perplexed look. If that's fine with my clansmen. I would like to convert a portion of the Uchiha complex into Naruto's own. Seeing the Uchiha nod skeptically she leads on. I realize he has a home of his own, with the Yandaimi's house and all, but I inquire this for the fact that it would be a nice change. Feeling everyone's questioning glances she sits taller, without the looks getting to her. Well seeing as he has a hate for Uchiha's and the critical eye he keeps on everyone like a hawk. Glancing over at Naruto quickly. It would seem beneficial for everyone if he was able to keep that eye on our group for now. In case anything comes up again like last time. Also, Sasuke seems to have taken a strange kinship with him. Glancing at her son she sees him scoff before nodding slightly. Naruto couldn't find any words to say, his seemingly hated enemy was giving him living space. Smiling softly he seems to let go of a small portion of his grudge against them. If they can prove they didn't have any part in it, then I can forgive them. For now, indifference works. Well now, that would be up to young Naruto, but I approve of it. It would be nice for both parties involved I believe. Watching Naruto's reaction, along with Makoto, they see him nod slightly. If that is all, Makoto nodded. Then Naruto, what was it you wanted to discuss? Sitting up a bit straighter he glanced around. Well, my home was one thing. My shinobi career another. I feel as if. If I'm going to stay here then I might as well get settled into my career that I belong into right. As I said, I know I'm not as weak as a genin, by far. But you'd like to put me on genin team for now, until the chunin exams, I'd be fine with that. Nodding Sarutobi remarks he'll look into that after this meeting and the council barely remarks, many shocked from the last day's events still. Also, I know what's going to be forced upon me. Seeing the Hokage's eyes turn to confusion for a split second he continues even after the Hokage seemingly caught onto it. I'm not getting sucked into the CRA. He said sternly. A few members of the council began to open their mouths but he cut them off. I'm not going to go around fucking a bunch of women, simply to make my clan grow again. None of you can change that, I'll tell you that right now. There is no offer you can make, 
or punishment you can give that will make me do that. If I'm going to get with someone I'm going to do it cause I wanted to, and cause I fell for them. Some of the women in the council room felt an immense amount of respect for him at this point. Most would want the CRA just to get another person to have with. Furthermore, I'm not going to take multiple wives either. Unless by chance something comes up and it simply happens. Otherwise, I'm not going to look after I find the one I desire. Stopping to look around he sits tall, a commanding aura vibrating from his body and none seem to question him on this at all. Smirking Sarutobi nods. Just like your father, and completely understandable Naruto-kun. No one will force you to, and no one will suggest it. He said glaring out around the room and they all nodded as one unit. Is that all right now Naruto? Getting a nod in response, and seeing that the rest of the council simply wanted to leave and get home, he dismissed them all and stood himself. I'm glad to see you're staying Naruto, do an old man proud will you? Smiling at the old man, Naruto nods and sets out to go find Kurenai. He just wanted to relax for a bit, even though he didn't think everything would go over so well. He expected much more opposition from the council. After telling Makoto of his plans he heads out, with a reminder to stop back at his home, whenever he wanted, and that Itachi's room is his own for now. After taking Anko out for the dango, the two head around to stores to look around. Kurenai wanting to find anything for Naruto, along with some things for her home. Idly, Kurenai was wondering if she should get some things for around the house for Naruto. A simple clothes rack, or blankets, pillows, something in case she got him to stay with her. Smiling to herself she shook her head. He may not have a place to go but she shouldn't get ahead of herself, she just couldn't seem to help it though. Anko seeing her friend zone out while shopping, smiled and kept looking around for herself, spying a few things she liked. Taking her time to check the items out she shook her head and put them back. Not too much time had passed after they entered the store before they left and went to another. Window shopping or finding some things they may like. The latter never really showing up. Kurenai didn't find anything unique that she would think Naruto would like either. Sighing they both nodded to each other and simply started to head back to Kurenai's home, which was always partially Anko's as well since she hated to be in her own apartment. Seeing some passing genin on their way Kurenai waves and smiles to them, Anko simply staring after them. Before long, Anko spotted a rather large feline walking the streets, the civilians giving it more than enough room to walk. Looking at Kurenai, then back and forth between her and the feline, she wondered how her friend didn't see the cat. Poking Kurenai who glanced over at her, she childishly pointed to the feline. Ker chan can I pet him? Kurenai's reaction, first, was of confusion and then she giggled and started to laugh, before they both made their way to over. The cat was the same that was in wave, a giant, white and black striped, tiger. Unknown to them, the cat had spotted them long ago but was just out on a leisurely stroll around the village. Walking up Anko did what most would find one of the stupidest things ever. She glomped it, simple, and straightforward. At first everything was calm, suddenly Anko just flew past Kurenai and tackled the giant tiger. Many civilians backed away from the animal, thinking it wild and would attack. Kurenai walked up to her friend and the cat and giggle while sitting on the ground in the crescent of his paws, next to Anko and started to rub behind Naruto's ears. Anko grinned and started to stroke the his back as well. Slowly a rumbling formed and people nearby could hear a soft purring coming from the giant cat. Spectators watched almost in awe at the two Kunoichi. Kurenai grinned down at Naruto. Kuro, why are you out here all by yourself? Seeing a glint in Naruto's eye her smirk grew some more. Anko seemingly froze, as a small smile began to spring from her lips and she looked down at Naruto. Seeing this, the cat nodded lightly, telling her to ask the question. Her smile seemed to grow exponentially as he nodded. Ker-chan, Naruto, would it be okay if I rode you back to Ker-chan's? Kurenai blinked and looked at Naruto and saw him raise a tiger's eyebrow. Seeing him slowly get up and Kurenai looked at him carefully. After some though Naruto leant down and Anko squealed in joy and gently climbed on his back. Before he stood back tall he pawed at Kurenai and nodded his head. Kurenai looked at him with a bit of worry before she saw him nod and silently got on his back in front of Anko, who wrapped his arms around her stomach. 
Naruto noticed and kept the thought in the back of his mind as Anko got extensively comfy on Kurenai's back and shoulder. Feeling as they both apply a bit of chakra to stick to his back, Naruto leaps up onto a roof before bounding across the city to Kurenai's home. As they flew through the air at a relaxed pace, Naruto could hear the giggles of the women on his back and couldn't help but smile. Kurenai Chan is enjoying herself, that's good. He trailed off and felt himself relax some seeing as she did the same. Anko San seems rather relaxed as well. He duly noted as he took a semi longer route, slowing down a tad bit and letting them enjoy themselves like they should. Finally settling down in front of Kurenai's home, he notices a guy smoking a cigarette, Asuma if he remembers the name right. Above him, he heard Kurenai groan and Anko seemed to hiss as the air left her lungs. If he had seen Asuma first, Naruto surely would have kept jumping instead of landing. Sighing and taking the step off the elegant animal, Kurenai gets out of Anko's grasp and scratches the tiger's ears absentmindedly as she watched her friend remove herself from Naruto's back. Asuma chuckled to himself. What? First a panther, now a white tiger. Going to start a zoo for exotic animals anytime soon Kurenai. Giving another chuckle to himself he looks over towards Anko. Let alone allowing her, friend, hold her so tightly. He thought purely jealous of Anko for the contact she had. Sending a spark in her glare that made Asuma second guess himself for a second she replied in a tone telling him to be wary of himself. Not like it should matter to you Asuma. And would you ever think that maybe I have summons? Maybe I just have luck that most don't have. Shaking her head as he noticed the glare he sent towards Anko and she knew what he thought as well. Resting her hand on Naruto's head as he sat on the ground next to her and between her and her friend she continued not letting Asuma open his mouth. Why are you here Asuma? I don't see any reason for you to be sitting outside my home. Giving a minuscule smirk Asuma answers. Well I was hoping to catch you alone. Kurenai stiffened slightly at this, as did Naruto who stood more alert on his haunches. I thought we could talk some things through. You never really gave me a chance or a good date. He had a certain look on his face that none could place. Almost as if saying I never had a chance. And I told you when you first asked me that I wasn't looking and things wouldn't last Asuma. She said sternly as Anko relaxed and sat next to Naruto, running her fingers through his exquisite coat. I can't say I remember that Kurenai. He said sternly taking a step forward away from Kurenai's home. To which, the first response was the tiger taking a more coiled position. Noticed by all the shinobi in front of Kurenai's home. Keeping a crucial eye on the oversized feline, Asuma stood strong. Kurenai, I'd like to ask you on another date. He said, a small bit of hesitation before letting the words drip from his lips. With bare a thought Kurenai responded. I'd have to decline Asuma. I'm seeing someone that I'd rather stay with. He's done nothing but catch my interest and keep me interested, along with being nothing but sweet. Recoiling from how fast the reply was, Asuma blared out. What? I thought you said you didn't want to see anyone, that you weren't looking. Kurenai nods. I wasn't looking, and I didn't want to see anyone. But this, man, has caught my interest and kept it, time and again. Smiling to herself she scratches Naruto's ears more. And I'm glad he caught my eye, and I'm glad he made the impression. Asuma seemed to recoil a bit more and looked at her a look that showed he was beyond bewildered, and not just a little pissed about it. Resolving himself he took a breath and cooled off, taking the shinobi way to the situation. All right Kurenai, I understand, he said half-heartedly with another sigh. I'll stop bothering you with dates. Needless to say this caused all of the present, beings, to blink a few times and repeat what he said in their heads. I'll respect your choices Kurenai. Nodding respectfully he turned from her and trekked towards a random direction. Not bothering to take out a cigarette on the walk away. Well, that went better than expected. Hopefully he won't go back on his words. Anko commented gently as she saw Kurenai nod. Following Kurenai into her home along with Naruto as she opened the door and taking to the living room. Naruto politely wiped his paws before laying on the two-seated loveseat, taking up only one side and the arm of the chair. Anko raised her eyebrow but decided to get everyone, meaning her and Kurenai, something to drink. Kurenai, took the seat by Naruto and laid on him, loving the feel of his soft fur. Growling in a soft tone, 
Karanai looked at him and giggled as she nuzzled into his fur, his tail wrapping around her. Anko walked in and set her cup down along with Karanai's, opting to leave Naruto's cup in the kitchen until he felt the desire to change back and get it. Taking a seat in her friend's chair across from said friend she sipped her tea and smiled. Looking over at Anko, Kurinai couldn't help but feel her earlier thoughts of Anko's feelings were more cemented. Mentally she sighed, before the thought itself stopped her. Maybe it wouldn't be all that bad. Resolving herself to bringing it up in her mind sometime later on, she wanted to enjoy herself. She also noticed Anko relax slightly, which made her feel all the better. Finally grabbing her tea and sipping it a bit, Anko watched as Kurinai's eyes sparkled. It was her favorite tea that Anko knew how to make. She looked over and smiled, thanking Anko with it. So, are we all going to sit here and relax, or are we going to go out and do something? Anko questioned the others. Looking up Kurinai twisted her face in contemplation for a second. Well, we all have the day off, why not stay inside and relax? We could watch a movie or two. She suggested with a smile. Anko grinned and approved of the notion, while Naruto didn't even raise his head. Content with just laying there. Well then. Kurinai started while getting up. Let's go then. Grabbing onto Naruto she tugged him gently and he stood up finally turning back into his human form and smiling at them both. Leading the way Kurinai grabbed Anko as well in her teacup before heading to her bedroom. Naruto raised his eyebrow and grabbed his tea from the kitchen before following the two ladies. Kurinai turned the TV on and Anko stole the remote, going through all the horror movies she could find. Looking over she could help but smile at her friend, as well as seeing Naruto put his cup of tea on a table. Gaining a glint in her eye Kurinai walked around Naruto until he was between her and the bed. Anko, seeing her friend's intentions grinned and moved slightly, giving her room. Taking a few steps forward, Kurinai hugged Naruto and used her legs to push them both forward and onto the bed. She couldn't refrain from giggling at his look as he landed between her and Anko. Flashing between pages and pages of movies, Anko finally picks one that if her favorite. Again Anko. We watch this at least once every few months. Kurinai says slowly. Responding with a grin. Of course, and it's been months since we watched it. Chuckling she noticed Kurinai count it out and sigh before nodding. Kurinai grabbed Naruto and hers tea, handing his cup to him and sipping on hers. Smiling with a small, thank you, Naruto slides an arm around Kurinai and sips on his cup as well. Blinking, Kurinai felt herself relax into his side as the movie started. Anko sat close to Naruto's side and stretched out, grinning and relaxing onto the wall. After some time, Naruto handed his empty cup back to Kurinai who put it on the table. She slid more into his side and rested her head on his shoulder, one hand on his thigh. She had to admit, she liked this movie, but she'd never tell that to Anko. And seeing it with someone else that she cares for, felt nice, felt like everything fit. Glancing over she saw Anko was attempting to block the two out and keep her eyes on the TV which wasn't hard since she could barely get her to ever look away from the screen when this was on. Grabbing the remote she pauses the movie with a loud, hey. Coming from Anko and a questioning gaze from Naruto. I'm a bit hungry, Anko think you can get any snacks. Popcorn or something. Giggling when she heard Anko grumbling she went on. I know it's getting to your favorite part and you love to munch on popcorn in suspense. Grinning to herself Anko nods. Yay. Okay. Sure. I'll make some popcorn then. She bounds up and rushes to go make the popcorn, and get back to her movie as soon as she can. Kurinai turns to Naruto some more and rests her hand on his chest before snuggling into him slightly. You just wanted to get her to leave for a few didn't you Kurinai-chan? Naruto said, a smile in his voice. Somewhat. I also want some popcorn. She smirked before slowly leaning up to him. Feeling his heart start to beat a bit faster he leans down to meet her, one hand sliding up her arm. Gently pushing his lips to hers they both close their eyes as he brings his hand up to the side of her face. Feeling something she's never felt before, other than their first kiss, Kurinai opens her eyes wide before closing them again, pushing back against him. So, that's what the, spark, is, I, have to say I love it. She thought to herself as her face gained the likeness of tomato. 
Pulling back slowly with a smirk adorning his face Naruto keeps his eyes closed. Yano, I didn't think you'd blush this much still. He finally opened his eyes as he replied. Shish shut up. She stammered, unable to help herself, groaning internally at his smirk. Someone enjoyed themselves. He grinned at her as she rolled her eyes playfully and rested her head on his chest. Unknown to her, he held his blush down until she stopped looking, as a light pink adorned his cheeks. Deciding to make everything work out for the night, Anko grabs some juice to drink as well, grabbing a big bowl and the bag. Hearing the popcorn pop she decides to simply zone out, almost wondering what they were doing. Looks like I'll be going back to my place to sleep tonight. She thought to herself with a sigh. I wanted to cuddle with my Ker Chan, I've felt a little even lonelier since she left. She didn't notice when the popcorn stopped and the microwave opened up. Grinning to herself she keeps thinking. I've never seen her this happy though. And I love it. Finally smelling the popcorn she blinks and adds a bunch of salt to it, and a bit of butter, pouring it into the bowl. Turning the corner, she smirks at her friend. Kurinai was leaning on Naruto, enough that her head was laying on his chest, a content smile on her face. He had his eyes closed and was smiling himself. Hey, popcorn's here you too, juice also. Smiling she handed Naruto the popcorn, resting it on his lap, and she filled up the three cups with juice. Now start the damn movie Ker Chan. She pouts and takes a bit of popcorn, having to sit even closer to Naruto to grab the bowl. All right all right. Ker and I chuckled seeing her friend Ansi. Idly she noticed that Naruto didn't mind Anko sitting so much closer to him as he was eating some popcorn and smiling at her antics. Leaning back onto him and grabbing some popcorn she continues to watch the movie along with them and relaxes. Sooner rather than later the movie finally ends, they all stretch and use the bathroom while Kurenai and Anko gossip over another movie to watch. Yano Kurenai, I haven't seen you this relaxed in forever. Anko commented once Naruto went to the bathroom. Yay, I can't believe how relaxed I am. It's amazing. She smiled. Funny, how I met him in wave and all and he came back with us. Lucky if you ask me. Anko grins back at her. Yay but I can tell something is still stressing you, she states with an all-knowing smirk on her face. Blinking in shock she looks at her best friend. Anko. Don't worry about it. She says with a soft smile. It's not something I'm gonna tell you right now. Seeing the look on her friend's face she continues. It's not that I don't want to, I just want to keep it on my mind a bit more is all. But it's nothing, no worries. She smiles when Anko relaxes a bit more. Fine fine, but I'll find out eventually. She said while grabbing a mouthful of popcorn and shoving it in her mouth. Naruto walked in and they both seemed to just stare at him, both having different things on their minds. What? He asked seeing the weird looks on their faces. Nothing. They both said at the same time. Don't worry about it. Anko continued and grinned at him. Now sit your primal ass down on this bed, and watch another movie with these ladies. Kurenai cut in, in a way that Anko didn't expect. Raising his eyebrow Naruto sat down almost hesitatingly before Kurenai grabbed him and pulled him back between the two and set the bowl on his lap. Hey now. He called out before the bowl landed on his lap and Kurenai fell into his side. What? Something wrong? Kurenai asked looking at him oddly. Blinking slowly he replies. Not. Really, just wasn't expecting it. Giggling for a little while. Her and I looked up at him again. Then don't worry about it. She smiled at him before getting comfortable again and turned the next movie on. After a while Anko moved closer to Naruto to get the popcorn that had moved to leaning between him and Kurenai. Everyone throwing the thought away since the movie was keeping them all in suspense. After a while Kurenai looked over to notice Anko had passed out, probably at one of the boring parts, on Naruto's shoulder. Oddly, in her mind, she wasn't jealous of the action, even if it was by accident. It just didn't seem to bother her at all. Looking at Naruto she sees him content with watching the movie. Catching Kurenai's eyes on him Naruto looks over and squeezes her gently in his arm while smiling at her. Seeing her smile back he quickly kisses her cheek and goes back to the movie. He doesn't seem to mind either, or notice. Which isn't a bad thing really. She noted. After the movie had ended. Kurenai was beyond groggy. She could barely keep her eyes open. 
And Naruto. Well he was yawning a bit and stretched. Pulling the bowl off his lap, Kurinai slipped the bowl onto the table and shrugged off her normal dress, leaving her in her fishnet with built-in bra, and her shorts. I guess I should head out and let you sleep Kurinai-chan. Naruto noted, a slight sound of emotion in his voice. Wheel, Kurinai started off, while gently sliding to him and kissing him once more. Without opening her eyes she continued. You can always stay and sleep right here. I don't mind it, and I'm sure Anko doesn't care really. She rested a hand on his chest and smiled at him. Looking at her skeptically, he noticed Anko fell asleep on him a while ago, but shrugged it off. She didn't bother him anymore really, which he felt relieved about. All right Kurinai-chan, I'll go take the couch again then. What would you like for breakfast Rose? He smiled at her blush. It doesn't matter, you don't have to make anything Naruto-kun. She frowned thinking he thought that's why she wanted him to say. No, but I want to. He smiled bigger and kissed her cheek. All right, whatever you want to make then. She relaxed. But I want you to stay right here. I'm comfy. Noticing him glance at Anko she gives him a look. Is that a bother Naruto? No, he said looking back at her. But I don't think Anko would like me taking her spot, are you like the fact I'd be entrapped by her? He gave a playful grin, and she raised her eyebrow. Well, she is my best friend. She had a smirk on that made Naruto question what she had in store for this. So I don't think I'd mind her being all cuddled up to you while we slept. And what is that supposed to mean? He asked meekly. Does it have to mean something? She gave a questioning glance. What do you think it means? Seeing him hesitate she smiles at him. Nothing. Nothing. Sliding an arm under her he forced her to move down so she could lie down. Looking over at Anko he gently grabbed her and slid her down so she could lay as well. Taking his own place with an arm under Kurinai. Snuggling up to her man, which she blushed at the thought of saying that, she turned off the TV and the lamp. Sliding an arm across his waist and laying her head on his chest. Hearing her sigh contently he runs his hand through her hair, making the air permeate her shampoo's fragrance. I'm glad I found you Kurinai-chan. Unbeknownst to him, her thoughts were the same. Slowly the two started to fall asleep, but not before Anko made her presence known. Sliding her head onto Naruto's should and her arm over his waist, crossing Kurinai's, she sighed. Seemingly relaxing more than Kurinai has seen her for the longest time. Naruto groggily pulled a blanket over the three of them and kissed the raven-haired beauty's head before falling to slumber with the two. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.